you know, she cried from tea time till bedtime, but you'd never think it to look at her now, would you? No. I mean, could it have been a touch of colic? Oh, no, I don't think so. They all do this. It's just a phase. Rosie was the same. Oh. I don't know how you cope. <laughs> Well, about 10 o'clock last night, Kevin wrapped her up and he just walked her up and down the street. She couldn't take her eyes off the street lights. <laughs> when she came home, she fell fast asleep. Oh, I bet he would chuffed with herself. Oh, we do. We're never at the end of it now. He's great with her, though. I think it's got a lot to do with him being at the birth. Because mm. he cut the cord, you know. Oh, dear. Keep showing everybody a little belly button like it was a set of shelves he'd made. <laughs> Back in the first class stamps, please. Yes. Yeah. Oh, Ken, I'm sorry. I better get off. I'm in your way. Oh, no, 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 not at all. No. There we go. Oh, she's beautiful. Mm. Long time since I've seen a baby this young. You forget. Yes. How's Denise doing? Oh, she's fine. She's fine. Thanks. See ya. Do you know, I never know what to say to him. I never know whether to talk to him about babies or not. Well, a baby's a baby. He's bound to be excited, isn't he? I know, but I don't want to say the wrong thing. I mean, it's all so complicated, isn't it? Because his other kids, they're older than I am. Oh, the young have no monopoly on complications, Sally. Do they not? I think that was aimed at me. I didn't know you had a complication, Rita. Oh, yes. A fella I know wants to paint my portrait. He what? Did I not mention it? No, you did not. Oh, well, that sounds a lovely idea. He's fascinated by the colour of my hair, apparently. Well, can't you get John to open up, or Fiona? You look so tired. I'm fine. It's a big day today. Fiona's actually cutting someone's hair. Oh, anyone we know? Mm-hmm. Andy MacDonald. Hey, shouldn't you be at school? Yeah, sure, sure, yeah. I just came in to say that, uh, well, I saw Sally's baby this morning. Uh-huh. Well, that must have been nice for you. You're beautiful, really beautiful. And the thing is, you're right, what you said about me and Deirdre. Oh. No, no, I don't mean, uh, no, what I'm saying is I, I don't wish things had been different between us. Look, I'm very busy. Can this not wait? No, no, no. All I'm saying is I forgot about the baby, our baby. I got so wrapped up with Deirdre and Tracy, well, the past, basically. But seeing Sally's baby put everything in perspective. We're having a baby. Any day now. Hmm. I am aware of that, strangely enough. I was up half the night with the baby playing footsie with my kidneys. I know, but we never talk about it. And we haven't thought about names, things like that. Hi. Oh, hi. 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 Sarah. I'm going to call her Sarah. Oh. And um, what if it's a boy? Oh, no, it's a girl. I know it's a girl. Oh, is that mother's intuition? Yeah, you could say that. Sarah. I'm calling a Sarah after my mother. Oh, good, good. Well, that's great. Look, this is meant to be a, a sort of apology, so uh, I'll see you tonight, OK? Hi, Andy. Hi, uh, Good luck. Yeah. Seems very cheery. Blooming. Denise? Mm hmm I thought your mother's name was Irene. Yeah, but if I'd let him talk about names, he'd have wound up saying he wanted to call her Deirdre. <laughs> I've got a really good feeling about this Christmas. Ah, oh, well, that's good then, isn't it? Put in this lot up last night. Really felt like we were a family again. Mm. Talking about families. Oh, Mrs. Roberts, why don't you convey my good wishes uh, to your husband on the stand he's taken against this uh, municipal self indulgence? How do you mean? Jettison the corporation limousine. I think that's very admirable. It's always gone up in my estimation. Oh, he has, has I? Oh. Well, maybe you would like to travel the length and breadth of a borough with him in the back of a cab. Only get all your breathing done before you get in, because there won't be any room inside. Oh, and uh, remember that the cab will more or less go up on its side every time you get to a corner, because all the weight will be on his side. And don't please contemplate wearing your best tights. Oh, I wouldn't. Good. Oh, and be prepared for a 10p by 10p running commentary on the meter. And be sure to get there early, Percy, because when you do arrive, you've got to unload him in instalments, right? Do you know what I think? I think maybe your main problem over Christmas isn't going to be your son. I think maybe it's going to be your mother and I. Oh, my God, Fiona, eh? People usually throw up after hearing that story. You must have it really bad. What do you mean? Well, I've just spent the last half hour telling you what an idiot our kid is, and has always been. And the worse I make it sound, the more you seem to like him. 
You see, you don't understand women, Andy. Oh, mm? well. There is nothing more appealing than a sad adolescent. Oh, well, in that case, I dance to Agadoo as well, then, all right? <laughs> yeah, then, thanks, mate. Hey, Curly, you all right? Yeah. Okay, you all right? yeah. Getting ready for the super scoop of Christmas party? Oh, well, you never said it was for a party. I could try and do something very amusing with it. I could build you a great big quiff. Well, it makes me laugh just as it is. It doesn't matter what you do. I'm going to look completely stupid anyway. Oh, Raquel's not made up her mind then yet. No. Mm -hmm. You're not going out with Raquel, are you? No, no, not as such. It's just that she said she'd think about coming to a party with me as a favour. Well, she won't be able to make up her mind until she's a dress, will she? What do you mean? Well, she can't go to a party without a new frock, can she? Hey? And if she's only going as a favour to you, we can't expect her to pay for the privilege, can you? So you think I ought to buy her a new frock, then? I reckon that you've got no option, mate. <laughs> How could you be fascinated by the colour of her hair, for goodness sake? Well, people are fascinated by all kinds of peculiar things. When people like to spot trains, why not unusual hair colours? Well, it's so obviously insincere. It worries me that she's taken in by it. What makes you so sure that it's insincere? Rita's hair colour is very striking. If he was genuinely fascinated by the colour, why doesn't he just ask her what it's called? I mean, she must know. It must be written on the side of the bottle. Oh, dear. <laughs> just a tomato juice, please, Raquel. Right. Is that who I think it is in the calendar back there? Who? Is that you? Hey, let's have a look. I'll tell you what, I'll give you a critical appraisal of the entire composition, but I think you better wait my wife's back at work. <laughs> Ooh. Did you do this? Um. Is it supposed to be funny? Well, no, not really. I just thought you'd like to share your moment of glory. Well, I wouldn't. Thank you very much. What have you said? Nothing. Sorry, folks. Normal service will be resumed as soon as possible. <laughs> oh, yes, Fiona did it. Thank you. Well, is this for a reprisal for something Stephen's done, is it? Oh, uh, that's what I thought. But apparently, our Steve can do no wrong. Well, no, that really is worrying. Mm. There's another one in here. We're proud of you. What's wrong with that? What's to be proud of? Look at that. I look gormless. No, you don't. You look great. Blimey, I wish so I still... The day after that photograph was taken, Des asked me out. A couple of weeks later, we were living together. If you look at that face, you can see it all coming. Just look at that. Oh, if ever anyone were asking for it. You can't think like that. The way I see it, you've got one choice. Either your life's over, or it isn't. The future, or the past. It's up to you. One way, Des Barnes has won. T'other way, you might just win yourself. Curly, what can I get you? Uh, Raquel, please, Beth. Well, I'm not sure. She's in the back, powdering the nose. <clears throat> well, it's all right. I can wait. You see, I've got her a present, a dress for this dude. Are you sure that's a good idea? She's not even said yes yet. Yeah, but she might say yes when she sees this. Are you sure she won't feel, you know, pressurised? No pressure. Just an extremely expensive dress. <laughs> Are you quite certain you've both got the same taste in frocks? It's all right, Bet. I'll deal with this. Now, Raquel, I know you haven't made your mind up about this party. I have yet. made my mind up, Curly. Have you? Yeah, but before you say I'm anything coming. to... Yeah, but we might change your mind. <laughs> Beg your pardon. I said I'm coming. So you better make sure I have a flaming good night. Now, if you'll excuse me. Feast your eyes on that, Mr Wilton. I was looking for a little present for Denise, but she's off chocolates. I couldn't think of anything. Well, that's fine. Hmm? Because he can nose around and then he can go out without buying anything. Because that's what everybody else has done today. Yes, yes, and you know why, don't you? Oh, why? Because you are not making any use of your impulse hot spot. Oh. Yes, you've got top grade stock and you're treating it all like old bigger Come on. Uh, has your mother been in today at all? Um, no, 
My mother hasn't been in today. Did she mention anything about a pie and pea supper at the Tuesday Club no, by any chance? No, only? no, she didn't mention anything about a pie and pea supper. And if she had, you see, I wouldn't have listened because I happened to be a shopkeeper and not a social secretary. Well, a shopkeeper should always be polite to the customers. And this happens to be a shop and not a drop-in centre for aged gentlefolk. So I suggest if you don't want anything, you just go. Well, I wanted several things, but I'll take my custom to Mr Patel. And what about you, Ken? Have you made your mind up yet? Oh, well, uh, um, oh, well, well I'll uh, just take these flowers, if you yes, don't mind. fine. Thank you very much. Thank you. Um, as long as the till's up, would you mind if I took a bit of dinner money? Just That's your change, Ken. Thank you. Yes. It's nearly a couple of fingers, though. Rich! Well. This is a till! And not the Holdsworth family petty cash! Every time I open it, there's a little pile of letters where the fivers should be. Oh, Maureen, I actually came round here tonight because I thought you might be feeling fraught and fragile. I just thought I might persuade you to close up early and join me for dinner. Oh, That's... yes. All right, then. All right. I'll close up early if Better Buys and Furmans and Super Scoopers and all the others close up early as well. I will, oh, yes. Maureen, Maureen. Once won't hurt. Hey, we could go to the Mongolian. I have spent the day listening to small talk. I certainly don't want to spend the evening listening to it as well. I want a bath. I want silence. You won't be one to me, then? No. Fine. Then you shan't have me. Ah, oh, well, uh, how did the haircut go? Well, he's still talking to me, which is uh, more than Denise will be doing if you give her them. Why? Well, she's gone off flowers. To make her feel morbid. Oh, well, uh, I think I'll risk it. OK, then I'll see you later, Bye. or uh, maybe not. <laughs> Bye. I wouldn't mention babies either, if I were. Oh, really? Yeah, that seems to be today's sore point. Diana Ross got a mouth of singing Baby Love on the gold now. Oh, I see. Uh, then again, Diana Ross isn't the father of this baby, is she? <laughs> well, not that I've heard, no. Hi. Hi, Ken. Hi, John. Hi. Uh, Fresh up. It's all in there. They for me? Well, they were. I've been told he'd gone off flowers. It depends who's giving them. Thank you. Well, I'll say good night. Yeah, good night. Good night. I was told not to mention babies either. Mm. Well, there might be some wisdom in that. Hey, uh, listen. I'm sorry about me, Thor. I should be more understanding about you and Deirdre. Wow. Well, that's all in the past. All of it. We've got a lot to look forward to. I can't drink to that, but I can eat to it. <laughs> Come on. Right. I'll cook you something. Hiya. This is a nice surprise. Good to see you again. Well, we're on the air because she wants a free drink. Apparently, Andy didn't tip her when she got his air. Yeah, you did a great job. Mm, I know. Mean, Steve's already volunteered to be my next pick, too. No way. Actually, yeah, me and Andy were having a lovely little chat. We're talking about your childhood. Tell me, does this mean anything to you? Something to do with horse racing or something. <laughs> I know what it is. I go do, do, do. Oh, it was so cute. Push pineapple, shake the tree. <laughs> and did he tell you about the time the pair of them got dressed up as bros? No, they did. I think the time has come for me to play the fruit machine. You've got no chance. You see her there? That is Mrs. Jean Stanhope. Chair of the bar committee. I think it's in standing orders that she wins jackpot. She's got some sort of system. She usually sits in that chair over there, watches the punters feed it, and then walks over and empties it. You just watch her. Mustn't be her day. Oh, she's run out of change here. Quick, give us a quick. What? Quick. That's my machine. Really? I've seen your name written on it anyway. Who oh, are you anyway? That's my mum behind the bar. Oh, what's it? Oh, I see. I believe you know this gentleman. Yes. 
This is my son, actually. Steve, this is Mrs Stanhope. Mrs Stanhope. Never mind the introductions. Did you just empty that fruit machine? Well, I just won the jackpot, yeah. Now, isn't that funny? First off, your father wins the raffle, now you win the jackpot. Excuse me? What are you implying? I'm not implying, I'm accusing. And I can accuse you before the committee, if you like. You what? Mum, calm down, it was only a few quid. Here you go, here you go, Mrs. It's not the money, it's the principle. Oh, the principle being that you can empty the fruit machine whenever you like. The principle being that we don't like cheats in the Legion. You stupid old back. And we won't tolerate abusive staff in the Legion either. Mum, calm down. I will not calm down. I'll tell you what you can tell the committee. Look, Mrs Stano, I'm sorry about all this. Just take the money, eh? She will not take the money. You can tell the committee. You can stick your job in your fruit machine. Well, it's another quiet night out with the McDonald family, eh? You see, life changes fast enough. Without you helping it, that's what I've learned. One minute you're a newlywed, life full of sap and opportunity. The next you're sat in snug with your pint of warm ale and no one to call friend. Yeah, well, maybe not all marriages are as uh, exciting as yours, eh, Reggie? Is she there? Is this the frog? Yeah, well, she was busy at lunchtime, wasn't she? Now, are you sure about this? I've kept the receipt. Well, OK, then. Hiya, Carly. Hiya. Raquel, I bought you this dress as a, as a thank you present. It was going to be a bribe, but now it's a thank you present. If you don't like it, you can take it back and swap it for something else. I kept the receipt. But I don't want to show you the receipt unless I have to, because then you'll know how much it costs. I know how much it costs. I've looked at it loads of times. I know. I saw you looking at it when we went to buy that bed. one of the nicest things that anyone has ever done for me, thank you. So you like it, then? I love it. I want you to take it back. I don't need a dress, Curly. I've got loads of frocks, and... Besides, there's one I've been dying to wear, so... I don't want you to make a big fuss about this. I'm doing you a favour as a friend. That's all there is to it, OK? OK, but... Thank you, anyway. So, oh, Daddy? Yeah. I hear you're trying to pass yourself off as a married man. Engaged. Huh? Well, there's no need to go to all this trouble, you know. If you really want to look married, just sit all alone in the corner of your local and don't go home till closing time. That's what marriage is all about, you know. Well, Maury, my love, you've come. I miss you, Reg. And I miss you, too. Come in. Oh. Mm. It'll be different when the baby's born. It'll be exciting. Lots of attention, everything new. Yeah, I know. It's just a person. I'll be there to hold your hand. Will you? Of course. Yeah, I've never seen a baby born before. Well, great. Bring your camera, bring your friends, sell tickets. No, no, that's not what I meant. You know, this baby's one of the biggest things that's ever happened to me. I want to be there when she takes that first breath. I want to hold her in my arms. You want to bond with her? <laughs> that's right. <laughs> Listen. You know... Isn't this all a bit hasty? I mean... Well, what if we fall out again and you never see her? Well, we're not going to, are we? I don't know. I don't know. I, I can't even imagine it. It's... It's like a foreign country. Yeah, well, I mean, our relationship is... A we haven't the... got a relationship, Ken. What we've got is a predicament. Well, you've been very good about things up to now, but it's starting to wear a bit thin. <laughs> what do you mean? Oh, all this hassling me about the name and the birth. I don't want to think about the birth, OK? <laughs> How many times have I said that now? Well, you're going to have to think about it sometime. No, I don't. I'm just going to wait for it to happen, and then I'm going to close my eyes until it's all over. 
Well, all I'm saying is I want to be there with you. No, no, what you were saying was if you were there, you'd be bonding away with my baby. Our baby. You see, you're saying that if I let you into the birthplace, that's as good as marrying you. It, that's what you're saying. It's a commitment. Yeah, but I don't know what sort of commitment, do I? That's up to you. It's up to me. <laughs> Fine, well, I don't want you there at the birth. Hmm. That's what you want. I don't want you there at the birth, and I don't want you in my life. What? You heard me. I want this baby to have everything I can give her. I want her to have a fresh start. I'm not having her spending the first few days sitting around the fag ash of the burnt-out relationship. But it didn't be like no, that. No, that's right. That's why I'm finishing it now. This is going to be the start of a new life. For me. And for her. You can't do this to me. I can do anything I no, like. No, please, please, Denise. This is very meaningful to me. Look, I had children when I was much younger. I made a complete mess of it. Now, by some miracle, I've been given another chance. I want to be there for her from the very first moment. Yeah, that's another reason why. It's all over. I am not having my baby turned into some kind of therapy for you. I didn't mean it like that. I aye, aye, that... aye! Me, me, me! This isn't about you! This is about my baby! You don't even come into it at all! Well, of course it's got something to do with me! I'm the father! And of course it's got something to do with me! I live down the road! I mean, what am I supposed to do? Watch you pushing the pram around and feel nothing? I don't... Just, just a minute. Just say, oh, yeah, that's the one that got away. I hey. don't care about what you feel. I don't care about you at all. All I care about is my baby. No. Get out. You're upsetting me. I'm upsetting you? Yeah, that's right. You're upsetting me. It's bad for my baby. Get out. Out. <laughs> How many times? It wasn't your fault. If I hadn't walked out, they'd have sacked me and then I'd have been really stuck. Yeah, if you ain't been so clever. Hey, that's my son you're talking about. Go on, the pair of you. Have a good time. Hi, Ken. How's it? I knew it. I told him not to give her those flowers. Oh, she won't go to sleep again. You've got all this to come, I suppose. Come on, darling. See you in the room. It's about half twelve, okay? You two not had any breakfast then? I can't help it if he finds me irresistible, can I? I'm going to have a word with the wages department. They're definitely taking off too many stoppages. Stoppages? Mm, tax, national insurance. That is why I like to work for Farouk. I don't pay taxes. Well, maybe it's time you started. Oh, yes. And earn even less money. Only while you're working for Farouk. Now we're married, there's nothing to stop you working for whoever you want. Like who? Well, I don't know. You don't want to be slaving for him for the rest of your life, do you? Besides, if you start paying tax, you're entitled to benefits. The doll, you mean? Yeah, sick pay, pension when you retire. Money for not working. I like the sound of that. <laughs> Don't get too excited. It's not much, but it's better than nothing. Anyway, 
It's the law. You earn money, you pay tax. Otherwise, they'll catch up with you eventually, and then you'll be in big trouble. And we don't want that, do we? Denise! I thought you'd be on your way to school by now. I wouldn't have ventured out otherwise. Look, Denise, last night, we both said a lot of things that maybe we shouldn't have. Speak for yourself. I meant every word. Well, what I mean is, we can't just end it Ken, like this. If we carry on this conversation, it'll just end in another row. But it needs... Which means you are giving me high blood pressure. In other words, you are preventing me from having a healthy pregnancy. So please, leave me alone. Denise! Listen, give me 30 seconds before you open up again. And whatever you do, do not let him up to my flat, even if you have to fend him off with these. Denise! Do you think that they might have had a row? This is an unexpected surprise. See what I've been reduced to. Uh, you better come in. Come on. I've just taken an old lady to the Chiropodist in Albert Road. This was on my way back, so I thought I'd look in. Oh, you're welcome any time, lover. You know that. Now, come on, sit down. I'll put the kettle on. Thanks. You haven't got a plaster by any chance, have you, Audrey? Only the old day got into her head that I'd come to a victor from a bungalow. <laughs> Kept lashing out with a stick. Vicious old so-and-so. Oh. Oh, dear. So you're doing this Weatherfield dialer ride full-time now, are you? <laughs> Tossed about from pillar to post, more like. And now your husband only needs me to carry his chain for him. I'm free to be redeployed as the council sees fit. I were on meals and wheels yesterday. Oh, still a minute. Oh, it's just a little graze, that. Took a coach full of kids to the baths yesterday afternoon. And it's even been rumoured that next week I'm heading for a stint on the dust. Plenty of variety, then. That's nice. There you are. Well, at least you've still got a job, Bran. I mean, that's something. Do you have any idea how long I've been driving council officials around for? Twelve years. Yes, well, I know. That must be a bit of a come-down, love. It's a highly sought-after position, Audrey. Or it was. A position with prestige, glamour, mm. influence. You don't get on the committee of Weatherfield Golf Club by saying you work on the bins, you know. No. There are drivers down that town hall I give the right teeth just to get near that limo. Oh, I miss that car. Oh, me too, Brian. When she just had a service, I should take her out onto the M56, open her up. They were like riding a magic carpet. And now what have I got, eh? A B-Reg banger with plastic seats and a sticky clutch. And all thanks to your flaming husband. Oh, do you know, I'm so sorry, Brian. But once Alfie gets an idea in his head, there's no stopping him. You know he accused me of abusing the car just because I took the kids to school in it once in a while. Did he now? And as for fraternising with the driver, is he called? I said we were just having a giggle, but no, the next Hang thing I know, minute. he goes and... Hang on Am I hearing this right? Mayor Roberts, man of the people sacrifices his limousine, supposedly for the greater good, yet all along it was because he didn't like you and me having a laugh together. Oh, am I ready for this? Centre of town's evening. I don't know where folk get all the money from. It's where they get the time, I don't understand. We haven't even begun to think about Christmas presents yet. Oh, Nick was dropping some pretty heavy hints after footy the other night. So what's he after, a gold cigarette lighter? Oh, very funny, Alma. Uh, matter of fact, he said he wants an air pistol. An air pistol? I'd rather buy him a cigarette lighter. What do you want an air pistol for? To take pot shots at your husband. You just stick to buttering toast. Anyway, I said he'd have to ask you. Well, to be honest, Don, if I thought it didn't entice him over the road for Christmas, I might consider it. Yeah, well, he hasn't said where he wants to go yet, and I haven't asked. Will you ask him? I mean, it would be lovely if we could all be together Christmas Day, you included. Yeah, you just leave it with me. I'll see what I can do. Thanks a lot. They can sign it and take out, please. Coming up. Hey, 
Oh, yeah. You started your job on it already, have you? Might as well. Not that there's a lot of call for experienced barmaids with explosive tempers. Look, Mum, if I knew something like that would have happened, I wouldn't have even gone There down. is no need to start apologising again, Steve. I've told you, you've just as much right to play that fruit machine as anybody else. And if Jean Stanhope thinks otherwise, then that's her lookout. As a matter of fact, I quite enjoyed telling her where to get up. So what did Dan have to say about it? Oh, accused me of stealing his thunder. And then said, not to worry, we'll muddle through. But I don't want to muddle through. I'm sick of muddling through. Well, leave it to me. Thank you, pal. Well, I know it wasn't my fault, but I feel responsible. And I want to help somehow. I don't know how yet, but I want to help. Bacon sandwich, take away. See ya. See ya. I could go to the chief executive with this, you know. Oh, that go on. How's that going to look? He'll just say it's sour green. Well, the papers, that's an idea. I'll expose him in the press. That'll wipe the smug grin off his face. Calm down, you're getting carried away. Why am I supposed to feel, Audrey? I've been wrong. And for what, eh? For being friendly, for being nice, for trying to do me job. Well, I shan't be nice from now on, I'm telling you. <laughs> listen, listen, I'll have a word with him, see if I can get him to change his mind, get the limo back. All right, and how are you going to manage that? Oh, I'm a dab hand to getting my husband to do things he doesn't want to do. I can wrap him round my little finger whenever I mind to. Excuse me, sorry. Together. Ah, Des, listen, um, I'm glad you're here. I wanted to ask you something. Um, I don't suppose you've got any jobs going, have you? Oh, definitely, yeah. Why don't you ask Sean? He'll probably give you my job. If it means you stop fleecing us. No, 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 no. It's not for me, mate. It's, um, it's for me mum. Oh, right. Packed in at the Legion, has she? Something like that, yeah. Well, I'm afraid I can't help you. Ask me again after Christmas, though. Business might have picked up. After all, got to stop winning sometime. I went back on it, mate. Go. One lemonade. One ham shallow. Thank you. Well, it must be terrible for you now. Who? Denise. I mean, she obviously doesn't like Ken anymore, but she can't exactly finish with him because she's carrying his kid. Not that you're seeing this totally from her point of view, of course. You what? Never mind. What are we doing tonight, then? I thought I might go home, actually. Well, why do you want to do that? Because I live there and haven't been home for the past three nights. So? So, I've got no clean clothes for one thing, and for another, my mum will go mad if I stay out again. She's already started making wisecracks about renting my bedroom out. Well, why don't you go home, bottle your mum up with some flowers or something, collect some clean clothes and meet me later? It's all right saying pick up some clean clothes, but that means I've got to decide what I'm wearing tomorrow, today. What's so hard about that? What if I change my mind? Hmm? Oh, ruins me all day if I'm walking around wearing the wrong thing. I like to get up on the morning, have a look at the weather, have a cup of tea, and then decide what I'm wearing. Well, why don't you go home, collect all your clothes, and meet me later? Beg your pardon. And while you're at it, you can collect the rest of your stuff and all. Move in, you mean? Yeah. <sighs> Anyone really can rent out your bedroom, can't you? We don't want exotic, sun-kissed beaches, not when we've got each other. That's what I keep telling myself, anyway. So oh, I think it's romantic all the same. You meet on holiday and you fall in love, and then he travels thousands of miles because he can't bear to be separated from you. Do you know, it's like the plot of a romance novel. Oh, you should know. You read enough of them. That's why our head's in the clouds half the time. Oh, you are cynical, Mother. But Emily agrees. Sorry. Well, about Deirdre and Samir, how romantic it's turned out for them. Oh, yes, very. Um, I can't seem to find the demerara sugar. Oh, I know, oh. and I'll show you. Oh. <laughs> of course, it's easy to be oh. romantic, isn't it, when you're first wed? It's keeping the romance alive that this challenge. Mm. Oh, I don't think that's going to be a problem, to tell you the truth, Rich. Mm? Well, I can say that now, but how will you feel in six months' time? It's a waitress, isn't it, your young man? That's right, yeah. Oh, well, you'll be working mainly nights and you'll be working mainly days. 
They're like box and cocks, the pair of you. We managed before we got married. I'm sure we'll manage now. I say, but uh, how long before the resolve weakens and both become complacent? Rich. Eh? No, all I'm saying is, when a wife and husband have a full-time job, it's hardly a recipe for marital bliss, is it? Like I said, I'm sure we'll manage somehow. Yeah. Ta-da! Oh, well... Oh, Curly. I'm glad I've seen you. I wanted to ask your advice. Have you got a minute? Yeah, yeah, if you're quick, yeah. Well, it's about Sam here, cos now we're married, I want to get him registered for tax purposes, you know. I just wondered if you'd know how I'd go about it. Well, uh, you, you, um... <laughs> I was merely imparting a little of my valuable experience, that's Oh, all. yes, and none of it was for my benefit, of course. Well, as a matter of fact, as the words left my lips, it did occur to me they had a certain resonance, yes. A certain resonance. And you think that I'm going to give up the shop and become a docile, obedient housewife? No, no. When, when did I ever You've say You've been when... implying it. You're always implying it. What I want, Maureen, is for the two of us to spend a little more time alone together. That's what... Right. Oh. I'm up on my lunch break. Mother! You, I'm just talking to Reg. One till two, we agreed. I know what we agreed, but I'm just asking on this occasion if you could just wait until five minutes past. Provided you don't kick up a fuss when I don't get back till five minutes past. <sighs> Come back at 25 minutes past. Take the whole afternoon off. Right, I will. Oh, I don't know who's worse, you or her. Hey, oh. what you, you... There's John. <laughs> Snipped out for ten minutes. I said I'd keep watch. There's only Mrs Weaver there. She'll be under the dry for another half hour yet. Guess what? Steve's asked me to move in with him. Mmm. Well, aren't you shocked? I'm shocked he hasn't asked you before. He's obviously taking his washing home to his mother. Which is his own washing, actually. Mm, you mean he pretends to in front of you? Well, I thought you might have given me some advice. I wish I hadn't bothered telling you now. Oh, OK, hey, V. Listen, I'm sorry. Why? Yeah, because everyone always think that Steve's just out for what he can get. He has got a decent side to him, you know. Yeah, I'm sure he has. He can be very romantic. I, I don't doubt it for a second. Right, and maybe... Just maybe he wants me to move in the flat with him because he likes being with me. Well, listen, you obviously like being with him, so maybe you should give it a go. Avi, look at me. Nearly twice divorced and pregnant by a man I can't stand. I'm not the one to ask for advice. You and Ken definitely split up, then? <sighs> well, I've told him I don't want anything more to do with him. But he refuses to accept it, hence this morning's little performance. What are you going to do? I don't know. I'm beginning to think the only way to get away from Ken is to get away from Weatherfield. What move? I'm seriously thinking about it, yeah. Well, what about this place? I'll have to sell it, I suppose. Not that there's much to sell, just the goodwill, a few fixtures, fittings. It's a bit drastic, isn't it? Yeah, but it beats having a baby in prison, which I might end up doing if Ken doesn't leave me alone. Already came close to taking a swing for him. Hi. Not a word of this to John. You hear? Yeah. yeah. Our little secret. Okay. Mum? Oh, hi. Here. So I know what to do something to help you out, so. What's this? Oh, call it an early Christmas present. Did you get this? What do you mean, where did I get it? Steve, there must be nearly £300 here. Well, you must have got it somewhere. You sound like Christine Bullock. What does it matter where I got it from? It matters to me. I mugged it from an old age pension on. Steve, I'm being serious. I want it on the horses, if you must know. What, £300? Well, I had a good day. Oh, a very good day, by the looks of things. Really, if you know what you're doing. Here, have it back. You are? Look, Steve, I really appreciate you wanting to help, but I don't want your money, not knowing where it's come from. Well, I didn't embezzle it, you know. I want it fair and square. Yeah, but it's a mug's game. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Look, I can't stop you. Take it. I can't stop you betting on the horses, but I'm certainly not going to encourage you, Steve. I'm sorry, but no, I don't want it. Right. What's the last time I try and help anybody out, then? Well, Ken, you look worn out. Anyone would think it's you that's about to have the baby. Well, there's a good idea. Let the men be the childbearers instead of the women. 
Bet you wouldn't say that after 24 hours uh, in labour. Well, maybe not, maybe not, but at least then we might be entitled to have a say in the child's future. Now, come on. You've not started arguing already about what it's going to be called. Oh, Rita, I would give anything to argue with Denise over what the baby's going to be called. But as far as she's concerned, it's none of my business. Really? Oh, yeah, we had a row yesterday, a big one. Oh, dear. Well, it's my fault, I suppose, but nothing's been said. I thought we should talk about what's going to happen after the baby's born. Yes, establish if I'm going to be involved in any way. But she doesn't. Oh, as far as she's concerned, I fulfilled my only useful obligation about nine months ago. No, she wants nothing more to do with me. And what's more, I'm to have nothing to do with the upbringing of my own child. Sure. No, it's not. true, Rita. She's going to be living down the street from me with our baby, and I'm totally excluded from its upbringing. And how am I going to feel when I see her wheeling a pram down the street? And the thing is, you read in the paper about women struggling to bring out children on their own, you know, but no, 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 Denise Osborne, she'd rather be a single parent than have anything to do with me. Oh, now, come on, Ken, you're getting carried away. I'm sure it'll all blow over in a day or two. Well, I'd love to say I agree with you, Rita, but I can't honestly say I do. Bye. Bye, then. You did a very good job there. Mm. Not exactly fashion cutting there, was it? No, but it's bread and butter. And I wasn't talking just about the haircut, anyway. Thanks for trusting me. You're doing all right, don't worry. Do you think I'll make it? In this business? <laughs> if you stick at it, of course you will. Why'd you ask that? No reason. Hey, come on, Fiona. If there's something on your mind, I need to know. No. Well, yeah, actually, there is something. What? Steve. He's asked me to move in with him. Ah. Well, he's no mug, then, is he? Don't know whether I should, though. Do you fancy it? Yeah. Yeah, to be honest, I do. Hi, Alfie, sweetheart. Here, I'm jiggered. Fourteen hospital wards have dragged me around this afternoon. Oh, you poor thing. Mm. Oh, hey, what's that lovely smell? It's that perfume my Martin gave me last birthday. Do you like it? No, no, not that. No, from the kitchen. It's not one of Frederick's steak and kidney puddings, is it? It certainly is, yes. It's been steaming since five o'clock. Mm. And there's uh, broad beans and mashed potatoes to go with it. And treacle sponge to follow. Hey. <laughs> All right, Aubrey. Come on, out with it. What you been buying? I haven't been buying anything else. You can't pull the wool over my eyes, Audrey. You don't go to all this trouble unless you've been spending. Oh. I haven't. Cross my heart. Come on, you sit there and read your paper. I'll go and finish the tea. Mm. Kem swaggering up to me, tries to give me an envelope stuffed with money. I thought he was going to ask me to drive a getaway car for him. How much money? About 300 quid. I don't know. I didn't count it. Well, I'd have snapped his hand off if I were you. No way. I know where he got it from. Wouldn't have bothered me. Not with the amount of books I've got to buy. Hey, up here he is. Ah, brother. Hi, Can I have uh, a pint of lager and half a lager and lamb, please? Yeah, I'll be with you in a second, mate. All right. Um. Now, it was Curly Watts suggested I went to the DSS, so I went on my way to work. They're really helpful. Sure they are. You ask how your husband can give half his wages to the government? Yes. I told you, it's not as simple as that. And anyway, it's a quarter of your wages. It's still a quarter I would prefer to keep myself. Look, Samir, the immigration people have already been sniffing around the Casablanca. If they come again, I just want to make sure that you and me have done everything by the book. Help with spectacles. What? Oh, yes. If you're on income support and you wear glasses, they'll help to pay towards them as well. How about help with the video? Or better still help with a sports car. Did you hear what I said about yes, getting a letter? Yes, yes. I will ask my boss tomorrow. Thank you. And that, and that's, uh, let me see, call it 300 quid. Very funny. All right, then, 267. Keep the change. 33p. Nice one, bro. You're welcome. There you go. Tap. Right. You decided what you're doing, then? I'll start looking around for a new job, I suppose. I've got nearly two years' experience, so I should be able to no, do something. No, no, I don't mean about Denise. I mean about you and me. Are you moving in or what? Have you heard yourself? I'm 19 years old. You're 20, right? You're asking me to live with you. It's a big step, Steve, and you're putting it like you're asking me what flavour crisps I want. <laughs> Come off it, Fee. You're on the flat most nights as it is anyway. No, that's not the point. 
All right then, all right. Um, Fiona, my darling, my angel, I, I just cannot bear another minute without you. Come and live with me, huh? How's that? I'll think about it. Oh, come on. I said I'll think about it. All right, see yourself. What flavour Chris did you want anyway? I forgot to get him. Give up, Audrey. <laughs> hey, hey, what are you doing? <laughs> all right, then. You said you'd been on your feet all afternoon. I'll give you one of my massages. <sighs> I'd sooner put my foot in a, a bowl of hot water. No, no, this is much better for you. I read it in my magazine. Oh. Do you know, apparently, if you hit the right pressure points, it can help you sleep. And it's supposed to be a turn on. Oh! <laughs> oh. It's it when you press on me bunny and. Now, come on, Audrey, what's all this about, anyway? You, you don't make me nice teas for nothing. What, what are you after? Yeah, actually, there is so much I want to talk to you uh, about. Here we go. No, it's just that when I went to that school concert the other day, well, I had to go in a taxi, and do you know, it just didn't seem right, Arthur. I should have guessed. No, but, I mean, can't you get the limo back? It's not very regal, you know, going everywhere in taxis. No, it's not very regal using the Myrtle car as your own personal taxi, neither. Not canoodling with a blooming chauffeur. So you admit that's why you got rid of it, just to spite me? Never mind why I got rid of it. It's gone. I couldn't get it back, even if I wanted. Yes, of course you could. I mean, just tell the council that you acted without consulting your mares. Oh, and how's that going to make me look? Oh, Alf, I don't care how it makes you look. I mean, you thought up this daft idea to get shot of it. Think of another daft idea to get it back. No way, Audrey. Look, well, you managed perfectly well without that car. Anyway, it's gone and that's it. Well, in that case, you can manage without me, you know. What's that supposed to mean? It means, Alf, you get the limo back or I'm resigning. You can find yourself another mayoress. Right, I will. I will. I'll do just that. Where's my sock? Given up? No, oh, it's not all it's cracked up to be, Mavis. Do you know, I thought I'd get by with a sense of humour and a decent figure, but more like earplugs and some sport stockings. Oh, you're not seriously stepping down, are you, Audrey? Rita, I refuse to catch a bus to civic functions just to solve half his conscience. Well, can't you persuade him to change his mind? I have tried. He can be a very stubborn man, Alf. Well, he can't have much longer to run, can he? Well, that's his problem. Well, what's he going to do? I mean, he's got to have somebody's mayoress. Exactly. No. Mm -hmm. Well, I'm afraid so. I'd say you were in line for a personal appearance sometime today. Well, I'm afraid he's wasting his time. Oh, well, Rita, you better tell him that. Don't worry, I will. Well, it's a shame, though, because I think he were counting on you. Well, I hope he's got a lot of fingers. Right, I'm off to Thor Sailors, Mavis. I'll see you later. Ta-ra. Ta-ra, Audrey. Bye, Rita. You're right. Yeah, fine. Do you need anything? A bit low on conditioner. And towels. Only I uh, mentioned it a few weeks back. You said you think you might get some new ones. Right. Um, just excuse me a minute. I was having a look, and there's these in here, and they're nice. I always get them from Parkinson's on the high street. Mm, right. And Mrs. Wrightson's waiting. I know. Look, Denise. What were we talking about yesterday? Well? About getting out. You weren't being serious, were you? Wasn't I? Well, if you were thinking about selling up, well, I'd like to know. Yeah, well, if it does happen, you will know. Now, I suggest you look after the customers, you leave me to look after the business, OK? Right, I'll see you later then. You want me to bring back something for supper? Nah, just yourself. Oh, and uh, bring that letter home. I want to take it to the DSS okay. tomorrow. Emily, oh, it is good we meet like this. No, look, we better get to work. No, already we leave this thing for too long. What is it you say about open wounds fostering? Festering. I don't want to cause any more unpleasantness. You both know how I feel. There's no point in going over it. You're married, and I wish you well. We are married, but you feel that Didri make a big mistake by marrying me. 
I respect your point of view. But now she is my wife, I will make her happy. I will prove to you how you are wrong. Look, I know we've done the right thing. That's all that matters. No, it matters to me that you two heal your friendship. In the same way, it matters to me that I pay back all the money I owe Emily. That's the last thing that's worrying me. No, it is all part of the same thing, of you not trusting me, of you thinking that I am not good enough for Deirdre. I will show you you are wrong in both these things. I don't think there's much you can argue with in that, is there, Emily? Oh, I put my foot in it. I just want to make things better. I do not like it that you should be quarreling over me. You're a darling. But <laughs> folk do fall out round here. It's an old Weatherfield tradition. We soon bounce back. Anyway, we'd better be getting to work. And okay. don't get that letter. Okay. <laughs> I will ask the boss as soon as I see him. You'll take care. So he's carlish, chauffeurless, and mirrorless now, is he? <laughs> and likely to stop that way now. You're like a couple of kids, the pair of you. Well, when he knocks on Rita's door to see if she's coming out to play, he's in for a big shock. Only because you ran off with all his marbles. Hey, listen, it's lucky it was only his marbles. <laughs> <laughs> you didn't give him much option, did you? Oh, what do you mean? Now, it's him playing silly, Becker. Only because he's jealous. Oh, dear, look, I've told you, he's nothing to be jealous of. Oh, so, so you really think he's going to come back with his tail between his legs, do you? The countdown has already started, Alma. Anyway, come on, be fair. Who's he going to get to replace me? Well, I mean, he does have a way with certain women, you know. Vivian Barford, someone. <laughs> oh, she's not even in the frame. He'll be back. Just wait and see. Hi, Grandpa. Oh, hi, sweetheart. How are you? Nick? Yeah, we thought we'd come in for some dinner, if that's all right. Hi. Hey, now, listen, I'm glad you've come in, because I wanted to ask you what you want for Christmas. I don't see you much these days. Oh, right, eh? Uh, can I get back to you on it? <laughs> yes, gosh, you can. Oh, yeah, you and Grandad have come round for Christmas dinner again this year? Uh, if we're ass. <laughs> That'll be all right, won't it, Mum? If that's what they want, yeah. Top. Will you be there? Of course I will. Christmas, innit? Mr. Sugden, you've got your currants, your sultanas, your raisins, your glass of cherries, your butter, eggs, lemon, mixed peel, cinnamon, and there's your flour. See it? That's it. Okay. What about my mixed spice? Oh, I, don't, I haven't got any mixed spice, Mr. Sugden. Well, what's the good of a Christmas cake without mixed spice? Oh, we'll have to pop back tomorrow. But I can't pop back tomorrow. I want to make it today. I'm late already. Well, I'm sorry. Yes, well, that doesn't save me any good shoe leather, does it? Traipsing round Weatherfield, looking for something you haven't got. Hey, where do you think you're going? Look, if I've got to go to Better Buy for a mixed spice, I might as well get this lot there and all. <laughs> Probably, you know, save myself a bit of money as well. Don't you want any of these? Now, just hang on. Take them, start your baking, and I'll have your mixed spice round your house in ten minutes. Can you guarantee that? Are you doubting my word, Percy Sugden? No, I'll take your word for it. And I'll pay for it and this lot when I get it. Oh. All right. Excuse me. Uh, very impressive, mother-in-law. Excellent customer relations. When we need your approval, we'll ask for it. Just passing a compliment. Pity you can't pass this job as easy. Mm -hmm. Well, for your information, I've actually come here today to take my wife out to uh, luncheon. I can't, Reg. Oh, come on, Maureen. Look, I've taken the time off especially. Does that mean you're free for a bit? Yes, that is the general idea, yes. Right, then. Pop down to Patel's on Rosamond Street, buy two small drums of mixed spice and deliver one of them to Percy Sugden. Oh, aye, and there's this bill to settle. Yeah. Tell him he can have the spice on us. I wonder now if I did the right thing not going to the wedding. Ooh. I think there are a lot of people around here wondering if they've done the right thing this morning. Alf Roberts, for one. Oh? Yeah. Audrey's walked out on him. What? Oh, oh, only officially speaking. She's refusing to be mayoress any longer. Oh, dear. I think it's all to do with Alf giving up the council limousine. Mm. Oh, uh, hello, Alf. Oh. What can I get you? Oh, Emily. <laughs> Bye. Bye, Emily. 
Uh, I was just wondering if we could have a word with Rita, if that's possible. Oh, well, I'm afraid she's just out at the oh. minute. Out. You know, she suddenly took it into her head to go to the wholesalers. Oh. Actually, it was just after Audrey had been in, funnily enough. Audrey? Yes, yeah, she was in here about an hour ago. Any particular reason? Well, I... Thank you, Mavis. I'll take over now. Now then, Rita. Hello, Alf. Right. You can go for your dinner now. Oh, well, I don't need to. Not yet. Yes, you do. Oh, right, of course. Well, if you'll excuse me. And I know what you're here for and all, Alf. In fact, I've been expecting you. <coughs> Fiona, when you finish prepping Mrs Greenaway, can you ring Mrs Pierce and tell her running a bit late so does she want to cancel and make it last thing tonight? Yeah, but she won't be happy about that. No, no, it's OK. She's not booked. Oh. I said I'd try and fit her in if I could. It's the only thing about working in a gold mine, isn't it? What's that, then? You don't get to keep the gold. <laughs> there you go. Excuse me. You don't lose your investment when the seams run out, either. Oh, come on. This place coins it in. You know that. Yeah, it's a good business. Actually, I'm surprised you never thought about running somewhere like this. Been there, done it. Bought the T-shirt, thanks. Maybe we're digging in the wrong place. You tell me ex-wife that. She still thinks I'm hitting pay dirt. Alimony. Oh, right. No, wrong. This is just about keeping body and soul together. Be doing more than that if you owned it. Hi. Yeah, Mrs. Pierce. It's Fiona at the salon. So Rita turned you down, then, eh? Ah, I should have been just right for the job and all. Ah, but ask yourself, Alf. Do you want to get involved in a domestic? There's no way I'm running back to order, that's for sure. Happen you're looking at the wrong place. Tell them. Have one yourself. Oh, thanks very much, Mr. Robert. You could do worse than somebody like her, you know. Not Raquel. Good looking girl. Do wonders for your image. Uh, if only I dare. He who dares wins up. Yeah, but I'm not in the SAS. Well, well, I'd give it serious thought. See ya. Cheers, Beth. Bye, love. Oh, oh, what are you going to do? I'll get some of it. They must be mad at that, Legion. They're never going to find anybody with your experience in Ori. Oh, it's a pity everybody doesn't think like you, Betty. Yeah, but you see, some people are just born for the job. You are, you see. Mind you, <laughs> some folks can't always see it. Yeah, it's a shame I couldn't get you fixed up, that's all. I would if there was anything going. Oh, I, I wouldn't expect anything, Dad. Listen, if we had anything, you'd get it. I told you, Steve. Steve? Yeah. When he asked me if you could have a job. When was this? Yesterday. I hope you don't think I put him up to it. Wouldn't matter if you did. If we had anything, you'd get it. Thanks, Dad. Drowning your sorrows? I'll take it to word, then. There's an out in this street I don't get to know about, Alf. <laughs> Suppose not. So, anyone particular in mind? Well, Don suggested Raquel. Well, you could do worse than someone with a pub background. I mean, they're used to dealing with the general public. Spend half their lives putting on a pleasant face. Well, you might be right. Mind, what you really need is someone with a bit more maturity. Someone born to wear the chain of public office. Yeah, well, she is a talk, but Can you think of anybody, though? Oh. I could think of someone right now. Yes, Cop. <laughs> Out of the frying pan and into the fire. Yeah, I never thought you'd spring this on me, though, you know. I thought it was just chat. <laughs> well, on balance, I say you were better off with Audrey. On balance, I think I'd be better off at the North Pole. So, what are you going to do? Well, I'm keeping up the way, aren't I? What do you think I'm doing in here? Increasing your waistline? Yeah, well, I might go bust and that'll be the end of that. Oh, yeah, you know you'd have to clear up the mess, don't you? Hey, I've just had an idea. What? You. Hey? That's my escort, my Murris. Alf, she's me mother. Exactly. She couldn't go on about her own daughter, could she? And what if I don't want the job? Well, dear. Well, as it happens, I wouldn't mind. Ah. But I already have a full-time job, and I'd like to live to draw me old age pension. But will you consider? No. Oh. Alma, how about you, love? Pass. 
Looks like no takers. Oh, I wouldn't <sighs> say that. We mustn't forget about Beth. Well? Aye, I suppose it'll do. It's a class haircut, Mr Sugden. Well, having said that, I wouldn't like to have to be paying full price for it. Well, you're not, are you? Because we're doing you a deal. <clears throat> Everything all right, Mr Sugden? Ah, not bad for a beginner. Good haircut by a beautiful girl and all at half price. What more could a man ask? Look, I haven't got time to stand here gas and I've got a Christmas cake in the oven. Oh, do we get a slice and a glass of sherry when you've made it? Only if you're invited round. No, am I? Well, it's a possibility after today. Cheerio. Bye. I think he likes you. I'd hate to see what he's like when he's upset, then. Hello. I thought you'd put today aside to bake the Christmas cake. Well, uh, I decided to get me a cup while well, it was in the oven, you know. And uh, I don't like wasting time. I don't know how much time I've got to waste at my age. <laughs> And it smells very good, anyway. And it will be good, don't you worry. Will that? Shall I put the kettle on? Uh, yes, you do that, Mr. Sugden. I I'll be there presently. Samir? Yes? I wondered if I might have a word. No. Oh, yes, if that's all right. No. It's not possible. Not now. Do you think we could have this door shut, Mrs Bishop? I don't want this cake going down in the middle as soon as I take it out the oven. Uh, yes, yes, sorry. Of course, Mr Sugden. Good night, ladies. Bye-bye, see you soon. You are welcome to a cup of coffee. I was just going to put my feet up after a long day's slog. Do you know, I know just how you feel. It's murder traipsing around those shops all afternoon. Oh, yeah, well, it must be, yeah. As if I don't buy at least one new thing a week, he thinks I'm going soft, you know. So then, what have you got? Oh, a couple of sweaters and a winter skirt. Oh, well, you'll need them, won't you, to sit around in, now you're a lady of leisure. Mm. Well, that won't last long. Not that he's not dry in mine. Do you know, I've heard he's making a right fool of himself, asking every Tom, Dick and Harry he meets to be his new paramour. <laughs> According to Don, he's even considering Raquel. <laughs> oh, well, um, I didn't know about Raquel, but um, I did know that Bet was in the running. <laughs> Bet Gura? You were according to Alf. He's been in here then, has he? Yeah. Oh, I may have misunderstood him, but um, I gather from what he said that Beck was definitely under the impression she was going to be the new mayoress. Mm -hmm. Hey, hmm? what about the pictures? Oh, Reg, I'm tired. Well, how about a meal somewhere? Do you... I just want to go home, Reg, and sit in front of the telly with a nice cup of tea and a sandwich. And your mother? I suppose so. Maureen? What? I've not seen anything of you. If you'd have stayed in the shop, you'd have seen something of me. You know what I mean? I come round and I have to take you out to lunch and I end up playing delivery boy to that Percy Sugden, me. I'm sorry about that. No, no, I'm not complaining and I don't mind helping out when I can. But there has to be some return, Maureen, or what else is... What's it all about? Well, mm. all right, then. We'll go out. Where do you want to go? Oh, I'm not going to force you to go out if you don't want to. You just said you wanted to. What I want... What? It's for the two of us to have a life together, away from that shop and away from your mother. Yes, God. I know, Reggie, so do I. But at the moment, we're still with both, aren't we? Yes, yes, we are. Oh, yeah. What are you having? Lemonade. Lemonade? Have anybody moving in with me, drinking lemonade? Good for my image. Who said I'm moving in with you? Yeah. Go on, say you will. Just get me the lemonade, OK? I've got more things to think about all day than you. Is that possible? You know how I said Denise was thinking about selling up? Yeah. Well, you want man being a kept woman, then, right? I'm being serious, Steve. Well, I asked her again, you know, if she was being serious or she was just fed up. And she's not? No, I don't think so. Well, there's not a lot you can do if she is, is there? I know, but it's not just my job, though, is it? I mean, there's the baby in this can, and she won't be told him anything. So? 
So maybe someone should. Hey, well, not you, I hope. Who else? Oh, look, do yourself a favour, right? Keep well out of it. I just got them this afternoon. What they like? <laughs> well, they have come out, which is a bit of a relief. God, I've been dreading these. There you go. <laughs> oh, look at that. That's great. When did you say that? Oh, yeah. <laughs> you sneaky devil. <laughs> Oh, look at that. They look ancient. Oh, don't be dead. I do. I look about a hundred. No, you do not. You look great. Oh, look at Sam here, the idiot. <laughs> Hello. Oh, hi. Hi. What are you doing home? Hey, Liz has brought the wedding photographs. I can see. Well, come and have a proper look. What is it? I am sacked. No. That's why I'm home. I lose my job. spend all that looking at it. Are you coming in for a drink? I wish I'd there. Uh, I could check it out if you worried about Audrey. It's not Audrey, it's Bet. Eh? Oh, I've dropped myself right in it, Don. Right in it. Eh? Well, she's somehow got the idea that uh, I wanted to take over from Audrey. Bet? It happened just after you'd gone this dinner time. We were, we were just chatting about who'd be the best person, you know, and, and she seems to think I've asked her to do the job. <laughs> Well, how did you manage that? I'm trying to work that out myself, Don. Yeah, well, you have got a problem. <laughs> Hello. So it was when you asked him for the letter? As soon as he came in, I said I need it for my insurance card. Yeah. He said I am better off without one. If I have an insurance card and tax code, I will lose money. <laughs> you mean he'll lose money? You'd have to start paying you properly. I say we talk about this. We want everything done properly, legally. He say, if I do not like the way things are done, I can go. And you didn't argue with him? Of, yes, of course, yes. But then he say, maybe I should go anyway. Yeah, well, we'll see about that. There is nothing you can do about this. I can go and see him. No, no. And shame me, no. This is my business. I will sort it out myself. But what about your letter? You still need a letter from your employer. I will find a new job. I will find a new boss and ask him. We can't stop here all night. Yeah, I know, I know. Look, are they going to have to go in there and tell Beth that she's got all the wrong end of the stick or you'll just have to brass it out with Audrey? She forced me into this, you know. Beth? Audrey, if she hadn't been playing silly beggars, none of this would have happened. Yeah, well, it's all done now, mate. There's no sense in wondering what might have. Say no. Don't worry, I'm on my way. All right, I'll be. Now, we'll be in a minute, Tom, yes. All right, Tom, get out. Eh? I said, get out, we've got an appointment across the road. Oh, look, I, I don't feel like a drink tonight, love. Why don't you just jump in and I'll take you home? Oh, yes, that would suit you down to the ground, wouldn't it? Well, I'm afraid it won't do for me. It won't do at all. Hey, you're going to turn me cold. Yeah, I'll do more than that unless you take me across the road and tell that landlady she is not becoming the next mayor of Weatherfield. Oh, don't give me that butter wouldn't melt in my mouth, look, because I know all about your little shenanigans, I <sighs> Look, she misunderstood what I was saying. Yes. Well, you can just put her right then, can't you? I'm not having you walking around here with her on your arm like a Christmas tree. Audrey, be reasonable. Look, if she thinks I've asked her to do the job, what am I going to look like if I go in there and say it's all a mistake? Alf, now either you tell her or I go myself. And believe me, if I do, there's going to be nobody left in this street in any doubt as to why you got rid of that chauffeur. Getting serious? No, oh, don't have enough problems with that one already. Come on, be fair. He did try to get you that job. Yeah, well, I suppose he does have his moments. Fancy the bookies then, do you, kid? Well, that's if I did. There's no going. Excuse me a minute, Liz. Al, nice to see you. And Audrey, I'd heard you'd step down. 
Still, you'll have a drink on me, won't you? Oh, that's very kind. Uh, of you. No, we're not stopping actually, but Alf's just called in because he's summit to say to you. And I'm very glad he has, because I've got summit to say to Alf. I think I've solved your problem for you, Alf. Uh, yeah, yeah. Uh, you know, I think I got hold of the wrong end of the stick this morning, you know. <laughs> oh, no, I don't think so. We agreed on someone in the licence trade who gets on well with the general public, didn't we? Yes, but there's a bit more to it than that. You know. it's, it's a very demanding job is being Muresh, you know. I mean, I don't know how somebody in your position could, could manage it. You know? I mean, running a place like this. Me? <laughs> I wasn't talking about me. Well, you said somebody who worked here. Raquel. Oh, no, not Raquel. She wouldn't do at all. Betty. Betty! I've already asked her, and bless her, she's accepted. Only if you think I'll do, love. Well, you, what will you do? Of course you'll Absolutely ideal. It's a real honour, is this? Do you know, I hardly know what to say. <laughs> I don't think you're the only one, lovey. Come for your mayoress? I am, yes. Would you care to see if the mayoress is ready, Raquel? Oh, she is, yes. Swift half, will you wait in, gentlemen? Oh, yes, uh, thank no, you. No, no, we're better not. There'll be plenty when we get there. Yeah, where? Well, where's today's little ratepayers funded excursion to? The rugby club. We're opening a new bar and restaurant facility. Oh, well, that'll be a right excuse for a booze up then. <laughs> uh, where's Audrey? Why isn't she with you? Ah, well, it's uh, doctor's orders, really, you know. Uh, I mean, the stress and strain's beginning to show. Oh, now here we oh. are. Oh. Will I do? Will you do? You'll be a credit to me and to oh. Weatherfield. Here, here. She yeah. will, won't she? Oh, thanks very much for saying yeah. that. And Brian's got your chain. Ooh, oh, let's oh, see. Oh, oh. Chain as well. Oh. The thing I always say to a new mayoress, what I said to Mrs. Roberts when she assumed the role... Yeah, and unfortunately what, she can't be here today. Bad. Whatever the value of the gold in the chain, the most precious thing about it is the grace and dignity with which it's worn. Oh. Here, here to that as well. Oh. Yeah. And look how it suits. Good luck, Betty. Well, thanks very much. I'll do my best for you, Alf. I can't say more than that. Ah, no, you? you will, love. That's why I asked you to do me the honour. Oh. <laughs> right, shall we get off then? Yes. Bye. As long as no one's taken our taxi. Well, I hope Alf looks after it. He'll have to. Nobody can afford to lose two mayoresses in the same year. <laughs> Bye, love, thank you. <clears throat> now, what about you and your performance tonight? Are you still going through with it, pretending to be Curly's fiance? Well, I've got to. Girl, it'll be ever so let down if I don't. Besides, he stands to lose his job if they find out he's lied to them. What I've got to do is persuade myself just for tonight that I really am his fiance. I'm going to have to go, Reg. Go. <coughs> oh, you mean, we've only been here 20 minutes. We go... Yes, I know, but you know there's a limit to the amount of time I can leave my mother in the shop on her own, isn't there? Oh, is there? Yeah. Well, I only wish that had been stated as part of the wedding ceremony. Mm. I only wish it had gone down in paper. Then I might have realised what I was getting myself into. Well, nobody knew that at the time, did they? Oh, I'm going to have to go. Yes, of course you are, I'll right, see yes. you later. Probably, yes. Hey, you. I hope you're not falling out with your wife. I'm not licensed for that. Not really. It's just hard when you find him married to somebody who is kind and considerate and thoughtful. Well, when you wanted to be as selfish and thoughtless as what you are. Exactly. Hello? Hi. Hi. What, home early? Yeah, I got a lift. But listen, how are you? I am wonderful. <laughs> There's no need to put a brave face on for me, you know. No, this is not a brave face. This is genuine. I am genuinely wonderful. Well, I know that, but you're also genuinely out of work. Ah, but this is the West. This is the land of plenty, the land of opportunity. I think there's a few who might be surprised to hear that round here. No, I am joking. But seriously, I am not out of work. Not any longer. I have another job. Honest? Yes. Today after you leave, yeah. I go into Manchester, look around the restaurant, cafe, hotel. And one of them? A Spanish restaurant. Very nice. Better than the Casablanca. And they pay better than the Casablanca. No. Yes. I start there next week because they have a waiter leaving. So, 
That is why I am wonderful. Oh. Maybe our look's coming good at last. Thanks very much. See what's on at the pictures. Ah, well, I'm off to a ball tonight, so there. What, a real live... Uh... A real live annual newsagent's ball. So it's a quick wash behind the ears and best frock job. <laughs> well, good for you. Hope we have a really great time. Thank you. You never know. Could be your turn next. Mm. Bye. <laughs> See you. Well, I only hope Roger knows what he's letting himself in for. And what's that supposed to mean? <laughs> I mean, newsagents. They're hardly the type of people that he's used to. Are they not? I wouldn't have thought so, no. Oh, so do you think I'd better phone and cancel? Perhaps I could pretend to be poorly. What would you advise? Oh, far be it from me to advise you to do anything. But from what I know of Roger, he doesn't normally go in for riotous evenings. I know. I could get him to bring his easel. He could set it up at middle at floor and paint while we all dance around him. Do you think perhaps he might prefer that? I think he probably would, yeah. Do you know, you make me wish I'd invited Ken now. But then again, there are so many unattached men around, you just don't know who to choose. It's for this firm's Christmas party. Right. I'm going with this bloke I know is going to be working for them. Right. Your boyfriend? Oh, no, no. No, it's nothing like that. Ah. Is that we're supposed to be engaged? Supposed to be. A bit difficult to explain, really. Don't broadcast it, but I'm going to get some advice on what this place might be worth. Yeah, well, I don't know why you bother telling me. Because it's going to affect you, so I think you have a right to know, but no one else. Hi. Oh, hiya. Hiya. Not listen, I'm in a yeah. bit of a rush. Fiona, I'll speak to you. Uh, uh, excuse me, do you, do you mind if I just... Uh, no, no, no. Go on. Hiya. Curly, you're not supposed to see me like this. Yeah, I know, I'm sorry. It's just that Bet told me that you were in here and uh, I was just wondering, is it still okay for tonight? Well, yeah, if you still want me to do it. Oh, yeah, yeah, I do, yeah. I've been on the phone to Mr. Muir. Oh. He's one of our bosses. And he was telling me how everyone's looking forward to meeting you. Oh, they're not, are they? Yeah. So if I pick you up at 7 o'clock, is that okay? Yeah. Thanks. I'll see you later. Yeah. I'm uh, sorry to... Uh, no problem. That's your fiance then? Well, just for tonight. You don't believe in long engagements then? Oh, no. Oh, it's a joke, yeah. Well. <laughs> You're still not mad at me, are you? No. Having to go at lunchtime? No, of course not. <laughs> I can never be mad at you, my love. Sometimes a little impatient, but that's because I want to be with you. Not you always be here and me always be somewhere else. Well, I'll tell you what, I'll come home and say. Two hours? Two hours? Reg, I can't close up before the stated time. No, no, of course you can't. <laughs> right, well, I I'll just take myself down to the Rovers and I'll stand with all the other men against the bar, lonely, and uh, they'll probably have some stale rolls left over from lunchtime, so I won't starve. I'm sure you won't. No, no. Well, you get back to your mother, cos she can't, uh, can't manage on her own. So where's King Farouk taking himself up to, then? He's gone down the rovers. Gone to get himself something to eat. Well, something to drink along with it. I wouldn't have his liver for a gold clock. Oh, there you, you go, girls. Cheers. I've got to sit down with feet. Go on, grab that table, though. Looks like it's going to be me and you on our own tonight, love. Why? Where's everyone else? Night's off. Getting ready to be Curly's fiancé, Mayor Essin. Mm. Don't you worry. Any peculiar customers, I'll say to them. Yes, Reg. You have any food? Well, not on me, no. Hang on, there's a menu somewhere. Well, are you sure? I'm positive, love. Yeah, Brian oh. will take you home in the taxi. Oh. That's right, isn't it, Brian? Whatever you say, Mr Mayor. So, how did it go? Just as it should have done. I mean, we opened the place for them, and they gave us a marvellous spread, didn't they? Yeah, they did. It was lovely. You could have the chains back now, yes, please. Yes, you can, you? love. You enjoyed yourself, though, did you? Oh, yes. I was a bit nervous at first, you know, in case they were saying, who does she think she is all dolled up? But, oh, no. No, they were lovely, and they made us very welcome, didn't they? They did. Well, I'm very glad. <laughs> I'll just go and get my working clothes, and then we can get on. Uh, could I order now, Betty, please? No, Thank you. you. Hi, up. That's where you hide yourself, is it? Yes, we thought we'd come and witness your triumphal return. 
Well, yeah, well, it was a bit of a triumph, as a matter of fact. Yeah. Betty took to it like a duck to water. She really did me proud. <laughs> now, can I get either of you ladies a drink? No, thank you. Oh, no, no, I'm all right, thanks, Al. <laughs> Well, it must have been wonderful for her, actually. I mean, walking out with someone else's husband and a day off from cooking hot pot. <laughs> what? Could have been you. Oh, it could have been me, yes, if I was willing to trail about in rickety taxis and behave myself, as he termed it. Oh, did you not behave yourself when you were mayoress then? Yes! Uh -huh. well, even if I was tempted once or twice. <laughs> oh, Brian. You? you deserted me then? Well, I had to, Brian. I mean, it was the only way I could keep my hands off you. <laughs> Ready now. Uh, right, Betty. What about this one? Do you think she'll be able to keep her hands off me? Well, it depends if you're hoping she will or she won't. <laughs> what do you think? Oh! <laughs> Denise, we're off. Uh, hey, are you in a rush? Uh, not necessarily. Great. No. Fee, would you do us a favour and if over the road gets us a bottle of wine? You, you prefer red, don't you? Well, yeah, but... Yeah, bottle of red. Thanks. Don't mention it. What's this all about? I'm about to demonstrate to you that it is in your best interest to buy this shop. <laughs> buy this? <laughs> you must be joking. No, no, I'm not. Hey, sit down and don't worry. It's going to be painless. <laughs> Thank you, Andy. Uh, thank you. Oh, Rich, let me get you one. Got a can of Need something to take away the taste of that disgusting mess. Oh. Here we are. Not a great wine, but use it on a dirty oven. It'll bring it up a treat. Mm, thanks. <laughs> so what's all this booze in aid of, anyway? She's trying to sell the business to John, and this is supposed to soften him up. Ah. What, what, what's she selling it for? Told you. She's desperate to get away from Ken Barlow, but you haven't tell him that. Well, no intention of doing it. Feel sorry for him, but well, it's not to do with me, is it? There you go. Ta. No, okay. Hey, listen, you're uh, you're coming back though, aren't you? Why? What's in here that I'd like to come back for? No, oh, look at this face. Of course, I'll come back. See you later. See you later. Thank you. Yeah, yeah. Anyway, I'll see you in a bit. Is she ready? I'll give her a shout. Go. Smell that aftershave. You've been chasing women again. Not taking those pills the doctor gave you to help you control that sort of thing? I'm not chasing anybody. Mm. I'm here to collect Raquel. We're going to the Super Scooper Christmas party. Well, what harm has she done you? Ha, 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 ha. Very funny, Reg, yeah. Anyway, you're not working there yet, eh? No, no, I start on Monday, but tonight's a chance to meet some people. You know when you were trying to think yourself into believing you're engaged? Yeah. Will this help? But that's your... Engagement ring that Alec gave me. Yes, I know. Go on, put it on. It must have something about it. It convinced me I was really engaged to Alec. And looking back now, that seems like a minor miracle. Oh, Bet, it's lovely. Just promise me you'll enjoy yourself. So, you're not saying it's not a fair price? No. no, no. In fact, you're saying very little, aren't you? Well, I'm not getting much chance, am you I? You see, the real bonus of you buying this place as opposed to anybody else is you are already established here. That's a bonus. Yeah, well, you know and I know that most hairdressers don't like taking over somebody else's business because when the somebody else goes, they tend to take the business with them. Well, it can happen. But not in this case. Because most of the customers that were mine, well, they're yours already. Oh, we don't even have to announce that I'm leaving, you know, put up signs saying onto new management, you just carry on as you are. People won't even notice I'm not here anymore. It'll be the smoothest takeover in hairdressing history. <laughs> You're very persuasive. Hmm, have another drink.
absolutely fabulous. <laughs> I just don't know whether I can carry this off, you know. I mean, suppose somebody asks how long we've been in here. Six months. Six? All right. Three months. Six months. Whatever you want. And, uh, how did you propose to me? Right, uh, we were walking right. up this mountain. And when we got to the top of the mountain, I said, will you marry me? Which mountain? Right, forget about the mountain. There's no mountain. We were in a park, Weatherfield Park, by the bandstand. And was there a band? No, look, there wasn't a band on, no. There was, there was just some squirrels collecting nuts. Oh, and, um, uh, have we set a date for the wedding? No, no, there's no exact date. Sometime in the spring. Right. Sometime in the spring. Have a look. You look lovely. Right. Shall we go in then? Love. I might have to call you that, mightn't I? Oh, yeah. Of course. <laughs> Darling. <laughs> and this has got to be the new Weatherfield store manager there, Mr. Watts. And his beautiful wife to be. Come on, give me a big round of applause. I need time to think about it. Oh, come on. What's there to think about? Well? Yeah? What do you want? I don't want anything. I saw the lights are on. I wondered if anything was the matter. Well, it's not. Yeah, I can see it's not. In fact, I can see quite a lot now. Certainly more than I was able to see before. Oh, no. Look, I've got to go anyway. Um, we'll, we'll talk tomorrow. Excuse me. Uh. All right, well, I won't intrude any further. Oh, no, hang on, hang on. You're not going off thinking what you're thinking. Does it matter what I'm thinking? I have been talking to John about buying up this business which I wasn't going to tell you. But you would come barging in here, wouldn't you? So now you know. I'm selling up, moving away. Away from me? You can interpret it how you like. The point is, that is what we were doing in here. OK? I'm just sorry I seem to be driving you away, that's all. Yeah, and I'm sorry you've just driven away my prospective buyer. Good night, then. Good night. Damn! Oh, you have two careers, really, the uh, bar work and body. Well, yes. Yes, it must be very demanding. Suppose it is. Yes, well, but once you're married, what's your husband going to say about that? Well, uh, I'm not sure. Yes, it was about time we asked him. Now, you going to be happy with your wife out working all these long hours, Norman? Well, whatever makes her happy. Well, even if it means you doing the cooking. Even if... I am not marrying her so she can look after me. <laughs> so, uh, what are you marrying her for? So I can look after her. Ah! <laughs> it's a good answer. I like that. So, uh, when's the happy day going to be? Have you set a day? Well, wait, wait. Spring. Wait. Sometime in spring. And uh, is it going to be a church wedding then, or well, going to go to... yes, church. Uh, yes. yes. Okay, that's yes. it. Yes, we'll be a church wedding. One or two requests. This Fire, for flowers, the whole thing. Yes. Well, with a bride as lovely as this, uh, it'd be a shame if you didn't. Thank you. <laughs> yes. It would. I hope you're not expecting time off for honeymoon. Well, we'll have to have a look at his contract and see what that says, <laughs> eh? <laughs> and what about after the honeymoon, eh? Who's going to be bossing this house? You're going to have him tipping up his wages every week. <laughs> no, I, I think it'd be best if I give him mine. It's much better with money than me. Well, it's to be hoped so. <laughs> Otherwise, we'd be employing you and not him. Oh! <laughs> <laughs> anyway, it's been very nice to meet you. Oh, and you. Yes, you're a very lucky man. <laughs> Don't you let him forget that. Oh, no. 
think I'm the lucky one to have got here. Yes, well, I'm sure you'll both be very happy. Thank you. You'll be well. Well, if you'll excuse us. Yes, excuse me. There weren't only kidding, weren't there? They will give us time off for honeymoon. Well... Sammy has got himself a new job lined up. Good for you, love. Yes, I am very pleased. Well, it'll get you out of house, won't it? Give you a bit of time away from why? I don't want any time away from Deirdre. I want to be with her the rest of my life. It's a different culture, isn't it? Are these finished with folks? Uh, yes, thanks. Good stuff, folks. Right. Home sweet home. You know, I think it might all backfire on Rita. What might? Oh, all this she's laying on to impress Roger. Oh, I don't think she's trying to impress him, is she? She just wants the man's company. Have I been taking him to the newsagent's ball tonight? Yes. Well, he's not the type. I've tried to warn her, but she wouldn't listen. I mean, I can't see Roger being happy in a room full of newsagents. <laughs> well, no doubt you'll hear all about it tomorrow. Well, I don't know that I'm that interested. But if she insists on telling me, I'll have to listen, won't I? Won't have any choice. <laughs> I thought you were going to bed once. Yeah, I have, but I couldn't sleep. Well, how could I, thinking about you? How happy you are since you got rid of me as mayoress and got Betty Turpin instead. You're determined to make an argument out of it, aren't you? What did you say to people when they asked where I was? <laughs> they didn't. What, are you saying they didn't notice? Well, they thought Betty Turpin was me, did they? They thought I'd put on a few pounds. Yeah, well, one or two said something, yes. So? Well, I just said you were under the weather and Betty was standing in for you. Under the weather? What's that supposed to mean? You should be grateful I was making excuses for you. Well, I don't. I don't want you going around making excuses for me. Oh, you never enjoyed being murderous in the first place. I don't know what you're making all the fuss about. Well, she can do it for a week, and then I'll take over again. You will not, you know. Why not? I can't do that to the woman. Betty's been very good helping me out like this. Oh, so her feelings matter more than mine, do they? Yes. Do you know, you've changed since you had that chain round your neck. Have I? Yes, you've, you've become arrogant. Oh, <laughs> that's a new one. You've called me some stuff in the... That is a new one. It's got to your head, you know, Mr Mayor this, Mr Mayor that... You really think you're somebody? Well, maybe I am. Why? Did you prefer me when I was nobody? All right. If it's Betty Turpin you want, it's Betty Turpin you can have. Well, that's what I've been telling you. But just remember in the future, I mean, before you accuse me of anything, just remember it's you that wanted it like this, right? It should be me who's thanking you. No, honestly, I, w I was surprised how much I enjoyed it. <laughs> no, once I got into it. <laughs> so it wasn't so bad then, you being my fiancé? No. Good. Because for me, it was a dream come true. <laughs> Good night, Raquel. Night, Ellie. Um. Of course, it could all come true. We could get engaged. And we could get married. It's up to you. Good night. How was the do, Curly Chicken? Oh, I bet. 
Did you have a good time? Uh, yeah. Yeah, I think so, yeah. Aren't you sure, huh? Well, actually, it was, uh, it was pretty good. Actually, it was brilliant. Ah. Oh. Have, um, have you seen Raquel this morning? Briefly, just now. Is she all right? Yeah. She didn't, um, say anything. Maybe. Say anything? Ah, oh, look her in. About what? Don't it look smart? Uh, and it's your first day, isn't it? Are you excited? Yeah, just about, you know, if, um, she enjoyed herself or anything. Yeah, I, I saw you leaving, so I thought I'd pop out, you know, and wish you luck. Thank you, Vera. Yeah, we'll be thinking about you, won't we, eh? Yeah, of course we will. I was just thinking, you know, you're going to have to pass better by us, aren't you, to get to Super Scooper? I just thought we could slip back into our routine. And which routine is that, Vera? Is that the one where you pop your head out every morning and flatter me in the vain hope that I'll give you a lift to work? Well, if you're going to be like that, when folk are just trying to be neighbourly... Vera, all right. I'll give you a lift. Thanks. So, she didn't say anything about anything. Anything you have to say to Mrs. Betty, you can say in front of me. It is private. Already I say this. Ah, well, uh, me and Mrs. Betty, we don't have any we'll secrets, so... Uh... Don't go, Samir. Do you mind, Mr. Sugden? Right, well, I'll be standing by the counter if, you, if I'm needed. Sorry, I interrupt. What's the matter? Well, uh, it is difficult. Um, I, I, I make a bad situation now. No, no. You haven't. Please, sit down. You, you know I lose my job at the Casablanca? No. Yes. So, the money I owe you, I, I will pay it back. Only not as quick, maybe. Oh, I see. I will pay it back soon. I start another job soon, but uh, this week payment will be a bit late. So, I must apologize. Uh, and next week, maybe, as well. Oh, Deirdre knows there's no rush. I've, I've told him more than once. Yes, but for me, uh, I do not have debt. But I will pay back soon, you understand? Overworked. Underpaid. Let's take a chip from Uncle Steve. Yes, you do. Vaguely <laughs> for a chip. 12.25. Paid up for that. Oh, very good, son. Listen, tell me, doesn't tell me no more. Don't you think you should be tugging your forelock at Mr. Paul instead of throwing... Good money after bad in the horses, eh? Dad, please. Me and Mike were partners. Oh, oh, oh is that right? There's a Tommy, there's a Tommy no more. Does he know that? You're going to whack a tenner down on this one. <laughs> Risk a tenner on what? Nice. Did you get those order forms? Uh, no, I've just got to put around the You're court. not going anywhere. Now, come on, get those order forms off. I wanted them in the first collection, which you missed. Now, if you want to make the next one, you'd better hurry up, haven't you? Oh, I'll be a second. You're not going anywhere till you get those forms off. Now, come on. I'm trying to run a business here, not a community service. Dad, you won't wipe this belt. No, 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 no. I don't think that's very likely. No. I don't suppose you do. What is it? Vaguely furtive, Adolf. You suppose right. Now, come on inside. Come on. <laughs> I don't know. Yeah. Kids these days. I blame the parents. Right. You know, it's about everything. <laughs> you know as much as I do now. <laughs> right, then. Um, I've introduced you to everybody. Yeah, I think so, yes. More or less. Right. There you go, look. Hey, what do you think of them uniforms? Oh, um, they're very, uh, striking. My wife designed them. Oh, well, really? So she's artistic, then? No, not particularly. Uh, right, anyway, yours is in your office, which is where we're going now. My what? Your uniform. Uh, but they didn't say... Uh, I didn't know I had to wear a uniform. Oh, yeah. It's got your name emblazoned on it and everything. So it's very American, you know, big happy family, democracy on the shop floor, at least a semblance of it. Customers love it, apparently. No, you're all right, love. Don't you bother. We can cope. Yeah, and I'll see you later. All right, love. Tra. Tra now. That was Betty on the phone. She's not coming in. Why not? Oh, they've got this emergency due on. Some two-bit celebrities dropped out at the last minute, so they're having to wheel her and Alfin instead. It's going to be like this all the time now, isn't it? Eh? As if we're not short-staffed enough. Every time she wants a sky off, every time somebody wants some opening, they're unveiling their hands shook us. Get yourself round to the McDonald's. 
Ask Liz if she fancies earning herself a few quid helping us out with dinners. Right, boss. Right. Two minutes, Jacko. Raquel, stop gathering dust. Get yourself into that kitchen and start cutting up a few butties. Eh? When you've got five minutes. Oh, <laughs> sorry, I was miles away. I put your ring back in the jewellery box. Thanks for lending it to us. My pleasure, love. It was a lovely evening. We had a right good time. I'm glad we went. It was really quite... Ooh, romantic. Butties, love. So are you going to move in with him or what? Depends. Depends on if I've still got a job in this place, doesn't it? Well, I thought he could afford to take you away from all this. What? You think I want to be a kept woman? On your bike? <laughs> it's all going here, isn't it? Oh, yeah. Uh, have you got five minutes, John? Yeah, yeah, sorry. I was going to come up and see you. I'm just grabbing five minutes. We've been on the go all morning. No, no, no. I've been pushy. No, no, that's all right. Uh, I just wanted to sort out uh, things. I, I want to know what I'm doing. Have you had a chance to think over what we were talking about? Yeah. Yeah? And? It's too much of a financial commitment. I'm sorry. I mean, it's a great offer, but... Uh... It, I thought you were keen. Well, I was. Look, I'm sorry if I appeared over-enthusiastic. I was keen, but... I've had time to think about it, and, uh, well, it's just not feasible. Uh, are you sure? I mean, you'd be doing yourself a big favour here. The customers love you. It would pay for itself in no time. Listen, I'll bring the price down as far as I can. No. Denise, it... Well, it's not a question of money, entirely. Well, it is, uh, and it isn't. Look, uh... There's no point in going into the details. I am going to have to say no. Sorry. Good morning. Hiya, love. Oh, right. All hands on deck, is it? Jacko explained. Betty's whirlwind social diary. Yeah, it did. Uh, did you think about this when she took the job on? Well, it's all good publicity by the Rovers, isn't it? No, no, I didn't think about it. <laughs> Get yourself sorted out and stop asking awkward questions. Right. I Next time I have a bright idea about Betty's career, tell me to keep it to myself, will you? Yeah, all right. What's up? You know, last night... Yes? After we got back. Yes? Now, you haven't to laugh, cos it's not funny, cos at the time it's... Well, it seemed appropriate. You haven't been misbehaving again, have you? Oh, no, no. But it's all been a bit of a joke about me being his fiance and everything, but Curly's has asked me to marry him. We just got out of the taxi and we were stood in the street and he's very fond of me, you know, Bet. Yes, I know he is. Did you say yes? Oh no, because he didn't want an answer. I mean. We both had a bit to drink and everything. And, well, I could do a lot worse, couldn't I? Are you in love with him? Well, I was in love with him across the street, and look how far that got me. But, well, last night at the do, I suddenly realised how much I like Curly and how well I know him. And everybody was making a right fuss of us, and I thought... Well, I felt proud of him. Always a good man, Bet, and he'd never do anything underhand, or daft or unfeeling, and... Oh, he cares about me. He does. He doesn't even have to say anything. I can see it in his face. Why aren't we celebrating, then? I don't know. Sometimes... What? Well, sometimes... I feel sorry for him, and that's not good, is it, to feel like that about someone? Not if you were married to them, but... Well, it's not sorry, exactly. I'd... I can't explain, cos last night I, I really respected him, and I don't always. And Sometimes I feel like I'm stronger than he is. You, you know, me, and I'm as soft as hell. Oh, I don't know. 
Oh, I've said it all wrong now. What are you going to do, love? Well, I think I want to say yes, but I want to be sure. He'll be in tonight. Oh, Betty's so kind. You don't deserve lies or half-truths. If I do say yes, I want to be 100% sure. I don't know what I'd say if you come in tonight. I've only got half an hour, Maureen. I'd take you down to Rovers for our dinners and I will brook a no argument. Hey, your mother can look after the shop. <laughs> what are you doing? I'm in a bath. What's it look like? Well, where's Maureen? She's through there, clearing up the mess. What mess? Percy came in after a bottle of vinegar, only there weren't any on the shelves. So she goes through there, pulls down two dozen bottles on the floor and half of them smashed. Oh. And I'm the one that gets shouted at. Right, uh, Maureen! 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 What are you doing? Didn't you hear me? I just... Hey, what's on? Don't... Don't... Wow, well, son, what's the matter? This. All this. And you. Me? Everything. Maureen, how long is it? I can't cope. I just can't do it. Are you happy? It's all too much for me. It's all gone on top of me and I want to scream. You were right. I was wrong as ever. So you can sell your stupid shop and good riddance. All right? She sits there like the queen of sheep, but she swans in and out whenever she likes. See, she doesn't have any of these worries. I mean, once I've sorted one thing out, something else crops up. Yeah, well, I did try to warn I mean, I have a panic attack every time anybody mentions the words inland revenue. Yes, well, it's a minefield for the uninitiated. Don't I know it? But, I mean, I can't consult anybody, can I? I mean, I can't ask your advice, can I? What? Because all I ever get from you is, oh, why don't you pack it in, Maureen? Why don't you stop playing silly shops, Maureen? Hey, hey, I've never said that. Oh, but that's what you want to say, isn't it, when you come into the shop? And all I get is that emotional blackmail rubbish of, well, I've got to go down the rovers and have me tea again. Emotional blackmail? Yes, and I have to cope with that with all of this. Maureen, I mean, I... anybody else would have had a proper assistant by now, but no, not me. I still have to cope with my mother 24 hours a day. That's why it's not working. I just want to do something. I haven't done anything successful or, or important. And this, this was my one big chance. You have done it. You've proved you can do it. No, you yeah. have. You wanted me to fail. I didn't. I didn't want you to take the place on single-handed in the first place. Because I knew that's what it would amount to with your mother. I'm sorry. No, no, I'm sorry. I am. I'm sorry I've made you feel like this. The stuff I've been saying, I am, I'm sorry. But I just wanted us to be together more. I mean, damn it, we've not been married more than ten minutes. We hardly ever see each other. That's why I said the things I've been saying, Maureen. That's the reason. Oh, Reg, I'm so tired. I want us to be together, too. <sighs> Look, come on. Let's go and find a mop and bucket, eh? You're joking. Rob told me you owe me 20 quid. Uh -huh. Mike, blooming Baldwin, eh? What's up? Vaguely furtive, 12 25, eh, don't you? Lovely horse. Left him standing. Pint jack. Right. I could have had 50 quid on that. Story of my life, son. I was always going to back the winner. I couldn't get away from work, could I? Why don't you uh, open an account with us? How do you mean? Well, you're a good customer. I'm sure we can accommodate you. Then all it takes is a phone call. So I don't put any money down up front and just ring you up? Yeah. Well, I've been after your dinner and we'll uh, sort you out. There you go, what are you drinking? Do you Sorry, fancy yeah. working tonight? Yeah, I can do. Only I might be even more short stuff later on. I'm with you. 
May I help you, madam? Right. Just let I pop back, see how you're getting on. Ah, now I have Miss Deacon and uh, mm -hmm. Mr. Sorry. And Mr. Cooper, who I told them to make a feature of the dog food by the checker. What for? Well, I got the impression it wasn't selling very well. Oh, so of we... course it is. See, we don't need displays. We're not that kind of outfit. Oh. You know, we like the warehouse effect, cheap and cheerful. <laughs> okay. It's your supermarket chain, you see. Bit of advice. Give yourself time to get into the swing of things before you start mucking stuff about. Right, OK. I mean, it's not as if I'm against the initiative. I mean, it's what we pay you for, isn't it? But don't run before you can walk. It's a different kettle of fish to what you're used to. Takes time. Anyway, keep all the good work. Uh, there's just one, one more thing. What? It's about this, this uniform. I can't help getting the... Excuse me. Sorry. <clears throat> I can't help getting the feeling that it, well, undermines my status. Look, I've explained about you, the... No-one un... knows who I am. Well, they must be daft if they don't. Either that or else they can't read. No, I'm talking about the staff. They don't seem to respond to my authority. Well, that's up to you. Authority, you've either got it or you haven't. And you've got it. I knew that when I interviewed you. It doesn't matter what you're wearing. I mean, you could be wearing just your socks, Norman, and the staff would respond to your authority. I'm sure. <laughs> I can't see anybody give you the run around. I feel a prat. Yeah, but you're approachable. Bye bye. 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 Why? Look, I've told you, don't ask me why. I know, but you could make a really good go of this place. I don't want to. All right then. Don't do it for yourself, do it for me. <laughs> no. You want to see me in the doll, don't you? Someone else will buy it. I know, but they might not keep me on, and you would, wouldn't you? It doesn't arise. Don't you think you're missing a trick here? Yeah, I probably am. And it's not a question of money entirely. Look, let's just drop it, shall we? Oh, you're balmy. And you're nosy. Sorry. I'm sorry. Listen. The reason I can't... Well, the reason I don't want to is my wife. Well, my ex-wife. Everything I earn, all the money I make, she's after a cut. If I work harder, earn more money, she wants more money. Why should I slave away and give myself extra responsibility just so she can benefit from it? Because you'd benefit from it as well. Yeah, but there's not much incentive, is there? Especially when she lives with someone who earns more than I ever will. Probably. The less she gets from me, the happier I am. She's a greedy cow. Isn't that cutting your nose off to spite your face? Yes. Mrs. Deirdre Rashid? Yeah. We're from the immigration authorities. Can we come in? Thought I might get a goose for Christmas. What for? Might be a bit different. Mm. Certainly be different. So would a peacock or a swan or a bit of horse flesh. Yeah, but you can't buy them in better buys. Anyway, Nick doesn't like turkey. Oh, I see. Martin? Well, you know, I like turkey. Everyone else seems to like turkey. Just because Nicky doesn't have all got to fit in or get stuffed. I'm going home to make the tea. No, just tell me something, will you? Because I do want to know. Is this whole Christmas going to revolve around what little Lord Fauntleroy wants and doesn't want? I just thought it'd be different, that's all. Oh, yeah, of course you did. All right, forget it. I'll get turkey and we'll be eating it till Easter. Tea will be ready in half an hour. Yes, but you can't. You have to go Oh, what about your curly son, eh? So, how was your first day then, all right? Uh, it was very promising. Good stuff. What are you drinking, lad? Pint, please. <laughs> so, you've been uh, cracking the whip then, have you? <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> Flexing a bit of managerial muscle like Erlen? Yeah. Is uh, Raquel around? Uh, not that I know of, mate. Is she? Bet. You what, Cart? Raquel. Oh, it's a night off, love. So, she went to, to do a bit of shopping into town, then she'll go on to meet some of her mates. Only she said if you dropped in to tell you, she'd completely forgotten she'd arranged it. That's okay. Um, 
Did she say anything else? No, love. Hi, Curly. Hi. Why is it that women know exactly what turns you up the most? Can't you ask me something easier, like how to explain thermodynamics to you? Take on an assistant, if that's what you want. No, I want shut of it. No, somebody to do all the fetching and carrying. And then you can concentrate on the business side of things, you see. No, I, I feel as though I've had a huge weight lifted off me. Well, well just go in from nine till five. We can afford to take somebody on. No. Well, that way we, we, we won't lose out on our investment, you see. No, I won't shut of it. Ah, well, all right. But you haven't to feel that you've failed, Maureen. You haven't. Because you have had the odds stacked against you. Me and your mother. It isn't you that's failed, Maureen. It's me. Always barging in and laying down the law, making you feel as if you've had to prove yourself. I'm the one that's failed, Maureen. Not you. What are we going to tell my mother? Hey, Jack! Police! What? Outside what? number one! Well, where, where, where? Yeah, police! Well, what, what's going on? Well, I don't know. Outside of, uh, um, what's her name? Deirdre Barlow's, Rashida, whatever they call her. Well, what are they doing? Well, well I don't know. I was stood watching for a few minutes and then, well, they just went inside to plain clothes and a bobby. Well, they must be doing something, wasn't they? Yeah, but what, eh? Eh, they don't send two plain clothes for no other. I'm going back outside to watch. Are you coming? Well, I am with you, love it. No. Anything? Not yet. Do you know, I always knew we were a wrong one. You flaming lie. You always said what a nice lad you were. Well, they was there out there on the surface, but I could tell. Oh, come on, Vera, let's go in. I shut the door. I'm freezing to death out here. Jack? What? Jack? What? Clifford! <laughs> You're right, old Jack. Long time no see, eh? <laughs> Little Jackie. And Vera! <laughs> Clifford! Gosh! Have you or have you not been working at the Cafe Casablanca in Cattell Street? I've told you, we're married. We're not trying to hide anything. Can you answer the question? I don't see why we should. Look, I live here. This is my country. He's my husband. Can you answer the question? Well, I don't work there now. But you were working there. Sure. We never pretended he wasn't. We contacted the DSS so he could get his national insurance. We've done everything by the book. When were you working there? And what do you need him for? Standard procedure in this situation. You mean standard procedure? Nobody's going to try and run away. When were you working there? Uh, three months ago. Uh, since October, I work there. And now? We are married. Legally. I've got a certificate. You can check. I can show it to you. Right. You'll both be required to attend an official interview with the Special Enforcement Section. What? Why? At the airport. What are you talking about? What for? Look, I know what you're thinking. It's what everybody's thinking, but you're all wrong. This is unnecessary. You'll be contacted again regarding a date. What for? Should be sometime later this week. Why? Yes. Show yourself out. Why? Why? Am I talking double dutch here? Why? Sorry to disturb you. Look, hold on. Hold on! Still asleep. Snoring like the pig he is. Well, I thought last night he looked exhausted. Oh, I was, wasn't he? Exhausted. Exhausted as a newt. He was half cut when he rolled in here, and then he set about supping every flaming can of ale in the house. That man, Vera, that man upstairs that you call my brother. Well, he is your brother. He has always been a swine for drink. Well, he must run in family then, because you're not the same. I am not. I am nothing like our Clifford, I tell you. He was a swine to me when I was a kid. And... I used to have to wear all these cast-offs, you know. His old vest, shirt, trousers, and his shoes. Oh, oh shut up, morning man. Everybody wore cast-offs in them days. You weren't the only lad, you know, to have to wear his big brother's shoe. But he was known for his sweaty feet. He was famous for his Howard Clifford. He used me, you know. He used me as a guinea pig. How do you mean? Well. I used to run after his mates. Well, well, my mum used to make Clifford take me with him, you know. All right, tagging you know. out. Right. And what they were doing, like, you know, making a, a bridge over a canal with a, a plank and a piece of rope and a 
clothes prop, you know. I'd, I'd hear his voice then. Come here, our Jack. Let's see if this'll bear your weight. <laughs> it is not funny, Vera. Not funny. That was the first in our family to learn to swim a plane. It had to do, didn't it? And it was the same, everything they did. Come here, our Jack. Let's see if we can get you through this window. Come here, our Jack. Let's get you over this fence and run over that field. A flaming great dog got me that time. Do you know, I bet you were a right mardy pants. I was not. I was a gutsy little kid, me. The point being, the point being, Vera, I cannot stand our Clifford. Never could, never will. Look, everybody's got relatives that get on their nerves at times. I mean, look at me. I could strangle Prince Charles some oh, days. God, don't start that one. But you've got to make allowances, haven't you, when it's family? Your Clifford's all right. I've always liked him, me. You would, I. Uh... Right, you get off to work. I'll get shot of him. Oh, no, you won't. Anyway, it's my day off today. I'm not going. Listen, he's your brother, and we're going to do a decent thing by him. Ready? Yeah. The sooner we can offload this place, the happier I'll be. Mm, me too. Mind you, we shouldn't let it go for a song again in the morning. Mm. We must not throw away all our hard work. Mm. Well, who's hard work? Oh, well, you, my dear. I see us as one, you see. The two halves of one entity. Bubble. Oh, right. <laughs> we hardly ever see each other these days, and when we do... Oh, I know. You're thinking of last night, aren't you? Yeah. Very bitter experience. I mean, I close the bedroom door. I take you in my arms, and a voice shouts from downstairs. Are we not having our cocoa tonight, then? Eh? Well, it'd be better when we solved the shop, but that could be months. Mm, anyway. Reg, I don't want you to leave. Yes, well, duty calls, my darling. We must snatch our happiness on the wing as the birds. <sighs> Look, why don't you meet me for lunch? Oh, how can I? I wouldn't hear the last of it if I told my mother I was meeting you for an hour. No, no, tell her anything. Tell her it's no. business. The bank, cash and carry are both. Well, Reg... No, no, morning, morning. Say yes, because I will not take no for an answer. And... At 12.45, I shall be just round that corner in a taxi with the engine running, waiting for you, and with a rose <laughs> between my teeth. Red, you are an old romantic, aren't you? Yes, I am. So you must say yes, and you must be there. All right. Kiss me. Look, when people are your own flesh and blood, you make allowances, don't you? You don't see me calling Princess Margaret, do you? I don't like him, he doesn't like me, so what's he doing here after all these years, eh? Well, I don't know, Abner just wants to have a look at us. Uh, uh, I don't say no. <clears throat> I'm morning. <laughs> <laughs> Did you sleep well? Aye. Well, let's put it this way. I slept as well as I ever do these days, which is not much. Hey, yeah. listen, uh, what would you like to make you for your breakfast? Never mind breakfast. So much I want to know. Uh, what's that, our Jack? What are you doing here? What are you after? And when are you going? Oh, shut up, you, you misery. No, 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 Vera. The kid's right. You're entitled to ask our Jack, so I'm going to tell you. I'm here to put things right. Because I have been a bad brother to you. No, don't say nothing. I have been a bad brother to you. I know. There you are, you see, he admits it. And I'm here to put things right. I'm here to say I'm sorry. Because when a bloke knows he hasn't got long, well, he just wants to make amends for what he's done wrong in this life. Oh, look, you see, you can't say any fairer than that. What do you want to be? What, 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 what do you mean, when a bloke knows he hasn't got long? Well, I can bake and do, Will yeah. Will you what? shut up, woman? <laughs> Come on, what are you talking about? I've had my card marked, our kid. The doctors have told me straight. It's the old ticker, you see. It's in a bad way and there's nothing they can do about it. I've not got long. A few months, maybe. A year, top whack. <laughs> Could be tomorrow. Oh, heck. Oh. And that makes you think. It makes you think about the past, and it makes you think you've got to put things right while you've time. Will you shake hands, our kid? Yes, of course he will. I don't... I don't know what to say, our Clifford. <laughs> yeah, Jack. You don't have to say nothing. It just gives me a, a good feeling inside, having told you. <laughs> Come on. We don't make old bones, do we, us Douglas? <laughs> the old fella, he was no age, were he? Nah. And Grandad, you lot remember him. You were, what, three when he pegged out? <laughs> Fifty-one he were. So I don't kid myself. <laughs> 
And you'll be next hour, Jack. Oh, hello. Is Deirdre in? No, she has gone to work. Oh, yes, of course. Uh, well, uh, it doesn't matter. Please, come in. I have something I want to ask you. The thing is, I was rather hoping to clear the air with Deirdre. I got the impression last night that there was some sort of trouble. Oh, yes, we have trouble here last night. The immigration men come and the policeman. I saw them. They want to send me back where I come from. It is you? Sorry, I, I don't know what you mean. Well, I think somebody must tell the police about me, and I, and I ask, is it you? Perhaps because I could not pay their money back. No. That is a terrible thing to say. It, it really is. I wouldn't do any such thing, and I, I really don't know what I've ever done or said to you oh, to I'm make sorry. you think... I'm sorry. I don't know who to trust anymore. I, I don't know what I think anymore. Well, i better leave. I obviously shouldn't have come. Oh. Mm. 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 He doesn't spoke your appetite, then, Clifford. Aye. But I have to force myself, our kid. I mean, what was it they used to say in the old hanging days? The condemned man ate hearty breakfast. I mean, now that's me, the condemned man. Hey, listen. Leave the lad alone. Let him enjoy himself while he can. You get up to work. Aye. Time I weren't here. So I'll uh, say goodbye, then, Clifford. Right. Hey, listen, you work at that pub, don't you? The Rovers return, is it? Yeah. I'll drop in later when they're open. No, no there's no need to bother, because it's, it's, it's only... It's no just... bother, lad. Listen, I can still take a pint. I'll come in and have a bevy with you. Yeah, but... Won't there be somebody worrying you about you at home, like? At home? <laughs> That's a joke, I don't think. Wife's cleared off long since. Oh, so you got married then, in finish? Aye. Her name was Vera, same as yours. Did you hear that, Jack? Your Cliff married a Vera, no? Oh, oh. Yes, I heard, I heard, I heard. So I'll, uh, I'll be going. Hey, uh, would you like another egg, Cliff? I'd sooner have a fag, love, but you see, but I... Jack, leave your cigs before you... He's a miserable beggar. Never mind, love. I've got enough for both of us. Reg, are we being fair to Mother? Maureen, I don't want to hear another word about your mother. This lunch hour is for us, and we're not going to worry. Where are we going? You'll see, but I'll promise you this. An experience you'll never forget. Oh. I mean, I can't get over you being married to a Vera. I mean, it's amazing that, you know. Gives me a funny feeling. You know, there's another Vera Duckworth, like me, you know. She wasn't like you, love. Name only. Apart from that, she was nothing like you. Well, wasn't she? Totally yeah. different from you. She wasn't warm-hearted. She wasn't attractive. Still, he makes your bed, and they say you have to lie in it, right? Anyway, this sort of strange feeling came over me. Uh, when I knew that I hadn't got long, I, I wanted to see you. And our Jack, of course, because blood's thicker than water, isn't it? Um... Oh, aye. That's it, you see, the blood. <laughs> That's what it's all about, isn't it? I mean, I feel as if I can tell you, you know, being Jack's brother, family, I think there's something you're entitled to know about me. Oh, what? Well, my dad, before he died, he told me what his mother had told him before she died, that her father was King Edward the Seventh. Who? King Edward the Seventh, the one they named the potatoes after. Oh, hi, I'm, I'm with you now. Right. Well, it wasn't legal, you know, legitimate, like, because, uh, well, they never married. But it don't make any difference. I'm still royal blood. I just had to tell you, you know, you'd be my brother-in-law. You know, I'm so pleased that you've told me. Because all these years, I mean, well, I always wondered. I mean, I, I always knew that you were somehow, well, different. I mean, I could see you, but well, it was the, all those... And now you tell me. <laughs> I used to think, how the hell does a stupid prat like our Jack get a woman like that? Oh, 
<laughs> e menu, sir. Oh, Thank you, sir. Thanks very much. Oh, right. <clears throat> this is so exciting. Yes, I want you to be excited, my sweet. I mean, meeting in secret, coming to a posh place. I mean, it's like, it's like an assignation. <laughs> yeah, I'm glad you feel that. Cheers. Oh, cheers, yes. I don't know what to choose, you know, because, I mean, all of this is so nice. Well, then I suggest more, and you leave everything to me. Oh. Put yourself in my hands, so to speak. Oh. <laughs> Garcon. <clears throat> Sir, uh, the lady and myself will have smoked some sandwiches Ooh. for two, plus a bottle of champagne on ice, Ooh. if you will tell room service. Very good, sir. Thank you. Oh, thank you. Sir. Thank you. Room service. Oh, yes, that's 437, pal. All right. Rich, what's going on? What's happening? la da 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 dee a room awaits us, Maureen, booked by me this morning. Oh, Red, what's all this costing? <sighs> I'm a man in love, Maureen, a red-bloody man, not a penny-pinching clerk. Red, mm -hmm. this is all sort of illicit. <laughs> yes, I know. Exhilarating, don't you think? I certainly find it rousing, shall we? All right. <sighs> <sighs> Chip shop before it shuts. Jack? Yes? I'm taking Clifford to chip shop. You never something to eat? There's something to eat? While he's been stood at the bar, he's had two pies and pork scratchings. But I have to get something hot inside me. It's doctor's orders, that is. I can't see as it makes any odds what you eat now. Whether you eat it at all, come to that. Look, the doctor's told him he's got to eat what he fancies. Come on, Cliff. <laughs> uh, by the way, our kid, I don't know if you know, but there was a whole load of pigeons in your backyard. Don't worry, I got shut of them for you. I didn't know you had a brother. You've kept him a bit of a secret, haven't you? Betty, if it was your brother, you'd keep him as plain and secret and all. Oh. Um, yes. You see them two over there? Who? Oh, Fiona and I see. Aye. Well, uh, she came to work in Steve's car this morning. I think they uh, spent the night together last night, so I do. Do you know, you could go mastermind. No, oh, here, I specialise subject the crimes and misdemeanours of my son, Stephen. As a matter of fact, I think she's becoming a permanent fixture. You're joking. Well, he never said nothing to me. What did you want him to do? Ask your permission? Alma, you're not going away at Christmas, are you? Ah, I don't think so. I mean, Mike hasn't said anything about it to me. Well, I know I mentioned ages ago something about you and Mike coming round, but uh, can you forget it? Yes, of course I can, and I'm not offended. I know there are a lot of things you want to sort out in Nicky this Christmas. Yeah, well, there are. It's just going to be the family, and I'm hoping we're going to end up the way we used to be. What, with Nicky back home? Oh, Alma, I can't tell you how I miss him. I mean, I wake up in the mornings, and before I'm even properly awake, I'm miserable. Because he's not there. But this Christmas, I've got it all worked out. Good for you. Yeah. It's, uh, we're going to have a smashing day, all the family, and by the end of it, Martin and Nick are going to end up pals again. Yeah. Hiya! Oh, hi, Liz. Hey, listen, I'm glad I've seen you. I wondered if you fancied popping it Rovers tonight. Have a few drinks. Then, when I've finished work, you could come back to our house for a bite to eat. Thanks anyway, Liz, but I think we're stopping in tonight. Stopping in? How long is this honeymoon of yours going to last? What's up? We're in trouble with the immigration people. All oh, right. Mm -hmm. Back to the shop. Back to my mother. Mm -hmm. Down to Earth again. Yes, but with memories, Maureen. Oh. Memories of life on the planet Venus. Oh, Red. Mm -hmm. You're wonderful. Yes, mm. yes, I surprised myself as a matter of fact. <laughs> but they can't chuck him out, can they? Not now, now, now you're married. I don't think that matters as far as the home office are concerned. Oh, hello, Mother, I'm back. Oh, Mr Sutton. What are you doing behind the counter? Where's my mother gone? I'm here. I've 
off and making a pot of tea. And where have you been till this time? Did you know Mr Sugden was fiddling about behind the counter? Fiddling about? I beg your pardon. I was doing no such thing. Percy's been helping me, if you must know. And a very good help he's been too. Thank you very much, Mrs Grimes. We had a delivery. Spirits. I can't get bottles on them shelves, can I? Oh, I see. So you'd better say sorry to Percy. I apologise, Mr Sugden. Accepted. But I've still got a bone to pick with him. I really have. Living your mother here for hours on end Oh, it's herself. not her fault. It's that husband of hers. What do you mean? Well, if he was half a man, he'd see to things for you, wouldn't he? Instead of leaving it all to you. He's idle, you know. While she's rushing around, what's he doing with himself? Lying down on the job, as like as not. Cheers, Ken. Thanks, mate. Thanks, Andy. Bye. Boy, am I ready for this. Are you wrapped up? Oh, um... Fleming Nor is here again. Who? Oh, his brother. Uh, listen, I think I'll have a, a small sherry, and uh, is it a pint, clay? Aye, go on. Trust me, Arm. Uh, I'll get it. <laughs> uh, pleased to meet you. Oh. John Brennan. Ah. So you're Jack's brother, eh? Ah. Cliff by name, Cliff by nature. You never <laughs> told me you had a brother. I never told you about me, Veruca, neither, did I? <laughs> I've not spoken to Deirdre, you see, but from what her husband told me is... Can't tell you how strange that sounds, Emily. Sorry? Well, talking about Deirdre, hearing you say her husband, and it's not me you're talking about. Oh, yes, I, I see what you mean. But he is her husband. Yeah. And now, I gather, he stands to be deported. Yeah, maybe I should call, see if I can help in any way. Well, that was my impulse, but I think I was wrong. If Deirdre does want help, uh, I think we'd better wait till she asks for it. Hey, you were a nice-looking fella, him, you know, when you were a lad. Who's this? Cliff. Oh, you know, our Jack's brother. No, oh, why? When he first took me home, our Jack, I fancied him. But then he ended up with Jack, didn't he? You see, you're not the only one that can't get a decent fella. Thanks very much, Vera. Hey, you know what? He married a Vera, same as me. Makes you think, doesn't it? How do you mean? Well, I think he really wanted me, you know. That's why he got another Vera. Oh, why, well, he ain't come back to see our Jack. Never liked our Jack. No, it's me. <laughs> Maybe we should get a lawyer. Well, there is no point, Deirdre. The law is for money. We have no money. Oh, that might be what it's like in Morocco. But... Oh, it is like that everywhere. Here is no different. No, honestly. Oh, what's this letter? Oh, my mother, she write. It came this morning. You know, I write to her to tell her about the wedding. Tell her about it, you know. What does she say? Well, she... Is she angry with you? Angry no, with no, me? No, 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 she's not angry. She wish she could have seen me married, but uh, she sent her blessing. Oh, well, read me what she says. But it's like I say, you know. <laughs> she say she look forward to meeting my beautiful young English bride. Young? Did you tell her I was young? No, I... You did, didn't you? You wrote and told lies about me. What's the matter? Are you ashamed of me? Do I embarrass you or something? Deirdre! Oh, to hell with it. To hell with everything. Deirdre, all I say is that I love you. That is all. Just look at him. Smoking like a chimney, somebody else's fags. Swilling ale down in that somebody else has bought as if there's no tomorrow. Well, there is no tomorrow for him, is there? I'm beginning to wonder, V. You're a miserable beggar, you. It's your own brother living on borrowed time. We have only got his word for that. Yes, and you begrudge him a bit of pleasure. All as I'm trying to say, any normal, decent sort of bloke, if he was going to go, would want to go somewhere quiet, wouldn't he? His own home. Die in his own bed, not his brother's. Ah, Raquel! Look who I brought with me. My boss, Mr Muir. You remember Raquel, don't you, my fiancé? Who could forget? Hello again, Mr Muir. Oh, please, it's Jim. I got Norman here to bring me along to his local. Well, when he told me you'd be working behind the bar, I didn't give him much choice. If he wanted to keep his job. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> A pint, is it, then? Yeah, please. And the same for me, darling. Oh, right. Yeah. Don't oh, tell me the engagement's off. Have you chucked him off? Uh, uh, no, no, you haven't. Uh, have you, darling? Uh, well, so where's that big, beautiful engagement ring, then? Uh, um... The landlady. She gets very jealous, you see, so Raquel doesn't wear it while she's working, do you, darling? No. Cheers. Jim. Mm. Ah <laughs> you jammy beggar. <laughs> yeah, look, you get him in while I go pay a visit. Ah. 
Two pints, our kid, and whatever beer is having. Oh, ah, dear, Clifford, that's the first glimpse I've had of your money, that one for the road, is it? What do you mean, one for the road? Well, you'll have to be making tracks, won't you? Get the last bus back to Rotten's Door tonight. No, he's stopping tonight. In hey. fact, he's stopping for Christmas. I've invited him. So put your face straight. Yeah, you wouldn't have a fag, would you, Vida? Go on, then. Nice and quiet. Don't wake David. I'll be up in a couple of minutes. Hi, love. Hello. Uh, I've been thinking about Christmas. I've got all the drink organised. Uh, I've got lager for you and Don. Uh, a couple of dozen cans. All about Christmas. Right. And I was thinking about um, crackers. Do you think you could go into town and get some? You know, something with a bit of a toy in for the kids. I can't find anything I like around here. I thought you could go join your dinner hour. All right, I can do that. Yeah, what about getting this drink in? I'm going to be working Christmas dinner. I've been duty rostered for Christmas Day. Daytime shift. You can't be. Oh, you nip down to the hospital. Have a look at the duty list pinned on the wall. Ugh. You can't be, Martin. It's Christmas Day. Well, the world's not run for your convenience, Gail. People don't stop being ill and falling on the buses just because you want your Christmas dinner. <laughs> but you're a married man with three kids. They keep you off the duty roster Christmas Day. That is, if you want it to oh, be come kept on, Gail, off. It's not that simple, is it? This is deliberate, isn't it? Oh, it's so childish! Don't you care about your family? Me yeah. family? Well, that's a joke. What family? We stopped being a family when you decided Nicky was special oh, in a class of his own, crying. and I didn't count. How are you bearing up? Well, uh... I would be lying to say I'm not afraid. Oh, I have bought you only trouble. I should never have come here. Don't ever say that. You say for me not to work, but no, I have to be the large man. I'm always too proud, too foolish. You wanted to support yourself. There's no disgrace in that. There will be much disgrace when I'm in prison. For you, for me, for the family. You are not going to prison. That's daft talk. Anyway, I'll not let them. I won't. I won't let them. Morning. Morning. Do you want Denise? Uh, no, no, that's OK. Uh, I was just passing. I wondered if you made a decision yet about this place. Uh, it's tempting, but I've had to say no. It's personal reasons. Oh, right, fine. Thanks. It's still on the market, though, so you need to put the flags out. That's rather uncalled for. So is your communist snooping. Oh, you mean I'm not entitled to know if you're selling up and moving away God knows where? If and when I do go, I won't just vanish. I'll stay in touch. And what? An occasional postcard with a progress report? This is my flesh and blood we're talking about, not a pet poodle. We need some milk. Yeah, uh, it's all right. Ken was just leaving. Friends. Loving friends. We laughed. Talked. Spent time together. Made a child together. How the hell did we get to this? First arm, second arm. There you go, Tinkerbell. Perfect. I'm not very stupid. <laughs> All right, well, it's the same difference, isn't it? Yeah, very stupid. Same difference, though. One flap of those wings, you'll be airborne, won't you? Hey, can't up, really up, fly. and away! Can't you can't really fly. fly? Of course you can, cos them wings, you never know, you see. They might be magic. Might be magic. Have magic. Have magic, come on. I wouldn't bank on it. Go upstairs and wash your face. You've got jam all over it. Puts <sighs> no ice, you know. Excuse me? All this, uh, look what a smashing dad I am act. Oh, yeah. Sorry, I forgot. <laughs> I'm a lousy father, aren't I? That's why I booked this afternoon off months ago. So you go see her in a school play? And that's it, is it? Duty done? No, I flame you want to be there. I want to dig my neighbour in the ribs and I want to say, see that third little angel there from the left? That's my daughter. You cared about your kids. You'd be with them on Christmas Day, like normal fathers. Yeah, well, I'm not a normal father, am I? We've already established that, haven't we? I'll tell you what, I think I'll 
I'll get some toffees for Jack's missus while I'm here. You wouldn't happen to know what sort she favours, would you? Oh, is that Vera? Yeah. Well, she used to favour lemon sherbets when I ran this place, yeah. Oh, lemon I'll sherbets. Yeah. Oh, good. Uh, you yeah. serve your customer. Right. He's mayor in. Oh. There's not many can say they have a civic dignitary for Aaron Boy. <laughs> hey, you, know, you know something? You put me in mind of the Queen Mother. Only years younger, of course. You know, she was another one that could just command respect. And a good looker in a day and all. Put this on Jack Duckworth's slate for me, will you? No slates for Duckworth's. House rule. And that includes you. That'll be £3.50 in total. You know something? You're a hard woman, Duchess. And you're an even bigger scallywag than your brother. <laughs> Who's that? Victoria Hotel, love. It seems Maureen left her diary there yesterday lunchtime. All her business numbers in it. In the coffee shop, where it? No, they said that she left it in her room. Hello. Betty, let me in. Hi. These just come. There's a lovely one to all of us from Vicky. She's such a sweetheart. I feel terrible about last night. My boss commenting on the fact you didn't have the ring on. Well, we managed to fob him off. He didn't say anything, did he? No, no. It's just me. I'm not coping very well with all this pretense. Especially when I don't know where I stand. Well, you did say I could take as long as I like. You've hardly spoken two words to me since I asked you. You see, it's me. I've got this scenario in my head that the answer's no and you're just trying to find a way of breaking it to me gently. I tell you I won't keep you hanging on, but it, it's a big step and it needs thinking about. When I do get married, I, I want it to be for life. I find it very difficult uh, expressing myself. It, it's all there inside, but it just never comes out right. I'm not a stupid man. I read books. When I was a kid, I used to write poetry. <laughs> so why am I so useless when it comes to telling a woman how I really feel about her? I mean, other blokes manage it. You mean they're good at chat up lines? You're too genuine. I'm genuine and I'm tongue-tied. <laughs> Look, I just want you to know, I love you very much. And if you do decide to do me the honour of becoming my wife, I will do everything in my power to make you happy, that's all. I know. And I'd want to make you happy. That's why I need to be sure. So I'm still in with a the chance, then? Oh, okay. God. You always had a chance. Ta-da! My lady. Well, what's this, love? <laughs> Sweets for the sweet. Cast your mind back. Odeon Cinema, Saturday nights, bag of sherbet lemons, am I right? Oh, fancy you remembering. How could I forget the best-looking girl there? Oh. <laughs> oh, oh, nah. You, you wouldn't have a, a fag, would you, V? No, she wouldn't. By the way, it's only me called a V. Of course they have, love. But do you think you should, you know, in your condition? Oh, oh listen, loveless. All I want with the little time I've got left is the odd drag, the odd jar, and to be with family. That way the end will come easier. Uh, well, if there's all else you want, Cliff, you've only got to ask, haven't you, Jack? Oh, ignore him. I always do. Any bright ideas on how to stop Harry Dunn doing his annual routine at the knees up tonight? You have Mrs Nixon's undying gratitude. I'll declare the event tea total. <laughs> Still, it's some compensation for giving it a miss. You're not going? Not this year. <sighs> I'm strongly tempted to do likewise. I suppose your girlfriend doesn't feel much like socialising. She must be nearly due. Yeah, about three weeks. Thing is, we've split out. No. Afraid so. Must be something in the air. So of me and Keith. Oh, I'm sorry. It was on the cards. Still, lousy timing, eh? Just before Christmas. Is there ever a good time to break up? I take it it wasn't your choice then. It's okay if you don't want to talk about it. Oh, no, it's not that. No. It's just that it's also new. 
and it's still raw. I'm having a hard time adjusting. It's no wonder you can't face the staff, do you? Not on my own. So maybe uh, if we went together, I know it's a last minute invitation. That's hardly a date. Just two survivors clinging to the wreckage. Yeah, why not? You should put in an appearance. Give Mrs. Nixon something to gossip about. <laughs> not just Mrs. Nixon. I thought you were meant to go to the cash and carry yesterday. As it were out of stock of half the things. Right, once you're up a report off duty, I'll see you tonight, dearest. Yeah. You too, Mother. <laughs> You'll both be stopping in, then? Hmm? Oh, of course you will. I thought you might be planning to nip back to your love nest. Beg your pardon? In the hotel, where Maureen left her diary in the bedroom. I take it it was you she were with? Well, of course it was me. Oh. You must have more money than sense, the pair of you. Well, 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 it was a spare-of-the-moment thing. I mean, you know what an old romantic reg is, and then we have So why couldn't you have said? Why did you have to insult me intelligence with all them lies about banks and post offices and cash and carries? Sorry, Mother. Well, you'll not have to worry about thinking of tales to tell uh... in the future, because I'll not be there to tell them to. Nor be took advantage of. I'm handing in me notice. Oh, don't do that. No, I'll just leave it, Maury. Well, it's just as well. She'll have to pack it in anyway when we sell the shop. Oh. <laughs> you are? Hmm? Is this right? Yes. I'm afraid it is. And did you have to go blurting that out in your crass, insensitive manner? I mean, have you no feelings at all? Fine now, love. It's just, um, we've got a bit of a problem going on at the moment. Stupid, really. It's uh, nothing we can't sort out. Many. Even best of them can break your heart. I know I've had some. Oh, no, it's nothing like that. We've had our ups and downs, me and Sam here, but one thing that stayed rock solid is the way we feel about each other. So you reckon it's all worth it then, eh? Even with whatever it is you're going through now? I've had a lot of fellas let me down, Raquel. When you finally find one you can trust with your life, you walk to hell on burning coals rather than lose him. Oh, you'll not lose him. No, I won't. <laughs> Hey. I'm fine, I'm fine. I mean, you spoil them, Jack. You cuss at them. Mm. You pander to their every need, and what do you get? Insulted. Or neglected. Hey. Or both. Him. Hey. He's only got a cough. He's pathetic little cough. <coughs> she turns into Mother Teresa. Me, I could be on my last breath and wouldn't even get the sniff of an homemade dumpling. Hey. Mm. You know, I wanted to be a Jesuit priest once. Give all, Reggie. Yeah. Things so much worse. I wish I had a bit of all. Uh, Same again, Jack, please. Right, Listen to them. Me, me, me. Mm. Born selfish, a lot of them. Not quite a lot of them. Excuse me, Betsy. Yeah. Look, I know now's not the right time or place. To tell me the answer's no. There's never a right time or place for that. Look, it's OK. I understand. I just hope we can be pals and maybe... Look, will you just shut up a minute, girlie? It's not no. I'd be happy to marry you. If you're still prepared to put up with me and my dizzy ways. 
I love your dizzy ways. I, I love everything about you. In fact, I've loved you since the first moment I clapped eyes on you. It's not a wind-up, this, is it? No, I'm sorry, sorry. I forget I said that. It's just that, with me, it's always the other bloke that gets the girl. Well, not this time. No. Not this time. Right. Any of these any good? Uh, What's this for? I asked if we could borrow a tie off Jim. I have a tie. Yeah, I know. Only the one you wore for the wedding, though. And it is a bit on the colourful side, love. Now, this one used to be Andy's when he worked at Better Buys, uh. but nobody will know. <laughs> oh, yes, they will think I worked there as well and put me in prison for twice as long. Nobody's going to go to prison. You've not committed a crime. I fell in love. In your country, this is a crime. It isn't. It's just a load of stupid red tape. Look, I'm sure they'll come round once they know that you're properly married and it's not some sort of trick. I hope to God you're right. All right, if I get off now, is it? Oh, yes, Scoot. I mean, you don't want to miss the star's big entrance, <laughs> do you? And tell her her Auntie Alma would like her autograph. Oh, listen, one prima donna in the family is quite enough, thank you. Well, I thought things were settling down with you and Nicky. Oh, no, it's not my son. It's my husband now. He's decided he'd rather work over Christmas than be with us. Well, maybe he couldn't help it. Maybe he had no choice. They're all single. He's a married man with three kids. Don't tell me he couldn't have got the day off if he'd have tried. Can't it wait until tonight? Uh, no, no, it can't. Uh, tea? Fine. Uh, do you want anything with it? A, a bun? Maybe? I'll just get on with it, Kelly. Look, I've a shop full of punters back there. All right, uh, two teas, please, Alma. All right, I'll bring them on. Nothing wrong, is there? Nobody ill. It's about me and Raquel. Oh, I. I know I don't owe you anything. Neither of us owe you anything, but all the same, I wouldn't like you to hear this from someone else. Well, go on. I've asked her to marry me, and she said yes. Well, what can I say? Um, she's, she's a lovely gal. I know how you felt about her, Des. Yeah. Well, I forfeited any rights in that direction, didn't I? I also know that she'll never feel the same way about me as she felt about you. Never in a million years. Look, Kelly. She doesn't love me, Des. I've no illusions on that score. But I think she's fond of me. And I hope in time she'll grow to care for me the way I care for her. I think we can make a go of it. I'm sure you will. Yeah. Thanks. Well, be happy and take good care of her, mate. You can count on that. Just remember, there's nothing to be scared about. All we've got to do is tell the truth. The good guys always win, yes? I think you've been watching too many American TV shows, mister. <laughs> Let's hope the immigration watch the same ones. Yeah. So may I rush you to do Yes, this way, please. Can I go in with him? You'll be interviewed separately. My colleague will be along shortly. Wait here, please. Jack! Jack, guess what? Oh, I exist now, eh? What's this? She want a wardrobe moving or something. Oh, shut up, you daffle on mix. No, how do you fancy it? You and me working together? About as much as I'd fancy bungee jumping. Where? In corner shop. As old with Theron, lad. Forget it, Vera. That would even be worse than being hers. I heard that, Jacko, and think on. Nobody's indispensable, and you're more dispensable than most. No, not working for him, no running it. They're selling up. Are you sure you haven't got the wrong end of the stick? Down, Rover. If your missus sees that gleam in your eye, she'll have you neutered. Oh, me on groceries and you on wines and spirits. I mean, we've got the experience. It'd be worth going to see a bank manager. Give over, Vera. We'll never have his own shop, his own pub, his own now. To the folks, dog's bodies, that's what we are. And no, I haven't got a bag you can borrow. Here, I've got one, love. Do you know how you two came to have the same jeans? I'll never know. And we'll have two light heels and all. You first met Mr Rashid when you were in Agadir in July. Yes. And a few weeks later, he came over here on holiday at your invitation. We went through all this then. You must have it in your records. He arrived on a tourist visa. Yes, he was only intending to stay a couple of weeks. But he didn't go back. 
No. We decided to get married. Rather sudden, wasn't it? We love each other. We wanted to stay together. What's wrong with that? I suggest that you never intended to return to Morocco. No, you are wrong. Uh, I booked the flight. We, we come to the airport. But you didn't catch the plane. No. Why was that? Because you decided there were richer pickings here? Pickings? I, I'm sorry, I do not understand. You told me earlier you earned very little as a waiter in your own country. Uh, yes, I, but I managed, you know. But you to borrow the money to come here. Yes, I, I borrowed the money, but I will pay it back. And how did you intend to do that? By working illegally? Now you insult me. No, you make me out to be a bad man. I am an honest man, always. In my country, uh, Rashid have great respect. Then when you were caught out, you came up with this bright idea of a marriage of convenience. Now you insult my bride. No, no, I, I, I have married her because I love her. You thought of you an English wife that would automatically make you an English citizen. You say I it lie. It doesn't work like that. I do not lie. I, I tell you, again and again, I want to be with her. An older woman you've only known a couple of months. Lonely, divorced, answer to a prayer, eh? I will not listen to this. You make this sound ugly. You destroy what is good! It is you who are the wicked man! All right, that's enough. Calm down. Tell me, Samir, had you already decided to con your way into this country before you met her? Or did a light bulb go on and she turned up on her own at your hotel? I'm truly sorry, Mother. But I just have no business dropping it on you like that. I'm surprised you bothered telling me at all. I can't fan out with him, except as a pesky old nuisance he has to put up with. Hey, I say, is it right you're thinking of selling the shop? It is. And if Reg Oldsworth had his way, they'd chuck me in along with the rest of the fixtures and fittings. Ah, well... I see our Kenneth's wasted no time yes, with him uh, back yeah. in the field. So is it definitely all off between him and Denise, then? Well, I always had the feeling it was never really on. Well, it was on enough for her to get pregnant. In my day, that wasn't necessarily a sign of emotional involvement. <laughs> I don't suppose things have changed that much. Anyway, I, uh, I suggest something decent before we tackle Mrs M's breaded rum punch. As long as we'll be wagging enough as it is without us both staggering in their cave, I... Well, what the hell, we're not driving, and we both deserve a boost. All right, can I have, uh... Congratulations. He's a very lucky lad. Who told you? Your fiancé did. Fiancé? But what's this fiancé like? Oh, sorry, I assume... No, no. We were going to announce it when Curly got back from work. You little sly boots. You've gone and said yes and never told your Auntie Elizabeth. <laughs> well, I suddenly realised that I'd be a fool to turn down one of the few men in a million you can trust. Oh, congratulations. congratulations. Well done. Oh, oh, well, it's wonderful. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Mrs Rashid. That'll be all for now. I can go. That's right. And what about my husband? We'll be holding him in custody for a few days while we make further inquiries. Shouldn't we be making a move? <laughs> Shame to waste this. No, we'll arrive just as Harry's finishing up his last verse of the anyway, time. Anyway, will do me good. I'll be a lot... Hello, Ken. You remember Gillian? Hi. Gillian. Anyway, you only asked me out because I'm a cheap date. Just you wait till I get back on the champagne. I'm sorry, I, uh, I didn't think she'd be coming in. She's not been going out lately. I don't like being used to pawn in someone else's game, Ken. You don't think that I set this up? Right, well, um, we'd better go. Yeah, cheers. Hurts a bit, does it? Only that she's slim and young and fit. Yeah, of course it flaming hurts. All right, I'm being unreasonable. I am unreasonable. Oh, but I won't give her double gin. Here he is, the man of the moment. You're a very lucky lad, girlie, because she is a little gin. Oh, I'm really thrilled. Right. I hope you'll both be very happy. Right, now they're both here. Let's crack the bubbly up. Yeah. <laughs> I'm sorry Des came in and blew it. He thought they all knew. It's all right. I told Des it uh, this afternoon. I thought it was a decent thing to do. But you think I'm dead soft now, don't you? No. I think you're a lovely, thoughtful, considerate man, and I'm a very lucky girl.
Hey, so what mood's the ladyship in this morning, then? Shh. <laughs> Never mind, shh. I take it she's still playing silly baggage? She's really upset, if that's what you mean. You really hurt her feelings, you know, Reg. Hmm. Well, all right. Perhaps I wasn't as diplomatic as I might have been. Still doesn't alter the fact, does it, that we're back in the dip? Yes, but that could be months before we find a... Hey! Oh, you don't think I'm going to cope on my own until that... No, no, we will get a girl in one with oh, plenty of them around. That's going to make her feel really unwanted, isn't it? Oh, Maureen, can you just see you're playing into her hands? She's just enjoying a moment of power, that's all. She says that we have made a convenience of her. Convi yes. <laughs> Queen being round in the back room. Yeah. Treating all the local wrinklers to free fig rolls at our expense. Who's making a convenience of whom? That's oh, Reg, that's for. unfair. Mother's worked really hard on our behalf. Yes, yes. Yes, when it suited her. Eh? I promise you this, my sweet. Once she has finished uh, making a sweat for an hour or two, she will trundle along as per don't, oh. don't you fret, right? Now then, let's bring you that delicious whiskey marmalade around her as the old dragon polish all that lot of and all. It's me half day and I want to... Are you not dressed yet? No, I'm not feeling very well, Vee. No, you don't look so grand, have you? Ain't your husband looking after you? No, he's gone to see a friend. Oh, aye. Hey, what's happened? Where Thank are you, Vera. Are Make you me trying? excuses for me, will you? Oh, Thanks right. very much. Bye-bye. Oh. It were on the cards. I don't know why she's been so flaming secretive. Hey? Well, it's only gone and left her. The other lad. Has she said? On her own. Eyes red with crying. Liz MacDonald coming round, crack her door, asking where he is. You don't have to be Mr. Morse to, to work that out. Vera? You still here, Chuck? Oh, I'm just on my way. Well, I'll walk you to bus stop. If I don't get some fresh air in my lungs first thing, I'm useless. Oh. But listen, are you sure that you, you're well wrapped up? Cos I tell you what. I need my thermals on me, cos that wind, it goes right through you at the bus stop. Ah, well, in the old days, I'd give you a lift in me Merc. Oh, have you got a car? Uh, I did have. Automatic power steer in the lot. Well, what happened to it? Well, I got rid of it. Doesn't do to go screaming about the country in a high-powered motor in my condition, does it? Mm, what a shame. Oh, well, it's the same as I had to sell the timeshare. Well, you can't go jetting off to the Costa Brava with a dicky ticker now, can you? When I finally pop me clogs, I want to be on good old terra firma in the bosom of me family. Aww. <laughs> They've kept him there. They won't let him go. Why, for heaven's sake? They said he got stroppy, but I don't believe it. They want to ask him a few more questions when he calms down, but can you blame him for getting upset? So what are you going to do? Oh, go down there and drag him out. I don't know. What can I do? It won't help if I go and make a scene. They've got to let him go. He'll be home soon. They can't keep him there indefinitely. No, no, of course they can't. On the other hand, they could have him bundled on a plane back to Morocco now, for all I know. Oh, they wouldn't do that. But what's to stop them? They've already made the point he's not a UK citizen. Oh, I'd be more used going down to the Citizens Advice Bureau when they open, see what they can come up with. Oh, love. Uh, you could have done without this, eh? Never mind about me. What about him, poor lad? Sitting there, not knowing what the heck's gonna happen to him. It's a nightmare. And what's he done? Gone out to work to earn a few lousy quid so he doesn't have to sponge off his wife. Is that such a terrible crime? And another good thing about being Mrs. Watts is I still have the same initials, R.W. Very handy. Now you won't need to chuck all your monogram tea towels away. Oh, it's a funny word, isn't it, missus? What's funny about it? I'd sooner have Spanish, senora. I quite fancy myself a senora, girl, do I? Oh. <laughs> a French. Madame Watts. Mind you, I always thought I'd be Mrs Lynch for life, me. Did you not want to get married? I wasn't against it. I mean, she'll <laughs> tell you. But it was never my number one priority. Oh, oh it was mine. Oh, I know I used to crack on about being this dead ambitious person what wanted to be a top model, but, uh, well, that was until... The... But, you see, inside me, there was always this other person saying, you don't really want to be mixing with the Cindy's and the Naomi's or the rock star set. What you really want is a nice little home and a lovely husband and two smashing little kitties. Mm. 
Little boy called Blake and little girl called Candice. Oh, have I told you? <laughs> Once or twice, love. Well, I've changed my mind since then, because oh. I think Holly would be a pretty name for a girl and for a boy. Hey, I hope you're not. No! Oh, Bert. Well, you see, that's another good thing about me and Girlie, that we started off as friends. It's when you start off being madly in love that there's nowhere to go but down. But you see, with us two, we've got this solid foundation to build on, so... Right, well, um, let's go and ring my mum and dad, tell them the good news. Oh, the tickle pink, love. Well, my mum will be, but, uh, well, my dad's not spoke to me since he threw me out over them stupid photos. But... Hey, that's another good thing, you see. It's bound to make up when he sees I'm engaged to a really lovely lad like girl. <laughs> Seems like her last full of good things, then. Oh, let's hope so, Betty. Uh... Let's hope so. There you are, darling. Thank you. Hiya. Right, yeah. All right. Uh, Gail's just rang. She's still out on a shopping marathon, so... Oh, yeah, you know, I told her them kids would be just as happy with burgers and chips. I mean, never mind her being stood there all morning, stuffing a turkey that's bigger than what she is. And burgers? What sort of a Christmas dinner would that be? Well, the sort for a busy mother who's got it all to do on her oh, own. Oh, I'm looking after sick people, you know. I'm not sat there all day with my feet up watching James Bond, you know. So, if you need any help, I've got an hour. No, no, it's all right. I'll manage. I always have. <laughs> Looks like you're in somebody's bad books. Uh, looks like I'm in everybody's bad books lately. Not mine. Go on, sit down. You can have half my tea. Oh, that's the best you've I've had all week, Maud. So, what are you doing sitting here on your toad, any road? Reg Oldsworth is putting the shop up for sale. No. You know, is that place jinx or something? You know how I heard? Huh? She'll have to pack up when Miss Alice says to Maury, no. pulling his face. You know how he does. Right in front of me, this is. Like I was a sack of flour, not a person. All I've ever wanted was a bit of appreciation. Well, it was bound to occur, but I didn't think it'd be this quick. What's that, Mr Sugden? That young foreigner Deidre got herself wed to, well, uh, he's left her. Shortbread, I hope you haven't been too heavy-handed with the butter. Oh, no. But the last lot you made was a bit on Greasy's side. Oh, he's done a bunk. I wouldn't be surprised he hadn't taken every penny she's got while he was at it. Oh, that poor girl. As if she's not been through in, though. At least your conscience is clear, Mrs Bishop. You did warn her. Oh, I take no comfort from that. Well, no, no, she's got my sympathy and all, make no mistake. I mean, she's a grand lass when she's not having her head turned. And tell her, if there's anything I can do, Percy Sugden's a man. I shan't be calling in, Mr Sugden, much as I grieve for her. Much as I miss her. But he was a stumbling block. You can be pals again now he's gone. If I go rushing round there, it would only look like I've come to say, I told you so. Well, you did. And she done well to take notice of you, you know. Maybe so, Mr Sugden. But from my own experience, that's the very last thing people want to hear. When they've been let down by someone they love. <laughs> I'll just have a quick cuppa and then we'll go. Go where? Look, I said last week, I said, first time we have afternoon off together, we'll go in town and get our Tommy's Christmas present. You don't need me for that, woman. Well, I can't lug a toy car home on my own. Put, put it in his shopping bag, then. Not a flipping dinky toy, no. A proper one that you can sit in and peddle. <laughs> hey, did you know that your Clifford used to have a Mercedes? Oh, yes. He, he most likely got it off the same block I got my Lamborghini. And a timeshare in Spain. You know, tell them about three air flights. You know, I, I wouldn't mind Christmas in the sun. Used to have, as I said, cloth ears. Probably had to get rid of them, you know, when they told him that he hadn't got long to go. Mm. How come he's never mentioned it, then? <sighs> well, perhaps he thought, you know, we might think he was wanking. So all of a sudden, he's, he's, he's lost his modesty, has he? Well, he just come out with it. Yeah. Didn't make a big thing of it. Mind you, he always would have crafted a little gift when it comes to doing a deal. Do you know, in one soul, the same white rat to three different lads. He got a right belting, but he come out with seven and six profit. Well, he obviously had a business set on his shoulders, unlike some. Come on, get yourself upstairs, get a clean shirt on. Come in town with me. I mean, looking like that, I could sit you on the pavement with a cap in your hand. They'd be throwing pennies at you. Go on. There you go, pal. Thank you, Reggie. Here, much longer, my love. You 
Want me to get indigestion as well as varicose veins? Shall I have to be off too sweet? Budget meetings, waiter, thorn, or man? But you've only been here 20 minutes. <laughs> so you do miss her then, when she's not here? I beg your pardon? Mother-in-law. No, 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 we've uh, given her the day off. We like to be considerate, because she is getting on in years. No, 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 Reggie. You elbowed her. I've seen her in the calf this morning. In the calf? Mm. Did you hear that? She's in there, stuffing her face with cream buns while you run off your feet. I don't know what melodrama she's been feeding you, but Mrs Grimes resigned of her own free will. No, 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 Reg. She's a very old lady, and all she wanted to feel was that she mattered. I hope you can sleep at night. <laughs> See ya. Hey, hmm? you'll just have to apologise to her when you get... I mean, I mean, a proper apology, not your silly right. smirk. Well, will. Oh, hello, did. Pocket, pocket tissues, please, Marie. Right. Yeah, I'm fine. Oh, ow. Oh, can I have a word? Yeah, yeah. Only, um, we're having a spot of bother. Yes, I had heard. Well, I just wondered if you knew of anybody who could help, you know, if you got any contacts. Well, or... no, not really, though. I mean, it's not in my jurisdiction, that, you know. Oh. Well, not to worry. I was just on my way to the immigration aid, anyway, see if they can come up with anything that makes sense. Well, I'd go with you, love, but I've got this meeting. And... Yeah, don't worry, Alf. Like I said, I was going to go on my own anyway. Liz is working. Not that she's too keen on getting involved, either. Well, how about Emily? Oh, if only. I'd give anything for a dose of Emily's lovely, warm common sense right now. Well, why don't you go around and tell her so? I never did understand the gist of why you two fell out. We didn't. She just made it very clear that if Samir and me got married, we couldn't be on the same footing in the future. Well, she must have her reasons. She did. She didn't approve. Oh, Alf. I'd give anything to knock on her front door right now. And she'd sit me down and talk to me like my mum and my best friend all rolled into one. Like she did when me and Ken split up, when Tracy left home. I need a mum right now. And this Blanche still not... I couldn't burden her with this. <laughs> Good job I bought these, isn't it? And there we are. Oh, thanks. Your lady friend not lunching with you today, then? From anyone else, I'd take that as a joke and particularly poor taste. Sorry? Oh, come on, Alma. You don't know the way things are with me and Denise. Everybody else does. Well, I wasn't talking about you and Denise. I was talking about the young woman you brought in the Rovers last night. Ah, Gillian. Right, well, she teaches PE. We're colleagues. We were both at a loose end, so we went to the annual staff knees up together. And no, we're not having a raving affair. Any more questions? I was just hoping you might have found somebody nice to share your mince pie with over the holidays, that's all. Off with the old and on with the new, all in the space of a few days. You've certainly got a high opinion of me. Hey, come on, don't be so touchy. It's me you're talking to, you know, not my husband. Look, I know it hurts, but you just have got to start getting on with your life again. Like Deirdre has, you mean? Oh, come on, don't be like that. You ought to be feeling sorry for her. Samir's been taken into custody. What for? Well, according to Sally Webster, he could get chucked out of the country for working illegally. I mean, the poor girl's going out of her mind. Well, at least we've got that in common, my ex and me. Lousy Christmas all round. Is that all you've got to say? Well, what do you want me to say? I made enough of a mess of my own rotten life as it is without interfering with hers. Any luck? Oh, the CAB sent me to the immigration aid unit. The man there was very helpful, but... Oh, well, that's hopeful then, yeah? In the end, it's all down to the Home Office. And who knows what they think? What do they call them? Faceless mandarins. I've got an appointment with our MP and with the Moroccan consulate, but I don't know if they'll be able to do anything. I even asked Alf, but of course, Mr. Mayor can't be seen to be helping law breaking immigrants. Is that what you said? Well, he gave me a lot of waffle about it being outside his jurisdiction, but I got the message. I do hate to see you both going through this. Mm. But, Deirdre, I think you've got to face it. You've had nothing but bother since the day you met. That's not true. I'm happier than I've been in years. Well, yeah, in between all the emotional hoops. They were worth it. But for how long? What are you getting at, Liz? Well, maybe you should look at it from his point of view. Are you doing him any favours by battling to keep him here? You mean I'd be better off without him? Just cut my losses and wave ta-ta? No, that's not what I mean. 
Well, say you do win. What then? Ain't he gonna feel he's only in this country under sufferance? You know what this pride's like. Deirdre, what's that gonna do to your marriage? I can do without this. Look, all I'm saying is it just might be better all round if he does go back, for the time being. Look, Liz, I think you'd better leave before we fall out altogether. Deirdre, you've got to be realistic. You're right. I'll go. I was lying flat on my back underneath this rusty old van with oil pouring all over me. And I thought, what am I doing here? Enjoying myself when poor old Sal stuck at home with her feet up, eating packets of chalky biscuits. So... Hi, this is the first minute I've sat down all day. <laughs> it is. I've done a pile of washing, I've done all the ironing. I've made a soup, there's a stew in the oven. Okay, I'll get the picture. And it's not a whole packet of biscuits. No, it's not now, Gutsy. You're going to end up borrowing frocks off Betty Turpin if you're not careful. Hey, yeah. the only greedy guts in this family is your youngest daughter, and I have to keep my strength uh, up somehow. Mm, I don't know. A mother of two. You know, there's some girls in the Rovers at dinner time, not one of them a day over 18. And you still not spots off them all. I'll oh, see so you wear them all up then, don't <laughs> oh, you? Oh, yeah, just to uh, remind me how lucky I am. <laughs> yeah, we're all lucky, aren't we, Kev? Mm. Keep thinking about Deirdre and some here. Ah, oh, they'll get it sorted, won't they? Oh, no, but they've only been married for a few weeks. It will be horrible if they get split up. Oh, Ken, there you are. I've been ringing your bell. I thought you'd be back by now. Uh, there is. Oh. Anyway, um, I've got a problem. Well, we've got a problem, me and Samir. Yeah, I heard. Oh, never lets you down, does it? Good old grapevine. Anyway, I, I just wondered if you had any bright ideas. I mean, you must have come across cases like this when you were on the recorder. Well, uh, plenty of stories of undesirables sneaking in to scound off the welfare state. But Samir isn't like that. I know, I'm just pointing out that officialdom isn't automatically the enemy. You know, they've got a job to do on our behalf. I mean, we're the first to moan, aren't we, about foreigners living off the British taxpayer or taking their job? Thanks, Ken. That's really helpful. Uh, look, uh, have you thought about the immigration aid people? They say you'll probably be asked to leave. He's conscious of it, then? I've got an appointment with them tomorrow and with our MP. You seem to have everything pretty well covered. But it's all so vague. It's all ifs and maybes. Well, see a solicitor to get the legal point of view. Apart from that, well, can't think of anything else. You mean it's not your problem? No, I mean I can't think of anything else. Though, actually, uh, it isn't, is it? My problem. Thanks, Ken. Sorry to have bothered you. So there's still plenty of cash in the old scrap metal lark, is there, Cliff? There is, if you have the right contacts. <coughs> Such as them who were not fussed about nicking lead off church roofs. I resemble that remark, our kid. Yeah. You never was fussy about the legal side, was you? Dodgy duck, what they used to call you, you know? <laughs> well, I were a kid, I knew no better. Lepers don't change the spots, Cliff. Oh. Well, in that case, if I were to mention, hypothetical like, that I had a few grand stashed away somewhere, then you wouldn't be interested in picking up your share of the loot when the time came, uh, being a member of the family and all? How hypothetical are we talking, Clifford? All got us little secrets, Jack. Oh, come on, Cliff. You're just playing games, aren't you? Showing off to Vera. You've never had a Mercedes or a timeshare. Go on, admit it. Go on. <laughs> Where are you going now? I'm going to my room. My chest is paining me something chronic. Emily, come on in. Oh, I've been wanting to call all day, but I didn't know if I'd be welcome. Oh, you're more than welcome. I couldn't be more delighted. I take it you've heard. I'm so sorry. 
I know I was against the marriage, but I never wanted it to end like this. Oh, this is not the end. No way. But if he's run off... Who told you that? I heard something to that effect. Vera, I might have known. I could see her little mind ticking away this morning. Then she got it wrong. Samir's not here because he's being held by immigration. They think he married me to stay in the country. I see. But I'm going to fight it. Every flaming step of the way. Even without the support of them, I thought I could count on. Not you. I mean, Liz, Ken, Alf. I'm sure they all have your interests at heart. Yeah, well, they've got a funny way of showing it, letting me down when I need them the most. Perhaps they think that it would be in your best interests if Samir went back to Morocco. You've not come here to help either, have you? I... You're only here because you thought he'd gone. How stupid can I get? I'm sorry. Oh, Emily, please don't go. There's nothing I can do. You could try being on my side. It's because I'm on your side that I can't support you in this. But, Emily, you're all I've got. My mum's ill. Tracy's totally anti. Ken doesn't want to know. I mean, why, for God's sake? Just because he's younger? So much younger. That's not a reason. I love him. He loves me. I've always tried to be honest with you, however much it hurts. Oh, what's a bit more pain when you're already in agony? I overlooked the fact of you lying to me when you borrowed the money to bring him over. I hated doing that. I was desperate. It didn't matter. Not then. I was... Pleased to see you happy for a change. But I thought you'd have a nice couple of weeks together. He'd go back where he belongs and that'd be that. Yeah, well, I'm sorry I disappointed you. When it turned serious, I tried to warn you that you were heading for trouble. You're not God. What right have you got to make that kind of judgment? No rights. Only my own instincts. And my deep and very real concern for your happiness, though I know you find that hard to believe right now. Yeah, well, people always say they're doing things for your own good, when really all they're doing is sticking the boot in. But what might ever my misgivings, I certainly didn't stoop to shopping him to the authorities. Who said that? Your husband. When? I didn't know. It was a few days ago. Well, he never told me. I don't suppose he would. Oh, Emily. He didn't really think you'd done it. He was devastated. He wasn't thinking straight. Oh, Emily, please. I'm begging you. Besides, it's not just your friendship I need. More money. Well, there'll be a solicitor, maybe even a barrister, whatever it takes. Oh, please don't ask me. I'll only have to say no. Why? Just give me one good reason. If someone you loved wanted to throw themselves off Beachy Head, would you lend them the train fare That's to get there? That's a ridiculous there? comparison. You're asking me to help you do something that could well wreck your life. Why are you so prejudiced against him? What's he ever done to you? He's a child. He'll probably make someone a very good husband one day, but not you. Let him go, Deirdre, for his sake, as well as yours. I know what this is. You're jealous. Yes, jealous. Because you lost Bernard, and I've still got someone to love. Samia? Oh, Samia. More cards, Mr. Sugden? Just the one from Germany. Klaus? Hi. Leather start work. Of course, Germans invented Christmas, you know. Trees and what have you. Yes, so I understand. Right. Let's see now then. We've got to... 24, same as last year. We should do better this time. I think we're old one or two. One doesn't always give, expecting to receive, Mr. Sugden. I'm not talking about giving and receiving. I'm talking about spreading goodwill. That's what it's all in need of. I know. You're right. I notice we've not had one from Mrs. Rashid. 
Now, she's usually very, very prompt with her Christmas cards. Still, she's probably got other things on her mind. Vera! Oh, please. I need a favour. Oh, Vera, I'm sorry about yesterday. I need your help. Look, I'm going to be late into work and I need you to cover for me. Please. Do you know you're all the same you are sort, aren't you? Eh? I come round trying to show a bit of concern. I'm sorry, Vera, I've got a lot on my plate. Yeah, and then I'm sticking my nose in. Yeah, it's all the same. When you want out, eh, I'm your best friend. Well, forget it, you know what you can do. Hang on, love. Just sorry, love, we're full. Do you want to lift? I'm not going to work. Oh? I'm going to the airport. Oh, well, that's all right. Get in. Were you going that way anyway? Well, I wasn't, but... I'll wait for the next bus. Just get in. Well, I've made my position crystal clear. Mm. You can talk till you're blue in the face and it won't make a bit of difference. How do you possibly... Imagine that I can cope on my own. Seriously. You should have consulted me. We have been through this. We are not going through it again. You've got a cheek of the devil, the pair of you. You sell that place from under me, and you expect me to help out in the interim. I apologise for not talking about it before it was decided. Well, I've got news for you and you, Reg Allsworth. I may be your mother, but I'll not be taken for granted. Not by anybody. You wouldn't expect somebody to officiate at their own funeral, would you? No. And don't you expect me to help out in that shop while you sell it, because it amounts to the same thing. Oh, don't talk like that. It's true. Oh. I felt ten years younger getting out every day, seeing folk, chatting. You just want me stuck in here while I go quietly daft, and I know why. Well, you know more than us, then. Because that way you can get me wheeled out sooner to some home. Full of silly old beggars. Rubbish. All my life, everything I have ever done, I have always been made to feel guilty because of you. Maureen, don't start shouting. Every decision I have ever made about anything, you have taken it as a personal insult. Well, you've done it once too often. Because I don't care what you think. I've got plenty of other things to think about. So don't come in. Because I can manage by myself. Hey, just... Calm down. You think I can't? I will. I have tried to apologise. I have tried to explain why I can't continue with the shop. But oh no, you're so stupid and stubborn and awkward. All you care about is what you want. It doesn't matter that I can't cope. It doesn't matter that I've been quietly cracking up over the last few months. Oh no, as long as you're having a good time, that's all that matters. <gasps> Come on, Reg. Just, just, just don't. No, it no! She can stew in her own juice. He just sounded lost and frightened, poor lad. He hadn't got a penny on him. God, they'd better have treated him decently or else there'll be trouble. <laughs> trouble. They're alone to themselves, that lot. They seem to think they can get away with anything. Yeah, but I, uh, I thought they were letting him go. Yeah, but that's not the end of it. I didn't get the full story. Oh. I don't know. It's not just them, either. It's everyone. People I thought were my friends, you know. For some reason, they seem to think they can start judging me, criticising what I'm doing, expressing opinions. No support. Not real support. Just making me feel as if I'm a few bricks short of a full house. Well, I'm not. I just want to be with him. I mean, for God's sake, where's the problem? He's hardly asking for the earth, is it? If you want it, you fight for it. Oh, I intend to. Have you got a good solicitor? Well, I know one. Here, yeah, listen, phone this bloke. He's very good. Won't charge an arm and a leg, and uh, he's a mate of mine. So you know me. Listen, 
What? I'm not judging you. Do you need any money? Oh, I might do at some point. All right, well, all you've got to do is ask. I'm not promising anything, but uh, I'll see what I can do. Thanks. I mean it. You know that. Yeah. Fletch, hmm? don't go. Morin, I have to. No, ring in sick. No, no, because it wouldn't just be for today, would it? It would be tomorrow and tomorrow and tomorrow. I mean, you have handled her all wrong. Oh, she'd have not got... She'd have not got off her high horse. Whatever I'd have said, it was blatantly obvious. Hmm? Well, you'll just have to cope, won't you, like you said you would. What if I have to go for my dinner? What if I have to go to the toilet? Well, then you'll just have to drop the lunch for five minutes. I mean, good grief. You should... I could be on my feet for 12 hours, not just today, you know. Hmm. It could be weeks before we get an offer. It could be months. Yeah, yes. Well, just get on the phone to her. She'll come in. She won't. Oh, well, put a little card in the window then for a lass. What's the matter now? Yes, well, I've got to go on. You'll cope, I'm sure. Oh, I will, shan't I? Maureen, I've got... Oh, go to work, Reg. How much your fib rolls? I don't know. <laughs> Right, come on then. Whoa, 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 watch this bloke. See you now. Yeah. See you, Maud. Well, unless you want to come up time with us. Oh, no, I don't need to be a bird. Mm. We're going to see for Christmas. Yeah? Oh, very good. My going now. So, uh, it's not different then? No, they'll not change their minds. Mm. Hiya. Well, look who it is. Hiya, Hiya Sal. Just like Hiya. Helen Maureen, she yeah. gets it into her head that she can't do something, and that's it. End of story. Dozy out. <laughs> She's never had any confidence in herself. I don't know why. Have you, uh, have you ever thought about taking somebody on? I mean, you know, someone besides yourself, like an assistant. What's use now? Oh, well, you know, sell you some work in the shop, don't you? Aye. Ah, but she wouldn't be able to do it now, would she, with the kids? Oh, well, it depends. She might want some time off for them. I've decided on a peach and green <coughs> colour scheme for the bridesmaids. Oh, have you? Well, oh. I think I've decided on it, but... Do you know what one of my biggest concerns is, though? No, what? Well, but afterwards, I'm not left wishing that anything had been done differently. Mm. Would you do anything different than Alma if you could do it again? Different husband? No. You wouldn't. Oh, don't tempt me. <laughs> hey, come on, what, what do you want? Uh, I'll have a couple of those vanilla slices. Right. No, but it, it does need thinking about. I mean, you don't want to have any regrets, do you, afterwards? Mm. Sally. Yes, darling. Can I be a bridesmaid? Oh, well, I don't know. You're going to have to ask Raquel about that. <laughs> what she said? She says she wants to be a bridesmaid. Oh, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. You're supposed to wait to be asked about that sort of thing. You can't just go volunteering, you know. No, leave her alone. She's just what I'm looking for, aren't you? <laughs> Looks like somebody's got herself a job. Yeah, it does. Sally, have you got five minutes? Looks oh, like she might not be the only one. Here. Welcome back. Thanks. My pleasure. And remember what I said? If I can do anything, just ask. All right? I'm sorry. I'm just beginning to realise who my friends are. Look, I know this sounds mad, but I'm going to have to go to work or else we're going to be in even more trouble. Are you all right? Are you hungry? I'm OK. Well, there's plenty of food in the fridge. Oh, come here. We're going to be all right, you know. I told you. Nothing is different. They will still deport me. Not necessarily. It's, it was, it's just they pretend. They write a report, they discuss it, then they will deport me just the same. And I am never allowed back here, ever. We'll appeal. We'll win. People do. 
Listen, I've been talking to people. I've been to the Citizens Advice Bureau. I was going to ring the Moroccan Embassy this morning. Now, look, that's something you can do while I'm at work. I've written the number on the pad by the phone. And there's a solicitor. Now, can you ring up and make us an appointment? Mike's given me a number, but there's this chap I've used before, so... Can you do that? While I'm at work, ring up, make us an appointment. His number's on the pad by the phone as well. Thank you. We're gonna win this. We've got every right to. Look, I've got to go. I thought I'd lost you. I had visions of you on a plane. But you're here, and you're stopping here. I'm not gonna let go of you this time. Oh, I've really got to go. Listen, I'll try and be back by about 5.30. I'll get off even sooner if I can. And look, ring those numbers. OK. OK. <sighs> Apologising? I can fathom when I'm in the wrong, and I've never been shy of admitted it. Now go and get yourself some dinner. You're plotting something. Blood is thicker than water. And the rest. And I didn't like to think of you being in here all by yourself, because I knew that yon little pillock wouldn't stay and help you. Well, will you be all right on your own for now, then? I have been before. Look, you do understand, don't you? I don't want to carry on. Yes, because you've not any confidence in your own abilities, oh, Maureen. Mother! I'm saying now. And whose fault is it I don't have any confidence in my own abilities? Yours. Yours! I'm not arguing. This doesn't change anything, you know. Go and get your dinner. Well, I'm very grateful because I've had a rotten morning. So have I. I don't like falling out. Neither do I. There's a delivery due, you know. Well, I'll cope. Well, I'll be back in half an hour. Have a proper break. 45 minutes, then. It's only half past five till half past eight I'll be working. Uh, and have you told them yet? Oh, no. I said I'd talk to you about it first. So I come home from work and then you go straight out? It's only to the shop. Oh, Kevin. I'll have Sophie ready for bed and I'll have your tea in the oven. Sally, that isn't the point, is it? It's the only part of the day we get to spend any time together. Well, more or less. It's only temporary. It's just to see him through till we find a buyer. <laughs> and how long's that going to take, Sal? It could take forever. Well, do you want me to tell him no, then? It's up to you. No, it's up to you, Kev. That's why I'm asking you. Ain't money coming handy, will not it? Ain't Christmas coming? Anyway. What? Well, it'll do me good to get out for a bit. <sighs> all right. Just make sure you let them know you can't do it indefinitely, all right? No more than a month. Are you sure you wouldn't fancy half an hour in the cafe? There's something on the radio I thought I might listen to. Is there something the matter? Sorry? I'm not prying, but is it something I've done or said? No, no. Only, uh, you look very thoughtful. Did I? I thought Bernard might have sent a card. You and your cards. Well... I wasn't thinking about Bernard. No, well, I'm sorry, it was just past my mind, just past my mind. I don't think we'll be getting a card from Deirdre. This morning, you mentioned we hadn't had one. I don't think we will. I thought you were quiet when you came back the other night. He hadn't left her, Samir. Vera Duckworth must have got the wrong end of the stick. The authorities had kept him in custody at the airport. Maybe I'd become too close to Deirdre over the years. I went round because I wanted to comfort her. I assumed it was all over from what you told me. But it's not. She's just getting in deeper and deeper. And I realised 
There's a point at which you've got to stop. Not stop caring, not stop worrying. A point at which you've got to stop telling someone. In your opinion, they're not well, digging their own grave, but something very similar. That's 250. Hold on, love. I've got one of them coupons, uh, five pence off. Oh, right, well, uh, 245. And you know what they say about taking care of the pennies. Well, yes. Yeah, well, it's true. Oh. There's a thing or two you could learn your Jack by the look of things. Our Jack's doing all right. Yeah, I'd give everything I ever had for a woman like that, Vera. I would. Everything I ever had. I'm not talking two down, two up terrace and a second hand caravan and Cleethorpe, either. Oh. Right, Mother, cavalry's here. Well, see you around, girls. See you. Reg will take you home. There's no need. Hey, what's all this? I found you an assistant. Well, didn't you know? Mother, well, it makes sense. I told you she was plotty. It's what you wanted, someone to do your evenings. Save if you're chucking your money away on hotel rooms. Well, I thought you knew. I thought it was all agreed. Half past five to half past eight, three pounds an hour. And I'll still do your dinner times for you for now. It's you I'm thinking of. Oh, I'm, I'm sorry. I'll go and get my coat. No, no, hold on a minute. Is this all right with you, Sally? I mean, is it all right with Kevin and the children? Well, yeah, I mean, we've discussed it, and I, I thought you'd discussed it with Maud. Well, the only thing is, it is temporary, you know, I mean, because we're Sally not. Well, yeah, Maud did tell me that. She knows what she's doing. She'd done it before. All right. I don't know why you're being so devious about everything. You know, I really don't know what you think you're gaining. Hey, come on, come on. Let's leave them to it. Um, I shall be back for you at half past eight. Oh, I ought to be really cross with you. Well, it's the way you have to do it with our Maureen. You have to present her with a fait accompli. Oh, I felt a right twit. Gone bright red now. Well, that's the first part of the plan seen to anyway. First part? Now, what's the rest? Am I allowed to know this? Well, when they see what a good little worker you are, which I'm sure you are, then they won't want to sell up, will they? And this little job that you've got might become a permanent arrangement. Oh, sorry I'm so late. I was stood at the bus stop 20 minutes. Two flew past, packed to the gills. It's with it being Christmas. Oh. Did you ring them numbers? Why not? I don't know how to talk on the phone. I say it's all wrong. Oh, well, we'll sort it out tomorrow. I go crazy sitting here on my own all day. I couldn't take another day off work. They're in hell to pay. That is all I have to do now. Sit here all day. Until they deport me. Till they sort it out. Sit here going crazy. I have no work. I live from my wife. I, I have no use. That's not true. I make you food. That is all I do now. That is all there is to do. I'm ridiculous here. Look, I'll cook. Sure, you cook. Then I have even less to do. Sure, you cook. Look, I'm sorry you've been put through all this. I'm sorry we both have. But we'll deal with it. It will all get sorted out. We're not trying to con anybody. We're not trying to do anything wrong. And that has to count for something. Despite all this, that has to count for something, eventually. Even with that lot at the airport. Doesn't it? No, they were right good about it, because I only rang up to ask if this dress was still available, and they said that they'd do me a discount. So they must have been very pleased with the work I'd done for them. Yeah, well, either that, they sell a lot of loading stock they couldn't get rid of, don't they? Hey, I like this one better. Oh, yes! Yeah, I used to like that one, but... Uh, oh, little Sarah Louise is going to be my bridesmaid. And our Benice's little lad's going to be my page boy. <laughs> our little Torrin. Oh, are we going or what? Oh, shut up. Do you think John would be able to do my hair for me like this, this one? Why not? <laughs> nice to see who wears the pants in your outfit. Well, I take my dad's advice, don't I? You know what he's always said about me, Mother. Oh, which bit's that? Well, you know, he lets her think that she's the boss, but he knows he is, you know. Oh, right. Works in the sense. Right. 
What are you two whispering about? Uh, nothing. No. Go and get a crate of mixers, will you? Right. You drove her all the way out to the airport and back again? Yep. And you didn't even sting her with the brass of the petrol? Don't be silly. Well, that's a turn up for the most, isn't it? What is? Well, you doing something for nothing. Do you want the same again? Yeah, all right, go on. Endless questions. The same questions again and again. I tell them the truth, but that is not what they want to hear. So they go on and on until I, I, I just uh, lose control. And I try to slap this man to say, listen, listen to what I am telling you. I didn't believe it when they said that's what you'd done. I never hit anybody before, not since I was a child. Then they offer me a lawyer. I say, I say w w why do I want a lawyer? You treat me like a criminal. I am not a criminal. Look, you're still here. That's the main thing. Ever since I come here, suspicions about me. Nobody takes me for, for what I am. I am this uh, bad person who... No! Yes, this bad person who is no good for you. Maybe they're right. No! Yes, you lose your friends. This with Emily, for example. I don't care about Emily. You do? You should. No, not if she's going to be like this. I don't. It's her problem, not mine. And I, myself... I begin to not know who I am anymore. I have no job. I have no rights. I have no friends. In Morocco, I know who I am. I know how to look after myself. Here, I, I am nobody. I have nothing. You understand? In Morocco, my life is, is this big. Here it is. I'm not the same person you met in Morocco. They do this to me. Look, you're, you're homesick. <laughs> That's what this is. I mean, it's not entirely unexpected after all you've been through, is it? At the airport, I realized how easy it would be to go, to tell them what they want and just leave. But my feelings are here with you. In my head, this confusion, pulling me this way and that way. In my country, this would not happen, Deirdre. In my country, they would not do this to you. It's true. Oh. Oh. I bet you're winding down, aren't you? <laughs> You should think yourself lucky I'm just starting. Well, you're not doing Father Christmas again, are you? Oh, 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 no. I've got the, uh, the usual seasonal Myrtle duties, though. Yeah, actually, if you're in the precinct this morning, I'm leading the cattles. No, I'll give that a miss, like you say. I'm winding down. Yeah. Oh, Deirdre! Hi. How is he? Oh, he's OK for now. He'll still be deported, though, eventually. Well, at least you'll have Christmas together, won't you? Oh, she's supposed to be grateful for that, is she? I'm just saying it could be worse. Yeah, it could be a damn sight better and all if folk had stood by him. Yeah, meaning me, I suppose. Well, if the cap fits out. Oh, come on, Deirdre. You know as well as I do that Murray's is only a title. When's he going? When the Home Office decide, and after we've lost the appeal. Well, that's a bit pessimistic, isn't it? Why don't you get your appeal in first? <laughs> well, what are you laughing at? It doesn't work like that, Mike. It's got to go through channels. Yeah, I know their channels. Why doesn't Deirdre make a few channels of her own? Because until the Home Office made their decision, there's nothing anybody can do. In fact, it's doubtful if anybody can do anything then. Dynamic as ever, Alf. See ya. I'm just being realistic, love. You can send me in my regards. You know, not, it's not as lightweight being mayor as you make out. Look good at the end of a protest letter, that would. Protest letter? Help Samir stay in England. Signed by Councillor Alfred Roberts, Mayor of Weatherfield. Knock them for six, that would. I'd think about it. I took you for lost. I cannot make toast without bread. He's right. He might have just been trying to cheer me up, but he's right. Do unto others before they do it unto you. What? Mike Baldwin. I wasn't without a bit of clout myself at one time, you know. Clout? Oh, influence. When I was a counsellor. You know, people used to knock on that door with problems. I'd fetch them in here and I'd solve them. And if I couldn't do it, I always knew a fella who could. What do you mean? John Finney. Who's John Finney? Fella I told you about yesterday. I met him when I was on the council. He will be at the office so early? No, this is his home number. Like I say, I used to have clout. Let's see if I've still got it. 
I mean, just because I'm getting married don't mean to say I couldn't do the odd modelling job if one comes along. Look, not the wedding again, love it. Can't we talk about something else? No, but I mean, lots of models manage to combine marriage with a very successful career, don't mm. they, Betty? It's not like the old days, where once you got wedged, you were put on scrap heap. There's a lot to be said for the old days, you know. I mean, unless you're the scrap heap, listen, there's nothing wrong with looking after your babies and cooking your husband's tea. Some women can't even cook their husband's dinner. I'm talking about normal people, Jack. No, I'm not criticising you, Betty. You did what you did because you didn't know any better. Thank you very much. No, you were a product of your generation. All I'm saying is that today we have more choice. Ah, uh, a lot more divorces. Look, are you reading or working? Well, just a sec, cos Bet wants a magazine bag. Phew. Where are you going? What's in that head of yours, Raquel? Only ask it. What is today? Friday. Oh. Station to meet Vicky. I'm sorry about that. I wouldn't mind, but last night you were coming with me. Last minute Christmas shopping, you said. Do you know, it's my memory just lately. It's... No, it's not your memory, love. It's this wedding. You're obsessed with it. Look, love, it's not that I'm not thrilled for you. I am. But to get it for breakfast, dinner and tea, it's a bit much. OK? Well, I'm sorry. Not another word, I promise. And I don't want a vow of silence from you, neither. The odd mention is OK. Providing you chuck in a few other topics as well. You know, like the weather, Ralph Roberts trilby, anything just to spread it out a bit, you know? Yeah. <laughs> Your taxes here, Bet. Right. I'm ready. And another thing. There were no posh wedding presents in my day. A breadboard and a rag rug and you were doing very, very well. Oh, do me a favour, Betty. Change the record. You are. Well, there's more to life than weddings, isn't there? Excuse me. Where's your son? Oh, I never join you. No, 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 being my guest. Now, listen, I uh, don't like to mention this, but your mother's been wondering about Christmas, so she has. All oh, right, yeah. Matter of fact, she's been wondering how many people to cook for. Yeah, uh, well, uh, I'll come round late in the afternoon, you know, when you've, uh, when you've all finished guzzling and that. Oh, well, actually, it's the, uh, the guzzling she wanted me to speak to you about. Matter of fact, she'd quite like it if you would do the guzzling with us. Yeah, well, you should have mentioned it earlier, shouldn't you? I mean, I'm committed then. And what's so important that he can't spend some time with us on Christmas Day? Oh, Fiona, her mum and dad. Oh, I've, I've promised Dad, and I can't let him down, can I? Oh, no, he can't let them down. But it's no problem at all to let your mother down. Just wish you'd made your mind before you built her hopes up. Uh, look, I only arranged it last night. I'd have told you, honestly. Terrific! Look, I'm sorry, Dad. I'll explain to Mum we have. I've got on the sea of it. Cheerio, night. Has my husband given you your whiskey yet? Eh? Hey? Uh, Christmas present to his staff. Whiskey and a oh, cigar. Oh, the whiskey. Yes, Alma, I'm, I'm sorry. Yes, he has. Yes, it was, uh, it was gratefully received. Tell me this and tell me no more. Why is it I can never believe a word that man says? What, Mike? No, no, no. Stephen, my son. You can't lie to Mum and Dad, Steve. Well, you don't have to, do you? Not unless they ask, and then all you say is I'm, I'm having Christmas dinner at your house, do you? You really fancy it, don't you? Well, I could pull the wishbone together, couldn't I? Mm, I know, but my mum and dad don't even know you. And, well, you can't have strangers for Christmas dinner, can you? Well, now you have turkey, don't you? See you later, Steve. Oh, well, you wouldn't see me starve, would you, Fee? Eat at home. What, with Jolly Jim? Come on. Fiona? Oh, Fiona? Oh. Uh, give us a pint of bitter when you've got a minute, love. Right, love. Hey, you stirred up some rubbish this morning. How'd the carol singing go? Never mind the carol singing. What's all this hands across the sea stuff? Have you got religion or something? Well, it's Christmas. Good will to all men. And that includes Deirdre's husband. I'll get that when you're ready. OK, Doc. Bribe me all you like. Still can't do oats. Ah, uh, we're never a gambler, you see. Not the same as our jackies. Oh, I don't envy women who marry gamblers. I'm glad my tailor don't gamble. I was more what you'd call practical life. I left the dream into our Jack. Well, I suppose the ideal man combines the two, don't he? Practical with the, well, with the odd dream thrown in, like. He used to wear these fancy clothes, would he, Rickett? Flashy waistcoats and the like. No air suits. They look better on the mow. Well, my girl has always turned out smart. Well, you have to when you're an executive. The only thing that we have in common is the drink. Duck with tradition, I suppose. Jeans will out, won't <laughs> Well, Curly only ever wears them at the weekends, cos, well, like I say, he's an executive. Well, it's time I wasn't here. I've got a date with a casserole. See you, love. Throckling. We joked you. 
You're it too far. What? The two! Clifford, he forgot his wallet. All I'm saying is, it's a possibility. He gets what he wants off Deirdre, then he does a bunk. Which justifies Councillor Roberts doing nothing. Yeah. So she's left with a broken heart, I'm left with egg on my face. Is that what you want? Well, see him talk to him. Make up your own mind whether you think he's genuine or not. If you think he is, then give Deirdre your support. That could be a mayor unless you use it to someone's advantage. Right. My secretary's holding all my calls, so he won't be disturbed. My timing could have been better. Nonsense. Sorry about the mess. Got this lot to drop off later. We didn't think you'd be able to see us at all, did we, Sam here? With it being so close to Christmas. Never too busy to see an old friend. Honestly, John, this situation is impossible. I mean, I only told you half of it on the phone. Not to worry. This isn't my field, as I told you, Deirdre, but... Sorry? Uh, what are you saying? Immigration, not my usual bag of tricks. John doesn't specialise in it. But that's not to say he can't help. Go on, John. Right, anyway, um... I took on board what you told me this morning, and I made a few inquiries. The situation's grim, but not desperate. Grim, desperate, essentially. Just listen, Samir. I can understand your frustration, but being impatient doesn't help. The wheels of bureaucracy turn slowly. Probably the same in your country as it is here. In my country, we do not lie to ourselves. Meaning what, exactly? About being fair, honest. You think your justice is the best. No, 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 in fact, you think everything is the best, whereas, in fact, it is the worst. If you're here to pass on your opinions, fine, but I thought you came for advice. We did. Look, I, I'm sorry, John. He's had a rotten time. Well, as I see it, we play a waiting game. We have to wait and see which way the Home Office jumps. I think already they make up their mind. If they'd done that, Samia, you'd be back in Morocco. The fact that you're still here means they're still considering. You forget. I already meet with these people. And you forget that I know the law. Just let him explain it to you. Despite what you think about Great Britain, it's still a democracy. Whatever decision they reach, it has to be seen to be fair. Or well, who sees? Samir, you're being rude. No, it's just an honest question. Who sees? OK, suppose you're right. Suppose they decide to throw you out. That's not the end of it, you know. You have the right of appeal. You, you tell me what I already know. You might know a bit more if you keep your mouth shut. There's no legal aid, is there? Not as such. I'll have to make some inquiries. What's the financial situation like at the moment? What are you doing now, Deirdre? For a job. Stacking shelves in a supermarket. <laughs> Sorry about the, uh, this. The revel is coming back from the pub. Uh, what about uh, savings? No chance. There would be no problem if I was able to work, but they tie my hands and my feet, so I am forced to rely on the charity of my wife. That's procedure. Then forget the appeal. Oh, Samia, don't be daft. Whatever I do, I will be deported. Then there's no solution, is there? Given up already, haven't you? Heads they win, tails you lose. I can't see what you want me for. Take your presence and sing with your people, Mr. Finney. I'm sorry we waste your time. Look, I didn't mean what I said. Samia! Thanks anyway, John. Look, I'm sorry. Let me know what I owe you. No charge. And best of luck. Oh, Merry Christmas. Is it too loud? What do you think? Well, it's not Curly's usual style. Yeah, but his usual style's boring, Vicky. I'm trying to go into branch out a bit, you know. Mm, the transmogrification of Curly Watts. Oh. <laughs> The what? Change. <laughs> oh. Men do it to women, and women do it to men. They change them into something else because they're not satisfied with the original. Well, who says I'm not satisfied? Vicky's just talking general, Raquel. Was I? Yes, you was. Where's my cellar tape? Gone, I had it a minute ago. Whole table, love. Watch it, Vicky. I don't want her upset. No, but Curly walks back. Surely she's not that desperate. Lady. You see, that's the trouble with me. I've no idea where men are concerned. The clothes, I mean, but... Well, if you think it's too bright, I can always change it. I like it. Vicky does too, don't you, love? Mmm, that's great. So, do you know what he's got you yet? Do I, ex? Well, that's a surprise. What's the betting? He turns up with an engagement ring. Or is that too much of a cliché? No, not for Curly. It'll be a ring. 
It could happen. I've lost my labels now. Did I bring them down with me? I can't remember. I've not seen them, look. Do you know I'd lose my head if it were loose me? Do like the rest of us, Vicky. Be happy for her. Oh, come off it, Bet. Try. Did they not teach you how to lie at that posh school of yours? I was not unreasonable. Why sit and listen to what we know already? Why do these people talk down to me? Everybody talk down to me. Too precious for your own good, that's your trouble. Why? Because I have some pride. Why does everything always have to happen yesterday? Why can't you listen for once instead of losing your temper? I embarrassed you in front of your friend. For that, I am sorry. It's no great crime, you know, not being able to work. There's a couple of million like you in this country, and they were born here. Oh, I'm going for a lie down. Then make some tea. Don't bother! Thanks very much, love. Sally, what chances are there of you coming in a bit earlier tonight? Yeah, I think so. Oh. Why? No, no, it's just that Reg and I want to do a bit of late-night shopping and I don't think my mother would last the day. She's not poorly, is she? Oh, no, not yet. It's a long stop. Oh, hello, Alf. What can we do for you? No, I just wondered if there'd been any inquiries about the shop. Why are you not thinking of buying it again, are you, Mr. No, Roberts? no, no. Oh, you'd kill me. Uh, well, I'd better go, so I'll see you later. Bye, yeah. Maureen. Bye, Ta -ra, Mr. Roberts. Bye-bye. Who wants to buy a corner shop these days? Well, any kind of shop, really. Yeah, well, corner shops aren't what they were right enough, you see. All through tradition's gone, that's the trouble. That you are, Robert. It is, love. Come on, there's a Christmas drink in here for oh. you. It's just her and a bottle of a Montalada. You better go and help her shift oh, it. Oh, just the one, love. Yeah. <laughs> what was I saying about traditions? <laughs> now then, love. Ah. Oh. Uh, stop. Cubes of your beers for kind, Mrs. Oldsworth. You know, I've been downtown shopping all this morning. I forgot to get some. So you thought you'd pop into your friendly neighbourhood convenience. That's very good of you, Mr. I think it was a brass band that uh, made me forget ah. because they were playing cows on the precinct. I stood there for a long while listening to them. It brought back memories. It really did. Oh. I was just saying to your Maureen, shopkeeping's not what it used to be, you know. I mean, it's all gone to the wall, you know, ever since the amateurs came in with the redundancy money. I hope you're not including me amongst the amateurs. Oh, not you, Maud. You've got a flair for it. Oh, I'll drink to that. Come on, let me top you up a mm. bit. I just want to say well done for this morning. What's that person? The carol singing. Oh, you're in the precinct. Hey, steady on, love. You'll have me oh, diddly. get it down here. It'll do you good. Will you have one, Percy? Oh, uh, yes, thank you very much. Ah, oh, yes. No, I've always felt <sighs> carol singing very soothing to the nerves. And there's a lot of nerves about at Christmas. Oh, it's a traumatic time. Uh, it is. I think it's getting to them two and next door to us, you know. But, uh, it's a nice wine, this, Maud. Spanish. You trying to prick my conscience and all, then, Percy? Not that I'm an expert in these things, uh, but uh, what was that, Councillor? Just, uh, just a drop. Oh, so. oh. Hey, up. What are you doing? Oh, well, uh, Jack's gone to Chippy. I've got some plates warming. Uh, listen, has he said anything? About what? Well, you know, about anything. Oh, no, he's been kind of quiet, actually. Look, you two haven't had words, have you? No. Hey, oh, I'll butter some bread. Ah. I ordered you fish and chips, Vera. Is that OK? Cod, yeah. to be precise. It would have been ache, but my pocket wouldn't run to it. Yeah, well, it's all right. By the way, I owe you some money from this afternoon. You do? Ah, uh, yes, yes. Remind me to pay you. I'm reminding you. Look, don't be so silly, Jack. He asked me to remind him, Vera. I am reminding him. Are you serious? Deadly. Oh, ignore him, Cliff. My jacket is in the oar. Despicable, Jack. Humiliating a sick man. Fear for once in my life, I want what he owes me. There we go, Arkett. Straight now, I think. Yeah, I hope you're satisfied. Fair dues, Vera. I always pay me way. Hang about, hang about. £2.40, 10p short. I deducted that. Deducted? Ah. After you went out, some kids came carol singing at the door. Now, come on, Jack. You wouldn't begrudge them 10p, would you? Bayek, those chips do smell good. I bet you're looking forward to Christmas morning, aren't you, seeing the kiddies opening the presses? <laughs> I won't be up that early, Raquel. Rosie's getting up at the crack of dawn to open hers. Oh, well, Tother's a bit little yet, isn't she, still? You've all that to come. Oh, I can't wait. Cheers. Right, man. I'll see you anyway, Jim. Hey, listen, Kevin, you make the most of them. Children grow up very quickly, sort of day. Mm. Tell me about it. See you now. Cheers. See ya. Oh, it must be lovely having a family. Well, you can have mine if you want them. <laughs> I think your Liz might have something to say about that. Hey, listen, the mood she's in, she'd gift wrap them for you, let me tell you. Hi. Hiya. 
So, when did you arrange to go to Fiona's for your Christmas dinner? Well, sometime last week. I don't know. Why was it matter? Well, it's not the third degree, this, is it? What do you lie, see? I can always tell when you're lying. I'm not lying. Don't be deaf. When you're not telling the truth, you have a certain... No, no. I'm not telling you. No, go on. What? A certain what? It's something you do. What? Well, if I tell you, you'll stop doing it, won't you? Any luck, then? Well, I've got him on the ropes, I think. Convinced him I know when he's lying. You think he is lying, then? I don't know, but I'd love to find out. See ya. See ya. Sure you So why don't you follow him, then, love? Oh, I'm not that interested. Am I? Ah, you've, uh, finished already, have you? Yeah, done's finishing the last. Want a fancy drink? No. What's up? Uh, there's, uh, there's late night shopping in town, if you fancy. Go on, then. Fiona! Hi. Hiya. Are you all right? Yeah, I'm uh, Steve tells me that he's having dinner with you on Christmas Day at your place. You never give up, do you? Yeah. He is with me, Mum and Dad. Oh, uh, it's all arranged, is it? Only you'd be very welcome to come to us, you know. Oh, you should have said. Oh, well, as long as you're fixed up. But we will be seeing something of you. Yeah, yeah, of course you will. Great. Great. Right, see you. See you later. Brilliant. Well, if that doesn't convince anything else, well... Well, it should do, because it's true. What? Well, I phoned it with Mum when you were invited. Well, did you manage that? I told her you were in the same line of business as our Bernard, and that seemed to swing it. Who's Bernard? My cousin. He comes to dinner every year. I told you about him. He's the kickboxer, so uh, if you fancy a couple of rounds after dinner, you know, play along, yeah? Fiona. What? Tell me you're lying about Bernard. I'm lying about Bernard. Come on, we have shopping or what? I make soup. I didn't know whether to wake you. I wasn't asleep. It doesn't do you good to go too long without food. No. Oh, hello, lad. Uh, can I have a word with Deirdre? Mr. Roberts uh, wants a word. No, you as well, sir. Don't, don't, don't go rush him. Well, it's the right business is this, dear. What do you want, Alf? I want to explain myself, if you will listen. Now, you know I don't run away from fights, but I've got to know what I'm fighting about. And I don't go into battle until every peaceful line of communication has been exhausted. Any Look, it's all right, Alf. It doesn't matter. No, no, no. Hear me out. Just, just hear me out. I mean, he, you are jumping before the gun, you know. Jaw, jaw is better than war, war, any day. And whatever they're joint, there's still hope, isn't there? You know, they might let the lads stay. Now then, if the immigration people come in, then I will go in very strongly. I mean, I don't know what I can do, like, but uh, I'll do what I can, you know, if and when. Thank you. Yeah. Anyway, I'll, uh, I'll better go off. <laughs> I mean, wedding anniversary today, you know. <laughs> yeah, it'd be devil to, devil to pay if I don't, uh, you know. <coughs> Good night. Hey, good night, Mr. Roberts means well. Yeah. <laughs> I told you I had some influential <laughs> friends, didn't I? <laughs> These are just for them round day, you know. I'll push them through the door after. Aye, aye. I still haven't had one from Deirdre Barlow. Well, she's not called Barlow now, is she? Are you getting ready, then? For what? Well, you've got a night off, haven't you? So? Well, I thought we might go out, have a drink. Can't afford it. On me, Jack. Truth is, I... I want to talk confidential life. What about...? The future. Not mine, cos I haven't got one. Yours and Vera's. You are breaking my heart. Have you got an envelope to spare, love? A good size one. Oh, another cadge again. Hey, shut up, Jack. Hey, well, that's so low. That's perfect. Happens to be for my building society books. They get lost quite easily, you know, if you don't keep them together. I don't know. I've never had that problem. That's why I want the envelope. So you don't have the problem when I've gone. 
No use leaving it all to someone who can't find it, is it? All what? The lot. Look, who have I got to mourn me when I've gone? That's why I thought you and I might go out tonight and discuss the will. The will? Aye. I'll have a shave. You heard him, Vera, the lot. Could be thousands. Yeah. Go with him, Jack. Aye. I'll hang you to shave. Aye. Here, your present. Merry Christmas. Oh, thanks very much. Here, I'll have I'll send to you. Oh, it's a <laughs> What is it, eh? Feels like a breadboard. It is a breadboard. It's got the knife in the doings, though, eh? A breadboard? A flaming breadboard for my Christmas present? Yeah, well, the old one looked knackered, didn't it? Yeah, well, it's not the only thing that looks knackered round here. Thanks, thank you very much, Fiona. Yeah, well, I'll have a packet yeah, of eggs. No, fair dues. You can borrow my breadboard. In fact, you can borrow it now if you want some toast for your breakfast. Morning, any tea going? Oh, morning, Clay. Mm. Merry Christmas and many of them. Ah, that's same to you, but this'll be me last. There's none left for me. Hey, now, nah, you shouldn't talk like that. You never know. Anyway, here, your Christmas present. Oh, Vera, love, you shouldn't have bothered. I told her that. Oh, hey. Oh, heck. Yeah. <laughs> oh, now, look at that. That's grand, that is. And I'm going to wear it. I mean, there's no point in me saving out for best, is there? You hang on, love. I've something for you. Oh. Good oh, God, you lashed out there a bit, didn't you? Virgin wool. I wonder how they know for sure. And you got me 40 flaming packs. Oh, shut up. You're coming for that, won't you? When poor Cliff passes on, stop moaning. I don't want any more hand-me-downs. I had enough of them when I was a kid. But don't be such a misery. You'll be getting everything he's got, won't you? He's told you that. Well, da da I, I, There you I, go, Vera, look. Merry Christmas. Oh, look, so. Cliff, Cliff, I didn't get you anything for Christmas because we never did when we were kids, did we? No, we didn't. No. But you'll be happy to know that I was thinking of you when I got that for Vera. Hey, look at this. Oh, hey. Huh? You see, I thought it'd be my present to you as well, our kid, seeing as it's you as'll get the benefit. <laughs> oh, it's lovely. What do you think, Vicky? Mm. It suits you. I've uh, got another present for you, only you can't see it until tonight. Oh, <laughs> please, not in front of innocent young girls like Vicky here. There, what do you think of my perfume? Oh, it's magic. Midnight rubbish. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Well, I'd better get going. I'll see you tonight. Oh, I wish you weren't. It's driving all way to crew. Christmas dinner, Mum and Dad. Well, be careful. Don't drink and drive, will you? I won't get a chance. My Mum won't have a drop in the house. Sounds like my kind of lady. Gives them of us who run pubs a chance. Right, I'll, uh, I'll see you. Yeah, bye. And uh, tell your Mum and Dad we want them at the wedding. Right. Uh, Merry Christmas. Merry Christmas. Merry Christmas. Merry Christmas. <laughs> bye. Bye, love. Curly says we don't have to go asking my dad for any favours. Curly says he'll pay for everything I want at the wedding, anything at all. Mm. Oh, he's very generous. Yeah, there's a lot more to Norman than meets the eye. Mm. I was hoping there would be. <coughs> well, making good iron. There he goes. Yeah. How does Father Christmas get down the chimney? Down the chimney? Oh, I don't know. But he manages it, though, doesn't he? That's the main thing. What about the reindeers? Do they go down? No. Leaves them up on the roof, doesn't he? Where's yeah. he leave them? On, on the, the roof. roof. In fact, you ask your mum. She knows about all these things. Mum said to ask you because you're good at fairy stories. Oh, did she? Yeah, very good. Right, son, listen. Come here. Give us yeah. a kiss. I'll play with you tonight. All right. You be a good lad, eh? Right, and you be a good girl. Give us a kiss. Mm -hmm. Don't go to the hospital, Dad. Oh, I've got to. Look, people are still ill, leaving at Christmas. Just one. Give us another kiss. Mm. I'll see you later. Be good for your mum. All right. Yeah. Bye. You it, Bye. Bye. Right, well, I'm off. So I gathered. OK. Well, see you later. Be good. Yeah, Merry yeah. Christmas. To mention Happy New Year. 
Be Betty, love. I wish I was on that side of this bar. Hey, well, don't let appearances fool you, know. But Murris and I are working, aren't we, Betty? We well, certainly are, yeah. Right. It's a, a Weatherfield tradition, you know. The Murr's Christmas visit to <laughs> hospitals, old folks' homes, charitable institutions. Well, I shall be glad when I get back home and I get my feet up. Well, that won't be till tea time. Hey, oh. we'd better keep our strength up. Can we have another love? Right, I'll tell. Roger's going to meet us at the hotel. Now, what the food's going to be like, I don't know. It'll just make a nice change from spending Christmas morning in the kitchen and Christmas afternoon doing the washing up. <laughs> yes. Well, that's exactly what I thought. Yeah. Oh, and incidentally, the meal's on me and Roger. Oh. oh no, no, not with go hearts. No, no, it was our idea. We invited you. No, the meal's on me and Roger. No, no, we can't let her do that, can we, Dad? Oh, don't be so ungracious, Mavis. You'll hurt oh, Rita's feelings. Thank you very <laughs> much, Rita. Most kind. Hello. Hiya, folks. You're Merry Christmas. Christmas. Like we saw each other at breakfast. Oh, well, well, listen, uh, how's the turkey doing? All right. Christmas. Oh, Christmas. Christmas. Oh, Christmas. Oh, Christmas. Oh, Christmas. Christmas. Oh, yeah, of course, it'd be a bit better if we had your brother here to help oh, us eat it, would they, or not? Well, thanks. Oh, Morning, Mr. Mayor, Mayor, Madam Mayoress. Ah, Bert, lad, you know Bert Russell, don't you? A legal friend. Oh, of course you do. Uh, cars outside, Mr. Mayor. Flowers, etc., in the boot. Very good, lad. Listen, I think we'd better have one for the road, though. Hey, not you, Bert. We can't have you drunk in charge of a mayoress, can we? Save <laughs> <laughs> again. Oh, you and done. Oh, wonderful. Yay! Merry Christmas. Yeah. Yeah. Happy Christmas. <laughs> oh, happy Christmas. Hi, Mum. Give us a hug. Happy Christmas. Yay! Good to see you. Sorry, we're late. It was Milado's fault. It was a good half hour in front of the bathroom mirror getting his hair to shoot. Oh, what's he now? Do you know, it sounds to me like he's suddenly discovered girls. Oh. Who's the lucky lady? <laughs> Nobody. Take the oh. notice, your granny just likes to tease you. Oh, <laughs> uh, Dan, can I get you a drink? Uh, yeah. Hey, second thoughts, can I put you inside of the bar? Oh, yeah, you can, do oh. I? Hello, sweetheart. It's a bit like putting a kid in charge at a sweet shop, oh. but still. Gin tea, aren't they? Yes, please, Doc. We're very short on men today. What? Alf doing his father Christmas routine, Oh, he's like a big kid. And Martin, well... Yeah. Gail seems to think yeah. he'd rather be with his pals in the hospital. Yeah. Still, they say Christmas is for kids, don't they? Better <laughs> <laughs> have some tonic in that yeah. one. There you go, Mr Ramsey. Cool. Back in a few minutes. You OK, Harry? Yeah, thanks. some mince pies in five minutes. How's that sound? Martin? Yeah. Can you come, please? Yeah, you're all right. Come now. It's Mr. Yeah. Chapel. Yeah, all right. Well, quietly. We don't want the place in uproar, do we? But I think he's dead. Hmm. Right. Okay. Well, uh, let's go and have a look, and let's not frighten everybody. I've just gone to see about making him comfortable. Well, I think we're best to go, Mrs. Bishop. That bird, we're well rested now. Uh, <clears throat> Percy, uh, talking of birds. Um... <laughs> hey, Percy, lad, I've been oh, looking for you. My Lord. Oh, Mrs. Pierce, this is a nice surprise, isn't it, Mr. Sugden? It's a surprise. You've not changed. You're as bonny as Oh, ever. come on, don't start that now. Somebody told me at the Legion that you were courting. <laughs> ah, it was a chap I met at Bingo, but he was only after one thing the pension book. <laughs> <laughs> Can I get you a drink for this? Oh, I'd love a light ale, thank you. Now, Percy, lad, are you going to kiss me under this mistletoe? I wouldn't kiss you under an anaesthetic. Oh, Mr. Sugden, what happened to the Christmas spirit? Go on, Percy, she's caught you fair and square. All right, then, but no grabbing. No, you satisfied woman. Percy, I'm on cloud nine. Come on, now, lads, last orders. We've all got dinners to shift. You can come back and sup some more tonight. That's my shout out, kid. No. No, I'll hear nothing. I'm getting these. I am not arguing. I never thought you'd offer. Right, nah, well, we'll have a large scotch for you and me and a port for Vera. Right, right. Well, you know what we were talking about before, about, about your will. Nah, and I meant every word, every last word. That woman can go and whistle. It's right. all going to you. Right, fine, fine. But the thing is, you could drop dead stood here at this bar, couldn't you? Hey, stop mothering the poor fella. No, no, listen, listen, listen. If he dies... Before making a will, his missus will cop for a lot because he will have then died in what they call intesticulated, you see. Oh, you're a misery, you. Stop reminding him. Oh, well, I've left my wallet at your house again. Look, you get these our kid, I'll see you right tonight. It's over there, isn't it? Oh, say this for our cliff. When he does drop off the perch, he's going to leave a tidy sum because he never spends it out. Right, OK. I'll do it. Come on. So he was your first, was he? Yeah. Hmm. Guess you, doesn't it? Yeah, all right, Harry, I've not forgot your mince pies. Oh, <laughs> I'm sorry I panicked. No. It's just as well you were around. I've made a complete fool of myself. Look, you did all right. I'd just like to be as good as you someday. <laughs> Me? Well, listen, 
I'm just a learner, you know, same as you. I'm just a bit further on, that's all. No, you're a natural. Everyone says that. Oh, well, do they? Well, it's a very nice thing to say. You don't really want that, do you? No, I'm sorry. Never mind. I know you're depressed, but listen, don't be. We're gonna win. Deirdre, stop speaking foolish. I'm sorry, I don't mean to say hard things, but it's true. You are lying to me and to yourself, trying to pretend. I'm not. I'm sure we can... Deirdre, we have to face it. I am going to be thrown out of your country. I have no chance. I know what happens to people like me. These inspectors, these, these, these official men, they listen politely while I beg and plead. Then they say, sorry, rules are rules. Then I'm thrown out. I won't accept that. Fine. OK, you do not accept it. I will, I will be thrown out whether you accept it or not. Well, I think to hell with this. I'm not going to wait to be put aboard a plane like a criminal. Didri, I'm going home. Oh, Samir, you can't. Don't. Please don't leave me. Leave you? Why do you speak foolish? You are my wife. Where I go, you go. No, Didri, I'm taking you home to Morocco. Now, hang on a minute. No, that's it. It's settled. That is what we must do. <laughs> Are you coming home? Yeah, well, that's why I'm ringing, really. We've got a bit of a crisis here. <clears throat> One of the nurses hasn't turned up for the new shift. Oh, Look, Gail, I can't help it. It's not my fault, is it? What do I want me to do? I want us to walk out on everyone. You seem to be able to walk out on us easy enough. Look, with a bit of luck, I might be back in an hour or two. How's that sound? Oh, stay there till midnight for all I care. You might as well now. The day's ruined. Look, Gail! Martin. What? Someone's opened a bottle of wine. Merry Christmas. Yeah, Merry Christmas. Although well, I can't say I've noticed. I liked Morocco. I thought it was fine for a holiday, but I wouldn't want to live there. Why do you say that? Well, there's not the same standard of living, for one thing, is there? I can walk there. I can provide for both of us. You will not starve. I'm not saying I would, but... Well, I don't know anybody there, do oh, I? Who do I know when I come here? Only you. It's a totally different world, a totally different way of life. Especially for women. I, I just don't see how I'd fit in. So it, it is fine for me to live here, but you cannot live in my country. I think it is what you, what you call a, a, a double standard. I must fit in with your life, but you cannot fit in with mine. De Deirdre, I'm your husband. Hey, now, don't start saying the little woman has to do as she's told just because no, you're no, the no, man. No, no, I do not mean that. But I believe you when you say to me we must live together. Of course I want us to be together. So, so what is the difference? We will be together in Morocco. I am not going to live in Morocco, and that's final. The man from the immigration said to me, we do not make it through marriage. That is just a sham. Now I know he speaks the truth. Oh, Samia, please. OK, see ya. It's all yours. Martin. Hi, what? Do you fancy coming to the nurse's Christmas party? <sighs> I don't know. I suppose you want to go home. Oh, no, not really. <laughs> well, I brought a bottle. We could always have our own private party. Oh, I certainly fancy a drink, yeah. Cheers. How are you doing, Mr. Love? Oh, I'm flagging a bit now, Love. Yeah, just one more. Don't make the long one flop. Lead on, Bert, lad. I'd just like to say thank you. What for? For getting me Just trying to help the lad. Well, you've got a funny way of showing it. Telling him he might die any minute. Well, I might, you know. I mean, there's no getting away from it. Now, look, he wants me to have all his worldly goods, right? Not his wife, right? Therefore, he needs a will. That's right, see, he's right. I mean, 
but I'll get it sorted. After the holiday, I'll go and see a solicitor and I'll get it all done proper. Look, are you satisfied now, eh? He's gonna sign it after the holiday. It might be too late, then. Undertakers don't take holidays, you know. It really traps you, doesn't it, having a pub? I mean, having to work today of all days. Do you know, I used to wonder why I opened up Christmas night. Then it suddenly dawned on me. I do it because I'm a saint in human form. <laughs> really? <laughs> well, you weigh up our customers in here tonight. They've been at home all day with the nearest and dearest. They've had too much. Half the kids have broken the toys already. The other half are moaning about what Father Christmas has brought them. Then that are married have had words, insulted each other's mothers. Do you know, a copper I once knew told me there's more spouse bashing at Christmas. So you see, your local pub's like a safety valve. You deserve the medal. I do. But then again, I opened up because if I wasn't stood here, I'd be sat in the back on my own, contemplating the mess I've made of my love life. Never mind their own duties. Your place is with your loved ones on Christmas Day. Yes, well, I'm here now, aren't I? Oh, that's lovely, though. You see, the trouble with being in public life is you're never your own master. Well, you missed the Queen. Oh, well, we've all got to make sacrifices, you know. She doesn't grumble about it, neither do I. She I'm the same. She doesn't mention you, by the way. Do you know, he keeps thinking that he's going to get a very special mention, that she's going to tell him what a good job he's doing. I do nothing of the sort. Anyway, don't you mock. You wouldn't mock if you were Lady Roberts, would you? And it could happen, you know. Lady it could Roberts. happen. I'm with Alf. Somebody's got to turn in on Christmas Day. Keep things are. turning over. I mean, look at Martin. Yeah. I know you want him home, Phil, but hospitals have got to be kept going. Absolutely. Hello. I was a bit hard on him. Did you get to the hospital on your jaw himself? It wasn't a jaw woman. And yes, I got to the hospital. <laughs> didn't manage to see Martin, did you? Yes, I saw him. Um, I didn't have time to talk to him, though, you know. I mean, he was, uh, he was busy. Yeah. Hey, now, Cliff, I don't want you going spending all your money on solicitors, you see, so I've made you one out. Just sign it. You must send a flaming vulture, you. No, no, here he is, right, our kid, for once. I don't want that woman getting my brass when I go. She'll just fritter it away on, yes, on yes. carpets, uh, rubbish, rubbish, food. Yes, so listen, yeah, yeah. yeah. Mm. I, Clifford Duckworth, being of sound mind and sober, declare my last and final will. I do give and bestow all my worldly goods, property and money to my dearest brother, Jack Duckworth. That's lovely. Uh, but it's wrong. Well, I wasn't with it. Why? It's Why? wrong. It should be my dear brother jointly with, with his beloved wife, Vera, uh, who has been a princess to me. Oh, oh now, come on, you don't want all that. It just leads to complications. Now, who's flaming will is it? Yeah, now, who's flaming will is it? Right. You get that written down. Don't beloved. forget beloved, beloved and princess. And put in there, then get it all, and then right. I'll sign it for right. you. Right? No, you don't have to sign it now. Yes, he does. He's got a funny colour. Yeah, there you go. Yeah, right. Yeah. Right. Now, I can die happy. Is it you around, Adjo? Yes, yes, I've got to have a witness, you see. Uh, lads, lads, could you come and sign this for me? Be, be witnesses. Be witnesses. Now, there's a pint apiece in it, boys. No, it was quite all called for, Derek. All the Christmas dinner with everybody in the room staring. A salesman's instinct, maybe. As a cat must chase a mouse, so a salesman must chase a sail. Yeah, but when a waiter's trying to do silver service, he doesn't want mithering about having paper napkins with a hotel crest printed on them. Well, you could see he was interested. He was not interested. He, he was distracted. That's why he spilled hot gravy all down Roger's trousers. Oh, yes. That was unfortunate. Most unfortunate. Right, thanks, lads. Uh, the beer's coming over. All right. <laughs> Clifford, last one for you. Ah, uh, yeah. right. Dear brother, thank you. Uh, dear brother, you know, I, I can't tell you how happy I am that it's going to you too. Because it couldn't go to a nicer couple. Apart from our Jack, that is. Wakey, wakey. I'm not asleep. I'm just resting my eyes. Hiya, oh, yeah, everyone. Oh. Yay! Hiya. Oh. Oh, yeah. You're all right. I gave you a drink, yes. mate. You've Come on, Martin. Lighten us all up. Half is falling asleep. Where's your dolly? Have you eaten anything? Oh, yeah, I've had a sandwich and a couple of mince pies. But there's no need to start. Oh, I'll prepare myself something. Oh, well, uh, I'll get you a proper meal. Right. 
Oh, yeah? I'm sorry about what I said on the phone. And I was in a lousy mood this morning. I know your work's important, and I shouldn't have said... Well, you know. Anyway, I'm sorry. Ah, it's OK. Just forget it. <laughs> right, what's in here? Ooh! Mm. <laughs> Well, you might be right, there you go, Jen. Cheers, Jen. Cheers. Hiya. 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 Oh, what are you coming to get? Worried about you? I'm OK, but I'm sober as a judge, and I intend to do something about that. Would you pull me a pipe, please? Well, you're entitled. Are your mum and dad OK? Ah, you know, the same as usual. What did they say? You know about the wedding? They were very pleased. They kept saying it's about time that they met you. Oh, I wish my dad were nice like that. Don't you worry about him. You know that other present I was telling you about? Mrs. Raquel Watts. What's it all about? Come outside. I'll show you. It won't take a minute. No, what is it? Come on, I'll show you. You'll see. Come on. Hey. 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 Hiya. Hello, love. You've not seen Sam here, have you? I'm sorry, love. I haven't. Are you OK, Deirdre? Is something wrong? And I'm supping about our kid. I'll right. make some room. Right, Cook, right. Do you know he's going to kill himself where he's knocking him back? What a way to go, though, eh? Anyway, it doesn't matter. I've got the will. <laughs> but is it legal, that? Of course it's legal. As long as it's signed and witnesses, it's just dying, is it? When our cliff goes, oh, I... Hit them. What's up? The swines. The swines! I bought them a pint apiece. Look at the witnesses' signatures. Donald Duke and Eric Cantona. The swines. Where are we going? We have to be in the dark. Why? What, you going mad? No, no. So we can see better. Well, how can we see better in dark? Come here, look, look. Now, look, up there. Now, do you remember when I showed you the plough? And then the great North Star? What? Yeah, more or less. Now then, if you look to the left, over there, about three million miles away, there's a star. Can you see it? Yeah. Well, I've had that star named after you. That star now carries your name. Are you kidding me? Yeah, I am. Yeah. No, no. That star is now officially registered as... I was thinking ahead, you know, about your name, after we're married. And that star is now called Mrs. Raquel Watts. Wonderful. And it will be called Mrs. Raquel Watts for all eternity. And that's how long I will love you. Samia, I've been looking for you. I'm sorry, Deirdre. I was mad, I'm sorry. No, no, it was me. Listen, I've been thinking. You were absolutely right. There's nothing for us here. And we've got to do something. I'll go with you. Wherever you want, whenever you want. You really mean this? I mean it. Just as long as we're together. I'll take you home. Who said you could get up? I just opened my eyes. Couldn't sleep. Oh. Guilty conscience from leaving your family yesterday. Shady. No. Oh. 
Are you opening the gaff today? No, I am not. Are you not? No. Oh, that's good. OK, well, uh, let's all go somewhere. Where? Mm -hmm. Uh, pictures? They're bound to be open today, aren't they? I don't know, are they? Yeah. OK. Well, all I've got to do now is find a film that appeals to a four-year-old, a seven-year-old and two that are supposed to be grown-ups. Before you do... What? Well, I know I didn't sound it yesterday, but, uh, Actually, I was dead proud of you. Going out to work, looking after all those people, while we were just at home, stuffing our faces. There's no noble about it. I just... Just drew the short straw, that's all. Mm. Even so. Mm. OK. Morocco. Yes? Me, living in Morocco. Yes. I just can't imagine what it's going to be like. And that frightens you? Oh, it terrifies me. I mean, let's face it, when I was there, I saw the hotel and a couple of trips we were taking on. And all I remember from them is desert, men on camels and snake charmers. You will not be expected to ride on camels or, or charm snakes. What will I be expected to do? To be my wife. You do not want to go? No, I've said I'll go. But you wish you hadn't? I wish. Oh. I wish you came from the Isle of Man or somewhere that I felt I knew something about. At first, we will live with my mother in Marrakesh. Mostly my father is away working, so it will be my mother and my little sister. We will stay with them until we find somewhere of our own. And will it be a house like this one? No, a uh, flat, three bedroom. And will I have to live any differently than I do here? I mean, will I have to stay indoors or wear a veil? No, or... no. I thought it was, you know, Islamic. You can dress how you want. You can drink alcohol, drive a car... Well, no, I haven't got a licence. All right, then. What about television? Yes! <laughs> we have that as well. Satellite uh, video. It is a, a developed country, you know. We, most of the things you have here, we have there. Only some things better, eh? Hey, some things much better. The weather, for one. <laughs> people will welcome you. Not like here. I'm sorry, but I have to say this. They, they will not lock you up and question you. They will welcome you as my wife. Yeah. I would not take you anywhere that I thought you would be unhappy. I know. I just still can't picture it, that's all. Living there permanently. Growing old there. Ah, the very man. Well, go on. Sit here at home this afternoon. You fancy coming? Oh, look, and I never took you in the first place, Kill. I knew you were going to be coming, Dick. Oh, come on. Look, I'd love to come down here, but I've got to spend a day with the family today. Yeah. So, where are we going then, eh? Pictures! Uh, listen, you uh, couldn't do us a favour, could you? Yeah, what? Uh, well, can I use your phone? Well, it's just the arse, it's uh, playing up a bit, like, you know. Of course you can. Go on. Go only on. for a couple of minutes, like. No problem. Go on, on, right. Go on, go kids. On, Here you go. Go on. Hi, hello. Hiya. Nice Christmas. Very nice, thanks. And you? Smashing thanks. Merry Christmas. <laughs> oh, hiya. Hiya. Hey, um, I bet you won't know which side of the street to visit first, will you? You know, with your mum living on one side and your dad on the other. Yeah, well, actually, I only visit one side now. And if you want to watch me, you'll find out which that is. Hello, sister. Hi, uh, yeah, it's Martin Platt here. <laughs> yeah, I know, can't even forget about you on my days off. <laughs> no, uh, no, what it was is, um, I'm just wondering if uh, Kathy Powers is in today. She's not at all. Well, is she not working on lates? Hmm, OK. Uh, there's no way you can put me through to the nurse's home from there, is there? So, what did uh, Father Christmas bring you to, then? Right, so you don't know when she'll be back. No, OK. No, thanks, anyway. No, no, no message. I'll catch you later. Thanks, bye. It's terrible having to go to work when other fucking are on holiday, you know? 
I'd be grateful for the strength ever to work again. Well, I've got a few minutes before I start, so if, if you want to have a go at that will... No, look, we don't want to do nothing when you've got to rush off somewhere. I mean, what we'll do, we'll wait till we can both sit down and do it proper by the book. You know. All right, proper. Hey, it's a stepfather you get, isn't it, when your mother gets married again? It is. Why? Well, I've just seen Tracy Val and it got me thinking, you know. I thought, well, a stepfather lives at the end of the street, an adopted father lives opposite, and a real father, well, God knows where he is. I mean, no wonder she looks confused. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> hey, I hope that shop is not for us dinner. Well, some of it is, yeah. Why? What's the matter with that? Well, I was just thinking. Our kids got to go to work, so I thought maybe you and me, we could go out for us dinner, my treat. Do you mean it? Well, of course I mean it. And we're going somewhere nice and all. I mean, you gave me a smashing Christmas dinner yesterday, and I intend to return the compliment. Well, I'll have to get changed. Well, there's loads of time. Hey, I hope you're taking notice of this. Your brother knows how to treat a woman. <laughs> oh, he does, oh, I does, oh. Uh. Ah, and it's a best frock job. Expense, no object. Right. Mind, I'm saying that, but uh, happen we'd better check with Jack first. Well, what's it got to do with him? Well, it'll be his money we'll be spending. <laughs> 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 no, you know what I mean, kid. I mean, like when the will's sorted, it'll all be heading your way. So what do you say? Uh, can I lash out a few quid and take Vera out? Mm. Of course you can, yeah. Well, you could say it as if you mean it. I do mean it. But you just look after him because Christmas is the most dangerous time of the year. There'll be folk keeling over in restaurants. Ten a penny. Oh, now that's a thought. Hey, what do you say, Vera? Happen we'd be better off not going? I'm taking a notice of him. If eating and drinking kill you, he'd been in his grave years ago. Ah, uh, but he is only thinking of me, aren't you, Jack? There is a danger in overeating, Vera. It is a well-known fact. You're <laughs> going to work or what? Yes, yes, I am, yes. Right, and we'll drop in for a jar after. Right, right. Um, And about the other matter, um, we'll sort it out when we oh. meet. Definitely. Right. Mm, I can guess what that were all about, and all is after you sign it, will he, eh? He is, and I shall, but in my own time. Yeah, but have you really got some money? Well, it depends what your scale is. I mean, if you say according to the Queen, no, I haven't. But if you say according to the average working man, well, then I'm very comfortable. You see, I've worked hard and I've not spent much on myself, uh, so it's sort of accumulated. Do you know, I can't believe the difference between you and our Jack. He's let money run through his fingers. It'd have been good to you know years ago if it hadn't been for me. I can believe it. Well, go get changed then. You do that, girl. <laughs> see, the way I look at it, I'm only going to get married once, so I want to enjoy every single part of it. You think you're only going to get my once? I think she'll find once is enough, love. Them shells won't fill in before we open. I'm going, I'm going. Well, of course, I only think I'm going to get married once. Anybody who thought they were going to get married twice wouldn't get married the first time. It's true, is that? See, so what I'm saying is I want to enjoy every step along the way. And the next step's going to be going out with Curly tomorrow to buy the ring. Come in. Morning. Oh, good morning, love. Hi. Everybody have a good Christmas? Oh, Lovely, nice. but we're glad it's all over. Yes, I must admit, I'm glad it's only once a year. <laughs> have a cup of tea. Ta. So, do you know what sort of ring you want? I don't know. It's only recently she's decided what sort of husband she wants. <laughs> but I will know it when I see it. I think, when I look at the tray, there'll be one that'll stand out. Might not be the biggest or the most expensive, but it'll be the right engagement ring for me. Mm. Don't worry. I'll get it. Nobody else move. Why don't men have to wear engagement rings? Do you know, I don't know. No. Mm. Well, I reckon it's because they want to keep the freedom. Uh. Well, they don't want to be branded as being tied down to anyone else. Mm, right, little feminist you've turned into. I hope I have. I hope we all have. Well, <laughs> to a point. Liz, it's Deirdre for you. Oh, Ta. How can you be a feminist to a point? Well... There's a lot of them who don't believe in marriage, aren't there? It sounds like this conversation's going downhill fast. Come on, let's go and serve the great British public. All desperate for a drink because they've had to spend one whole day with the families. Right. Hang on. Bet, is it all right if I just call next door? Unlike Deirdre sounds a bit desperate. Yeah, go on. Only tell me what it's all about when you get back. <sighs> Hi, I'm on my way. So all of us from separate flats, and we all got together and cooked Christmas dinner between us. Well, good for you, good for you. And before you ask, no, I didn't spend the day with Denise. 
fact, it's been quite a few weeks since I spent any time with her at all. Sorry. Mm, oh, my. I don't know what I can do about it. She just seems to have gone off me. Do you think... Look, I'm not trying to be nasty. No. Do you think she might have just wanted someone to give her a baby? I wondered that. And yes, yes, I think you might be right. And now she's got one. She doesn't need me anymore. Perfectly reasonable interpretation of events. I thought there was a bit more between us than that, but, uh, well, more fool me, obviously. Then my mum, I take it she's still happily married, is she? You've not been to see her? No, and I shan't be going either. Why not? Because I think she's being ridiculous. Look, she's met this man, she's fallen in love with him, and she's married him. I'm sure you're not prejudiced because he comes from Morocco rather than Macclesfield. No, I just think that he's too young for her. Like she was too young for me? That's not the same thing. No difference as far as I can see. This crazy life of mine that used to be so boring till I went on a perfectly ordinary holiday. Yeah. There's been a further instalment. You're pregnant. Oh, spare me that at least. <gasps> well, what then? Sammy is going back to Morocco. Oh, no. Hang on. He's going back because he can't get work here and he's fed up with the hassle. And I'm going with him. You know. Yeah. You mean to live? Yeah, permanently. When I start drawing my old age pension, it'll be endurance. Deirdre, you mustn't. Oh, well, that's what I keep telling myself, but I am going. It'll be a completely different life. Different language. Everything? Yeah. Well, doesn't that at least make you stop and think? Oh, scares me to death. But I married him, didn't I? Yeah, when he thought you were going to be living over here. Yeah, over here. In a country that must seem as strange to him as Morocco's going to seem to me. It's my turn now to make the effort and share his life. I still say you're crazy to even think about what it. What else can I do, Liz? Let him go by himself? If it comes down to it, yes. I'm sorry, I No, 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 it's OK. Boxing day. It is not the best day to uh, organise a flight. Sammy has been checking on how we get to Agadir. And the best way is to live from somewhere else. Not Manchester? No, there are no uh, scheduled flights. You have to go to Paris and change and, uh, well, it all costs a lot of money. Mm. Perhaps it's a blessing in disguise if it gives you time to reconsider. Ah, but uh, there are charter flights from Manchester. They give me some numbers to ring, that's, that's what I have been doing. And? And they are holding two seats on a flight that leaves on Friday. Friday? Yes. So it is up to you. Do you want them or not? I was the one that dragged you out. Thanks, Go on, then. You've really been all on your own since we shut shop up before Christmas. Not all on my own. No, I've had my family with me. Apart from that. Mm, apart from that, I've, uh, Well, I've just lazed about, done exactly what I wanted, so don't go start feeling sorry for me. Cheers. Thanks. Cheers. Hey, how did your Steve get on with your family? Really, really well. Yeah? Yeah, I thought it was wonderful. Oh, hey, just right, then. how come you're not behind this bar today like the rest of us? Cos I'm not full-time like the rest of you, Jack, am I? Mm. Curly's dragging me to flipping main road for a start. Oh, very nice, eh? So what is it, a couple of pints, match? Chinese after gaming? Yeah. Yeah. So why are you throwing it all away, then? You've got your freedom, money in your pocket, house of your own. The day you put that ring on her finger, that's it. All gone. Yeah, killing you. And she's going with him. Going to go live over there in Morocco for the rest of her life. You're joking. I wish I was. She flies out to Manchester on Friday, Ben. I honestly, I think she's taking leave of her senses. Oh, but she's married him, ain't she? Which means she must stand by him wherever he goes. You'd stand by Curly if he moved back to his hometown, would you? Oh, yes, of course I would. Which is where, just for the record? Stockport. Bayek. Must be true love, must that. Oh, yeah. 
<laughs> you see, the only real money I've got is tied up in this house. Yes. So, I can't just walk away from it. Well, fly away from it. We're going to need some money when we get over there. Yes, it would be nice. So, I've got to sell the house first. And have you got any idea how long that takes in this country? Longer than Friday? <laughs> just a bit, yeah. So we cannot go? Well, not so soon. I don't see how we can, no. Deirdre, I want you to tell me the truth. I am doing. Well, I don't think you are. Oh, really? You say to me you are willing to come to Morocco. Which I am. But you make no mention of selling the house or any of these other problems until I say yes. I have reserved the flights and suddenly there are all these reasons that make it impossible. Because I didn't know it was going to be well, so how soon. How long did you expect it to be? A year? Two years? I don't know when. But two years would be nice. Or even three or four. Hey, now this is not fair. I've told you I'll go to Morocco with you, and I will. But you can't expect me to abandon the only asset I've got. Always you worry about money. Yes, I do. And I intend to go on worrying about it. So what is it you say? You, you cannot leave until you sell the house and you don't know how long it will take? No, I don't. Nobody does. OK. Right, well, I, I, I make them a call back. I tell them that you do not want the airplane tickets and to, and to sell them to somebody else, yes? Hiya! Oh, yes, come in, although I must warn you, just caught us on our way out, nearly. No! Oh, you look nice in oh. here. Yeah, we're going to the pictures, that's nice. Oh, you're going as well. Yep. Oh, we must have keep it. It was Alfie wanted to call. I don't know why, really. Well, do we have to have a reason? No, no. you don't. I think he was hoping you got some of that turkey left. Hey, have you oh, ever right. known anybody eat as much as your <laughs> granddad, Alfie? I bet you haven't, eh? You're not working today, then? No, no. no. Well, we had to get yesterday yeah. off, or today, you know. Yeah, and you were working yesterday. Yeah. And yeah. now they want to get to the pictures, and you're going to make them late if you keep asking these stupid come on, questions. Then. Come on! You can come with us if you no, like. No, we're going over the road for a quick drink. Uh, come on now, everyone. Shake your tell us. You're going to have us late. Have you got on. the keys? Yeah, I've got them in my bag. Right. You sure I can't get anybody else from? No. Sure. No, I'm no. Right. Hey, listen, in fact, uh, I'm going off. Leave you two young people to yourselves. No, you don't have yeah, to. Yeah, I do. I need my afternoon nap. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Oh, oh, well, if it isn't the mayor and mayoress. Uh, no, no, it isn't. Well, it's the mayor, all right, but uh, if you weren't the mayoress, I should think she's at home with her feet in soak. Oh, yeah, I forgot about that. You wouldn't if you'd heard it as many times as I have. Uh, pint of the gin and tonic, please. Oh, are you two having the same gin? Yeah, thanks. Uh, well, mine was a mineral water, but can I have a gin and tonic? Of course you can, yeah. We got that. Sorry to be in time. Have a quick word. Yeah, of course you can. Won't be a minute. Just going to have a word with Deirdre. Oh, right. Very good at letting your husband wander off with other women. Mm, I am, aren't I? So, what are you going to do with yourself? Can I hang out here for a while? Sure, do you want a drink? Oh, no. What? Vicky's over there and she's looking over here and it's doing my Oh, don't be so big headed. Oh, she is, she watches. Hi, Andy. Hi. Hiya. So, Steve's still got his hairdresser with him, has he? Uh, yeah, I know. I don't know why he doesn't just carry a comb like everybody else. Yeah. <laughs> Thanks, man. Are they quite a regular item now? Uh, well, she's moved in with him, so I would say so, yeah. She's living with him? Yeah, didn't you know? Well, it's a hell of a thing to do. I just hope this fella's worth it. I think he is. Then all I can do is wish you both the best of luck. Thanks, Mike. And, uh... There is one more thing, if you wouldn't mind doing me a favour. If I can. Well, if we're leaving on Friday, I'm going to need somebody to sell the house for me. Me? Would you? Oh, yeah, of course I will. And I'll make sure you get a good price as well. Oh, thanks, Mike. And thanks for not telling me I'm being stupid or I'm going to regret it or anything else that everybody's been saying. It's your life, your house. You can do what you like with both of them. Right. Come on, better get a move on if we're going to get to Main Road. <coughs> of course. Raquel, love, we're off the lab. See you later. Oh, you're going to match then? What yeah. sort of match? Football. Unless, of course, you'd rather I didn't go. Oh, no, you. Go on. I think it's healthy. A husband should have his own interests. A lot of husbands have them. No, well, I do. We don't want to be living in one another's pockets, <laughs> do we, no? Right, well, then, I'll see you later. Love you. Yeah, right. Oi, hmm? what do you mean? Yeah. Right. You tell her that you love her as well. Love you too. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Did you know that uh, Steve and that girl are living together? No. 
Oh, well, I don't know whether I knew or not. Why are you not bothered, are you? No, no. I feel sorry for her, that's all. Thanks again, Mike. I'll see you later. Oh, it's come back then. Well, of course I have. So what was all that about, or am I not supposed to ask? You can ask, but not at the moment, all right? And you trust this man? I mean, to, to leave him with your house to sell it? Is... I do trust Mike, yeah. Although there's a lot round here, might be surprised to hear me say that. Come in, I've just had an idea. Of course you can. We were just talking about you. Well, don't worry, I haven't been talking about you. Hi, Samir. Hello. Now, I understand you're going to be taking this beautiful English lady away. Have you told him I'm going to be selling your house? Yeah. Right, well, I've had a better idea. Why don't I buy it? You? Yeah, well, otherwise, think about it. I'm going to be sending your documents to sign, which are going to travel thousands of miles, and then after you sign them, they're going to take weeks to get back here. I mean, it would just be impossible. But I can't ask you to buy it yourself. You're not asking. I'm offering. I'll give you uh, 15000 Is that not a good price? <sighs> no, it's not. Well, no, of course it's not. But what it does do is give you a bit of ready cash, which I assume is what you wanted. Then when the house is mine, I can send it to someone for what it's really worth, apart from a few expenses, send you the balance. So you will make no profit? No. That'd be wonderful. All my ideas are wonderful. But, but you are asking Deirdre to trust that you will send the money on to her. I suppose I am, yes. And I do trust him. But don't you... No. This is my house. It's one decision I'll make myself. Thanks, Mike. That'd be great. I wouldn't do it for anyone else. So what did Father Christmas bring you, then? Um, a lot less than I asked for. He usually does that with me. <laughs> now, that's because you must both ask for too much. <laughs> It's all 90, please, uh, can't that? So, you spending Boxing Day with your dad? Well... Some of it. About another ten minutes to be exact. <laughs> <right? laughs> so, we've got to make the most of it. <laughs> Cheers. Oh, oh, what do we want? Oh, oh uh, can I have a brandy? Of course you can. I'll have one, too. What a week here. It's his inheritance that's paying for it. <laughs> How was your meal, then? Oh, it was lovely. Uh, it was right in Indian, I think. Oh, yeah. Were it Indian? I thought it was Chinese. <laughs> I'll get the brandies. <laughs> well? Oh, sorry about that, which I will tell you all about later. I'll get another round in, shall I? Bet, same again, please. Sorry, Mike. Yeah. I thought we were just having one. Oh, it's Christmas, Alfie. Christmas! <laughs> <laughs> How about you, Ken? Have a drink with me. I've just got some, thanks. Another time, then. <laughs> He's going to need one, poor right. fella, when he finds out what they're planning next door. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know what's keeping her. I'll give her a shout. Raquel! Do you know what sort of ring you're going for? Oh, uh, well, diamonds. I mean, they're traditional, aren't they? Have you ever thought about... No, no, it doesn't matter. No, no, go on, go on. Well, it's just that Raquel has talked a bit. A lot about getting engaged. Mm. Has she? Yeah. Not to you. Hey? Oh, no, well, to whoever he may be. Oh, ever since I've been coming here, you know, girl talk. She fantasises about the engagement, the wedding, the honeymoon. Yeah, and, and? Well, what I'd like... No, no, Raquel. What would she like? No, that'd be telling. She says if he's the right man, he'd just know. Oh, come on. Give a hint. Well, she did say something about a ruby. In a gold setting. Thanks. I'm sorry, Curly Love. She's getting changed again. Which, of course, means a different coat of nail varnish. The hands have got to be right, you know. You best have a coffee. Oh, I'll make it. You see, the outfit she had on didn't have enough ivory in it. That's the colour she's always wanted for a wedding dress. <laughs> she says it'll set the sapphire off brilliantly. Sapphire? Silver setting. Bought in a romantic little place like Chester. Chester? And then afterwards, she and the lucky man in question will picnic on the banks of the river, which is where he will formally ask for a hand in marriage, pop the ring on a finger. Intimate, simple. Picnic? Don't say I tip you the wink. No, I won't say a word. It is all forms and procedure with that immigration mob. They don't understand true love. Oh, not like you, you mean? No. I mean, you just open all the doors and let whoever wanted was into the country and give them all jobs. No, I'm just saying that every case is individual. I mean, no wonder young Samir's all fed up. If I was him, I'd be the same. I'd say, stick your country, I'd be on the first plane home. 
Kevin, do you know about this? Samir's gone. He's going. I think. I might not have it right, Ken, but the girls are definitely buzzing about something. Well, nothing to do with me. I wasn't even talking to the bloke. Yeah, and now he's gone off half cocked. Well, it's not my fault. I'm just the guy that's making it all happen. And why is that, I would like to know? Oh, just call me an old romantic. You see, people round here have got me all wrong. Is that right? Uh-huh. Phyllis, what do you think of me, eh? I don't want to risk getting arrested for bad language, Lord. <laughs> see, I can't win, can I? See you later. Hello. Hello. Hi, Titch. All right. Um, you got a minute? Uh, yeah, if I can clear up and talk at the same time. Hmm. What is it? Well, I was just wondering what you're doing tonight. Tonight? Hmm. Why? Why? Well, because your husband wants to take you out. And I don't mean for a quick pizza. I mean, you know, I want to make a night of it. So you can forget any idea you've had about uh, washing or ironing. So what do you think? Do you let your husband take you out? Um, well, I'll have to think about it. Oh, yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> let me at it, then. <laughs> if I can find someone to look after the kids. Oh, mm, what? Hi. Oh, hi. Audrey. Hello, Mother. <laughs> Coffee? Oh, lovely. Hiya. What? Deirdre is not home. She's gone to see her mother. Oh, oh, I uh, didn't think you want to let each other out of sight at the moment. Uh, I've just heard you've decided to go home. Yes. When do you go? Friday. Oh, so soon. Oh, yeah. Well, uh, how's Deirdre taking it? Well, she's a bit nervous about living in a new country, but uh, I will make sure she's welcome and happy and comfortable, you know. Um, sorry, I don't understand. Deirdre's going with you? Ken, she's my wife. Oh, yes, I know. But, uh, well, I mean, what about a job? Has she resigned? And, and what about the house? She's selling it. Oh. Uh, well, will she, uh, will she be home this evening? Yes. She was going and coming back in the same day. Very important to discuss what we, uh, what we decision we make with her mother. I, I know she wanted to see uh, you and Tracy as well. Yes, yes, but I'd like to see her if you could if you'd let her know. Of course. These things. Dietrich says some of them are of sentimental value to you too. I, I am being very careful with them. Right, yes, well, I'll leave you to it. OK. I will tell her you, you called. Yeah. I might just splash out on a new dinner set, you know, when... Hey. Oh, right, right. Where's he going? And there's not much fight left in this pan, either. Ah! Hey. Hey. What's that? Cliff! Oh. Cliff! Come, come in, Cliff! What's happening? Cliff! Are you all right? 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 Are you all Frightened the life out of me. How many times have I asked you to do the upkeep out there, eh? How many times? What, with my back? You know how it's been. Inactive, that's how it's been. It were a terrible shock. Do you see, you see, that is the thing, innit? Any of us, any of us could walk out there at any time and get bowled over. You just never know, do you? Happened to our Lisa, didn't it? You see, Vera is worrying about... Tommy, Lisa's little lad, is future, you see. Now, I mean, I mean, we know that the Orton's are going to look after him, but he's in our side. He'll never be able to rely on his father. I mean, I mean, what have we got to offer? The state of this place, eh? Hardly a decent inheritance for the lad, is it? Hey, hey? That settles it. Give me a pen. Well, it's up to you, Cliff. You... I don't want that. This will do. Right. Let's start with a list of what needs doing. Now, Gladden, that is number one priority. Shall we go in? No, I've changed my mind. What? <laughs> Come on. <laughs> Hello. Hello. Hi. Can I help you? 
Uh, yes, yes. Yes. Engagement rings? No. <laughs> Engagement rings. Engagement rings. Anyone on for a drink after work tonight? Where are you going? Into town? I was thinking local, but yeah, town if you like. Meanwhile, <laughs> Martin. Yeah. You on for a drink later? We're all going. Uh, no, I can't tonight. I know. Home to the wife and kids. <laughs> uh, Kathy, got a minute? Yeah. How are you? All right. Fine. You? Oh, yeah. Fine. No, I'm uh, not fine at all. So, now you know what sort of a bloke I am. Do I? Hmm. Oh, and that tells me what sort of a person you are, then, does it? <laughs> well, I don't know. It's same as all the other married blokes I hear you girls going on about. Just after one thing, eh? A weekend, Kath. Well, <laughs> Christmas night. Oh, I don't know. <laughs> so I've never done anything like this before. I mean, I mean, I've been unfaithful. Well, you were the first. <laughs> we're all meant to say that too and all, aren't we? I'm not sure. I'm not that experienced with married men. Yeah, and I don't want you to be. I mean, you going out for a drink tonight with Pete, great idea. I mean, Pete, it's a nice bloke. Martin, please, don't try and par me off onto someone else. <sighs> I can take care of myself. I knew you were married. I thought you were. But after a few Christmas drinks, I had a fortunate short-term memory loss. I fancied you. I still fancy you. But I'm not going to hassle you, don't worry. I just shouldn't have... He did. We both did. Have you told your wife? <laughs> no harm done then, right? This is useless. What is? Well, this. This is where I was going to take you for lunch, but they're full. I never thought to book. But never mind. I'm going to eat somewhere else. Hang on a few minutes at rest. I'm sorry. What about? What about today? I'm having a lovely time. I am honest, girl. Anyway, I'm too excited to eat. Let me have another look at my ring. But now? I won't drop it, I promise. It's not that, it's just that, well, I wanted to do it all properly, you know, officially propose. I suppose I've blown it now. Here. For me? Well, I wasn't thinking of marrying anyone else. But marriage? No. Well, where do you think it... Raquel, I have loved you now for a very, very long time. Would you do me the honour of becoming my wife? I would like that very much. We're <laughs> <laughs> getting married. We're oh. getting married. Congratulations. She cried when I told her. Said it was probably going to be the last time we see each other. She thinks she'll die before I come back home again. She might. And that is what I worry about when I'm away from my family. Yeah, well, my mother's a lot older than your mother. 
Yes, but I, I, I worry just the same. I have grandparents, too. Well, you'll be back with them all by weekend, won't you? Deidre, I know this is hard for you. You are giving up very much to be with me. You care about people here. They care about you. Ken called. He seemed to think that I was going alone. Oh, I can't get any of this right, can I? He knew I was going, but uh, what he did not realise is that you... I was going with you. No. Yes. Did he say if he'd seen Tracy? If she knew? No, he did not say. You know, when you see it all written down, it makes you think, doesn't it? One life, one chance, what might have been. Don't dwell on past regrets, son. You've got plenty to show for your time. Plenty. You just get it all down there. You'll feel a lot better for it. Do you know, they make you feel so important. They let you look at every single ring in the shop. Oh, yeah. oh the whole day was even more romantic than I could ever have imagined. We was huddled together under that army. <laughs> and Curly proposing to me like there were nobody else there. It's oh. And you'd think he'd organised it to rain special. Oh, OK. <laughs> <laughs> it's an antique. Oh, what? And there's no VAT on antiques, so... Uh, <coughs> It's better value in the long run. Yes. Do you know, I bet it belonged to a lady who was married all her life to the one man that she loved. Oh, she um, see, the second hand she means it was probably pawned yeah, well, yeah. or stolen. Oh, don't. Yeah. Right, come it'll be worth a packet, that. Mm. You want to get it insured quick. Listen, have, have you two thought about having your wills done? Don't be so morbid, Jack. I'm not. I'm just being practical. <laughs> I wonder if I'll get left anything, what with my husband handing over all his cash left, right and centre. Well, he's just doing that to put Ken's nose out of John. Mm. Expensive nose job, that. Well, they yeah. are, aren't they? It's quite a favour for an old girlfriend. Audrey, what? What? you don't think you could drag yourself over to our house, do you, and just drop that G&T? Oh, look now, put a suit on him and the power goes straight to his head. Well, look, we're all very grateful and that. It's just, you know, if you could get a bit I'm of a move on. Button. Cliff! Thank you! Cliff! <laughs> Cliff, lad! I can't! Cliff! Cliff! I can't! Cliff! I get off! Cliff! I've got it. I dropped me pen. Oh, God, blimey. Right, it's done. You've done it. Now, witnesses. Perhaps this good lady no, here... No, no, you don't want her. You want somebody sound of mind and body. No, no. no. See ya. Yeah, Kevin. Kevin, come and sign this, son. Why, what is it? Never mind what it is. It's my last will and testament. Son. Yeah. Oh, wouldn't you be better getting someone you know like to do it? Kevin. This is my brother Cliff. Cliff, this is Kevin. Yeah. Now you know each other. Sign it. Thank you. You're welcome. Ooh. <laughs> don't think we'll be bringing Nick here for his birthday. Er, <laughs> uh, don't take this wrong, love, but can we not talk about the kids? Just for tonight. Well, that's fine by me. Hello? Ken, it's me. I'll come down. Hi. I know you've seen Sam here. Everything's happened so fast. I've been trying to contact Tracy. She's here. I had to tell her. Tracy. What do you think you're doing? Look, I've had a lot of things to weigh up very you're quickly. You're just selling the house and going just like that. Bye bye, Tracy. Nice knowing no, you. No, it was a bit more complicated than that. Also, it's not true, then. You're not going. Well, yes, I am. But will you just yes, listen? Yes, I know. It's your life. You've said, don't worry about me. I am worried about you. Of course I am. You're not. You never have been. You're wrong. You might as well take them back if there's no house. Tracy! Tracy! And don't you look at me like that. She's not exactly thrilled at your situation either, you know. Do you really have to go and live in Morocco? I want to be with my husband. OK, OK, but give it a bit of time. If you want to sell the house, right, it's go done. ahead. Mike's taking care of it for me. Mike? Look, I want to go after Tracy. <sighs> what do you want with my mother? The money for the house, is that what you came here for? Mm. Yeah, well, this is all she's got, so why don't you just go back there and leave her alone? This is hard for you to understand, but I have been away from my home for a long and time. And now you're and going I... back to yours and I'm losing mine. No, you... I'll report you. Tracy. I'll tell them you're a thief. Tracy. I'll tell Mum that you tried Tracy. it off with me. Tracy, stop it, love. Tracy. Calm down. Please don't go away, Mum. I need you here. <laughs> don't oh. go, Mum. Hi, man. 
managed to make it look so pretty. You know, I once got nine out of ten for presentation in home economics because my peas were touching me chop. There's not a day goes by in that cafe that I don't think about that. I've already told you that, haven't I? Oh, no, sorry. <clears throat> no, no, go on. See? I told you there wasn't much we didn't know about each other. Martin? Um, Christmas Day. I didn't have to work. <laughs> Not really, you know. I, uh, I couldn't get out of it. I knew that. Oh, what's happening to me lately, Gail? Hey, I mean, I'm doing things. I'm saying things. <sighs> Just not me. Just going through a rough patch, that's all. I thought we weren't going to talk about things like that. Yeah, well, I've got to. Especially after Christmas. Christmas just told us how bad things had got. You didn't want to be with us. No, no, it wasn't that. Yes, it was. And I was so nasty, I made sure you didn't want to be with us. Sometimes it takes a child as big as that, Martin. And then you start talking. You go out for a lovely meal. And you start all over again. I, uh, I asked you not so long ago if you regretted marrying an older woman with two kids. Oh, Gail, now listen to me. Listen, whatever I say, whatever I do, I've got no regrets about that at all. I don't regret marrying my toy boy. you back then and I love you now if that's all right yeah it's great don't drink that too quickly I've got plans for you later don't hate Samia how can I hate him I don't even know him I wish you did well, no chance of that now. I just wanted you two to be friends. I've wanted us to be friends for a long time now. Maybe it's me you hate. Sometimes. Why though, love? Am I so awful as a mum? You didn't always give me a chance, you know. Who was it who always supported you when your dad tried to push you too hard at school? I just wanted you to be... Whoever and whatever you wanted to be. I've always thought you were the best thing ever. I have. You're beautiful. All that lovely long dark hair. And a figure I'd have died for at your age. I just look like a washboard. <laughs> <laughs> you had the lad sitting up and taking notice long before I was ready to accept it. But I think we did that subject to death at the time, didn't we? No one's taking any notice at the moment. Craig's still off the scene. Ah, you'll meet someone else. I don't want anybody else. You really liked him. You really loved him. Yeah. But it just turns out he didn't feel the same way. Well, you're both very young. Look who's talking. All right, all right. Fair enough. But don't rush into finding someone else. Well, you never know. Craig might still come to his senses. Oh, yeah? And what would you have to say about that? I might surprise you. It's not up to me who you love, Trace. This is my mother talking. <laughs> I think it is. Although I haven't been quite sure who this woman is ever since I took that holiday in Morocco. People change, Trace. Even me. Now you're going. Well, oh, we can phone. We can write to each other. 
You've already proved to me you can live your own life. You've sorted yourself out somewhere to live, got yourself a job and hung on to it, all without my help. You'll be managing that shop one day. I doubt it. I don't. In fact, the way you're going, you should be able to uh, afford a few trips out to see me. <laughs> It'd be a bit more exciting than coming to Weatherfield every few months, wouldn't it? I suppose. And you never know, you and your husband might fancy a honeymoon in Morocco one day. Do you know, it's very romantic. I can recommend it. <laughs> Look, do you want me to get off now? You and Sammy must have a million things to do. I'll call him back, promise not to hit him again. No, leave him. I'm going to spend the rest of my life with him. Hey, listen, do you fancy a whiskey? <laughs> have you got anything to go with it? Well, the king of pop's bound to have a stash in the fridge. <laughs> Will you be OK? In Morocco? The truth. I'm terrified. It's not just going to be a holiday in a nice, safe little hotel this time. I really hope everything turns out OK. So do I, love. So do I. No, I really hope things work out for her. Oh, I'll get you two more coffees. Has Gail got the day off? Well, if she has, she hasn't told me. <laughs> no, then, where were we? Self-raising flour? Is there anything else I can get you? Um, Crystallised ginger. Oh, you're not, you're not get that at all, Russ. Can you not make do with glazed cherries? I'm following a recipe. I'm not partial to ginger myself. I'm not baking for you. It's to take to the hospital. Here we are. No, you know, I think it's really brave of her. I mean, it's a big step, leaving all your friends like that. She's old enough to make up her own mind. Mm. Well, she's not too old to make more mistakes, oh, either. Oh, I hope not, Mr Sodden. All oh, things will work out, I'm sure they will. You know, Morocco to Timbuktu, she'd never find another neighbour like you. Oh, I'm one of her last concerns. She's made that very clear. Well, that's disgusting. After all the things that you've done for her... <laughs> Certainly never dreamt that one day we'd part on bad terms. You mustn't blame yourself. It's not your fault, Mrs Bishop. To tell the truth, it'll be a relief when she's gone. I know that's a terrible thing to say, but I'm still hurt by those cruel words. I, I don't know if I could face seeing her again. In case I say something, I'll regret forever after. Well, if I see her again, I'll not mince my words. Oh, please, I'd rather you didn't. All right, just as you say. Patels will have it. What? Crystallised ginger. All packed and ready. Oh, nowhere near. Hi, Mike. Listen, if you want a cup of tea, I'm afraid you'll have to put the kettle on yourself. Oh, that's all right. I'm not stopping. I just got your receipt. There you are. All waiting for you in your Moroccan bank account. Don't spend it all at once. 207,000 dirhams. <laughs> makes it sound more than it is. That makes you a very eligible young lady over there, but I wouldn't tell too many people. Otherwise, Samir will have a load of rivals on the doorstep. Well, <laughs> it won't last long. We'll be looking for somewhere to live. Which reminds me, you and Alma will be more than welcome to come and stay with us, won't they? Oh, yes. We would love to show you our Moroccan hospitality. Oh, I may take you up on that. Oh, there is just one more thing. I know it's a bit of a cheat. Oh, all right, go on. I'm a bit short of ready cash. How much do you want? About 600 quid. Oh, right. Well, uh, I'll see what I can do. You can take it out of the proceeds when you sell the house. Don't worry, I'll drop it in later. Oh, thanks, Mark. I should have mentioned it earlier. Like I said before, don't worry. See you later. See you, Samir. You must be a very special friend to help you out like this. Mike, he's got his good side. Oh, just finished. I was getting worried about you. Yeah, to do gases round. You see, he never turned up. Oh, well, double money, eh? Yeah, I'm knackered. I'm starving. Hey, uh, we going into town to spend my record tokens? Oh, uh, look, I'm sorry, yeah. Uh, can we do it tomorrow? Ah, oh, I'll be you promised. Yeah, I know, but... Well, you know what it's like this time of year? I'm rushed off my feet. There's nothing to do at home. Look, I'm really sorry, mate. Uh, maybe tomorrow, eh? 
All right. Get yourself some grub, eh? See you tonight. So you're not going into work then this morning? No, I'm proud of so, yeah. Good. We can get out there and finish painting that guttering. What? And then when you finish that, you can fix the tap. Flaming Norton, will you give it a rest, Vera? How do you mean? My back is killing me from yesterday. Anyway, somebody else's turn now. Oh, I see. You mean uh, now that he's signed the will? No, that's got nothing to do with it at all. He's always going on about being an handyman. Well, a bit of painting will do him the power of good, won't it? Get over in his condition. Fresh air and exercise, Vera. That's what I'm on about. Just the tonic he needs. Well, that's up to him if he feels up to it. Yeah, he was keen enough the other day, weren't you? <laughs> right then, our kid. What have we got on today, huh? You've got to finish that guttering, cos if you are, I'll hold no, the ladder for you. No, no, Cliff. No, I can't go back up there. No. Why not? It's vertigo. It all come back to me ever since that night on the roof, you see. Listen, I've spent half my life walking on roofs. Yeah, pinching lead, yeah. There's nothing to it. No, I'll tell you what, then. I'll hold the ladder for you. That is a good idea. I mean, it's about time I started pulling me whack. After what you two have done for me, it's the least I can do. Oh, I don't know, though, Cliff. I mean, it's not that can't wait. Oh, them tiles can't wait, love. They can't wait. They're very dangerous. Dangerous, yes, dangerous. Yes. Well, he can do it. And so can I. And I insist. Tell her, Jack. Listen to the man, Peter. Hi, Nick. Everything all right? Yes, yeah, suppose so. But if you wanted to see Grand Don, well, he's working. Uh, no, I fancied having a chat with you. Come here your tea, if you like. Uh, no, I'm late for work, but mm. do you fancy coming to the cafe for your dinner? Yeah, all right. Yeah, OK. Yeah, see you later, ma'am. OK. Cheers. Right, there you are, then. Right, now, you don't mind me leaving you to it, do you? No, you shoot off, our kid. This'll be fine. Right, right, right. Uh, how long you had this clad in? About six years. Needs renovating, you know that, Cliff. How that you've seen he's doing, don't let me stand in your way. Tea time today, lad. You won't recognise this place. Right. Thank you. I think that should be enough. Still packing, are you? Yes. I don't know if I'm going to get everything done on time. Will they let you take that lot on the plane? No, I'm sending most of it over by sea. Oh, your furniture and that. Well, not furniture. We were hoping to start fresh. Oh. When I got married, we had everything second hand. Mind you, we wanted for now. He was a handyman, was Wilfred. Shelves, tables, he could turn his hand to anything. These days, newlyweds want everything brand new from the shop. Well, here's one who doesn't, isn't that right, Curly? What's that? Want everything new. Well, Raquel doesn't anyway. She showed me her engagement ring. <laughs> it's Victorian, isn't it? Edwardian. Oh, I'm glad to hear it, Norman. Not all young couples are the same. Hey, why don't you ask Deirdre to give you first refusal? On what? On her furniture. That's a good idea. You could both be doing yourselves a favour. By all means, if you're interested. Well, um, I can't guarantee it'll be Edwardian, mind, although some of it might well be. <laughs> you, you'll be busy, though, won't you? No, call in this afternoon. You'd be most welcome. Well, I'll just go and have a word with Raquel. All right. I'll see you. Deirdre, can I just say that if I don't see you before, can we wish you good luck for the future? Thank you. OK. I say, Percy, is Emily in? Only I just wanted a word. Ah, she's in, but she's busy making a cake. I don't think she'd welcome any visitors. You what? Have you seen her furniture? Well, I couldn't say no. I won't be seen dead with it. Besides, I thought we were saving for new, you promised. We are, sweetheart. But what could I say? And anyway, we don't have to accept it. So what's the problem? I, um, I said that we'd go round and have a look at it. Anyway, we don't need any furniture, not till we've had the party. What party? Our engagement party. We are going to have one, aren't we? If you want a party, then we shall have a party. What about next Friday? I don't see why not. Next Friday it is, then. I just want everybody to share our happiness. <laughs> so do I, my precious. So do I. Oh. Steak, kidney pie and extra chips. Young man in the corner. I'll take them over. Oof. There you go. 
Are you sure it's enough? You look like you could eat a horse. Yeah. Didn't you have any breakfast? No, I wasn't hungry. Mm. You are now, though, aren't you? How's Gary? He's all right. He's gone skiing. Oh. How's the paper? It's all right. Have you and Don got anything planned for tomorrow? No. I should think he'll be working. You don't want to spend your birthday on your own, do you? It's so that it's New Year's Eve. Why don't you see it in your house? You mean stop the night? I mean move back in. Look, I know there's been a bit of an atmosphere between me and Martin. And I know it's not been much fun for you, has it? But things are okay again now. We both want you to come home, Becky. We really do miss you. Please, Nick. You don't have to take it if you don't want it. Well, we both like it, don't we, Raquel? Oh, it's lovely, Vinaya. Well, it's up to you. I'll not skin you for it. Are you sure you don't want the coffee? Oh, well, oh yeah. no, no. We're not stopping, are we, Curly? You see, the thing is, we're having a party. Ah, and we thought it'd go better. You know, without any uh, furniture. Shocking if it got scratched. Well, look, pick it up next week. You don't have to take it now. Um... um well, I think we ought to think about it, shouldn't we, Raquel? I'll tell you what. Uh, why don't you just leave it? It'd be just as easy for me to take the whole lot to auction. Well, if that's the case, probably that's best, you know. Oh, I'll see for that. Thanks. We'll get out from under your feet. Yeah. Pop in the rovers before you go. I will. Bye. <laughs> Oh, nice to meet you. Hi there, how are you? All right, all right. It's all right, it's only me. Here, got a present for you. Oh, Mike, that is good of you. Look, can't stay, gotta go. Oh, by the way, Jim will take the airport in the Merc. See you off in style. He didn't have to. Don't thank me, thank Liz. Her idea. See you later. How much did you pay Emily back? £65. Look, why don't you sit down for a while? And make you a drink. Try to relax. <laughs> we think your heart may always be in Weatherfield. What do you mean? Well, these people have not been uh, very uh, sympathetic, and yet you still care for them. I can't help it. I've lived round here all my life. How do you expect me to feel? Oh, I'll get over it. I hope so. Soon you will make new friends in my country. In, in our country. <laughs> Two scoops or one? No, thanks. I'm a bit full. Oh, go on. Force yourself. What about Grandad Don? What about him? He likes me stopping. Yeah, he enjoys the company. I'm sure he does. But he'll understand. Anyway, he's not there much at the moment, is he? That's only because it's Christmas. Well, he can't choose when he works, Christmas or not. He has a living to earn. He might be out every night. That's not much fun for you, is it? Why not give it a go, eh? Yeah, but suppose I change my mind. Then that's fair enough. But why not try, eh? OK. Yeah. Yeah, maybe I will. Right, it's long gone time. Drink up, please. Come on, let's be having your glasses, please. What the hell's going on outside your house, Jack? What do you mean? Brother of yours, what's he supposed to be doing? Painting the gutter. Why? What's up? <laughs> I think you best come outside and have a look. Come on, you come in, you come in, you come in. What the hell have you done that for? No, you like it. That's called highlighting. That is. It looks more like a crossword puzzle to me. That is an architectural feature. That's added two grand to the value of the house. 
I just want to see you explain it to Alvira. I remember that from when I was in the Scouts. That's going back a few years. <laughs> I'll say. I don't know if it's valuable or not. No, I doubt it. Uncle Albert saw it as an original, but no, I think it's just an engraving. Oh, even so, it'd be a shame to have somebody nick it while they were looking round the house. Oh, well, don't worry, it'll be safe with me. And, uh, Andy's. Oh, thanks, Ken. Oh, and listen, if there's anything else you want from the house, you can get the key off Mike. I could have handled things for you, you know that, don't I you? Oh, yeah, but... Well, the thing is, Mike's advanced me quite a lot of money on the sale. And I couldn't do that. Well, he's had a bit of luck with his Spanish land, and... I just thought it was a kind gesture. Most kind. Anyway, I'm sure the house will be on the market for quite a while, so in the meantime, just help yourself. So, oh, you're really going. Your mind's made up. I didn't envisage myself living in Morocco, but... it's the only way me and Sam here can be together. And that's the only thing that matters. Well, uh, I hope it works out for you. I really do. Thanks, Ken. I appreciate that. Of course, Tracy will miss you. I mean, she's in a state of shock as it is. I think she's come to terms with it. Mm, I think she will, given time. No, we had a good talk yesterday. We ironed a lot of things out. Really? Oh, that's good. Yes. Anyway, I'm only going to be a few hours away. She can come and see me whenever she wants. I'll send her the fare, and I'd be grateful if you'd encourage her. Oh, of course. Of course I will. You mustn't lose touch with each other. And you never know. You might find you have a holiday in Morocco yourself one day. Maybe. Well, uh, have you got any plans? Oh, nothing definite. Samir wants us to get a little bar and <laughs> run it together, but I think the main thing is to find somewhere to live and then think about a job. Mm. Anyway... I'd better go. Got a lot to do. So a little time. <laughs> Something like that. I'm sorry things didn't work out with you and Denise. Goodbye, Ken. We had some good times, didn't we? Let's remember those, eh? Goodbye, Deirdre. Look after yourself. Oh. I see about decorators in there. Nice one. David, Sarah, got a surprise for you. Uh, thanks, Don. Not the only one with a surprise. Here, look. Here, has just come on from work. Oh, she hasn't. my next-door neighbour a bon voyage. She's been a regular in here as long as I can remember. And I'm sure you'd all like to join me in wishing Deirdre and her husband all the best in their new life together. Perhaps I know better than anybody what a big decision it is to leave your home and your pals. But Deirdre knows what she's doing. And looking at this fine strapping lad, who can blame her? You embarrass me. Given half a chance, I'd love to. But don't worry, we've no strippograms lined up. It's Betty's night off. Aww. Anyway, we've had a little collection. Everybody's dug deep in the pockets. And uh, we bought you something that we hope will remind you of Coronation Street and the Rover's return when you're feeling far away from home. Like I say, everybody's dipped in the pockets, Deirdre. Oh! Oh! <laughs> <laughs> oh, great! I don't know what to say! Uh, hang on, hang on, there's something else. I'd just like to say how much we'll all miss you. And I know I'm not just losing a neighbour, but a very dear and close friend. 
So, on behalf of the staff and all the customers, we'd just like to give you this to remember us by. Oh, my good luck. <laughs> Everybody, very much. Oh. Hey, what's going on? Deirdre's going to Morocco. And I just wish I were. Where's Cliff? I can't believe this is my last Have trip you seen what he's done to the front of our house? Hey, now, don't I worry, Vera. I'll get some paint strip and I'll have it off. No problem at all. Thank you won't. It's terrific. Why didn't you ever think of doing it like that? You like it? Here he is. Get him a drink. Hey, I can't wait to see it in daylight. Especially if, as we hope, we're going to be running our own little bar and then the drinks will be on us. <laughs> and the couscous. And the couscous. Oh, beggar the couscous. The dish of the day is going to be Betty's hot pot. <laughs> Uh, well, good luck, Annie. Straighten it out, David. There we go. What's he doing? I'm sorting out his room. Oh, man, come back in, David. Oh, you are a good girl. Are you glad Nick to come home? Will he read me a story? Well, he might if you ask him nicely. Is it supper time? As soon as Nick comes down. Yeah, I'll go and see if he's ready. Uh, no, no, she will keep a couple of minutes. Nick, you got a hand up there. Well, you're all right. Right. Fancy a bite to eat? Right, go on then. Everything all right in your room? Hmm. Where's some posters gone? We took them down. Why? Because Sarah Lou's been using your room. Yeah, but it's my room. Yes, we know that, and we're all very pleased you're back again, aren't we? I want my sleeping with David. See? Mm. Oh, where are they? What? My posters. Look, oh. don't worry yourself. We've got them nice and safe. In fact, I'll help you fix them up after supper. How's that sound? Thanks, Martin. Good. After supper, would you read me a story? I don't think you'll have time for that, sweetheart. Yeah, of course I will. And I'll read David one as well. Hmm. Mm. See who that is, will you, love? OK. I'll bet you some air. That's the story, Emily. I'll take these, don't you? What? Emily, so you are there. Don't you think this is a bit ridiculous? Well, I've knocked on your door a half a dozen times today. Didn't you hear me? Oh, well, I mustn't have knocked loud enough then. Look, can I come round? No, no, if you're not well. I... Yeah, it's just something I wanted to clear up. OK, bye, Emily. Hope you feel better in the morning. You are still worried about Emily? Well, I can't go without paying her back the money. Then if I were you, I would put it through the letterbox. Oh, looks like I've got no choice. Right, that's in hell now, Sturdy. Yeah, could you just take those, Jim, and I'll be with you in a minute. All right, dead on. Is that the lot? I'll be with you in a minute. Right. Have a safe trip. Oh, cheers, Mike. Thanks for everything. I'll be in touch. Aren't you forgetting something? Am I? The keys? Oh. Come on, though, dear. Let's be having you. Bye. Uh, Jim, hang on a minute. Oh. Good luck, Deirdre. Mind you look after her. Don't worry, Emily. I will. <laughs> 